Friday, happy Friday. Are we gay today? The answer's yes. The answer's yes. Do I have green onion in my teeth? No, right? I just ate it a bomb as burrito earlier. It wasn't really a burrito, but you know, I had some tortilla. So you know, life is good, bro. Life's always good when you eat a tortilla. I think that's science, actually. I think Andrew Huberman said that's true. I'm pretty sure. How's it going, boys and girls? Holy fuck, what is happening in the general chat of the Discord, bro? Huge ass old messages, bro. Just looking at the Discord. I am. Oh my god, I'm gonna sneeze. Oh, we're five seconds into the stream. Oh my god, what happens? I. It's because. It's because Indiana sits in my fucking chair. <laughs> Holy fuck! Holy fuck! <laughs> So yeah, shit's going good, bro. I just sat down, and I swear to God, it's because Indiana fucking sleeps in my chair. Holy fuck. I feel like my whole face just got slapped, bro. Slapped. Oh. Hello. Brittany, have you recovered your spoons from last night's shit show? Um... I'm here. <laughs> no, for real though, I I appreciated the energy that everyone brought to the panel. Um, minus Lav. And I just want to say that my hair looks pretty great because I am sleepy AF. I slept eight hours. Not the best. Not the It's good. It's good enough. Eight hours, I'm lucky. That's great. <clears throat> um, yes, Raiders. Indiana W, Brittany L. True, true, true. Hello. True. Um, but yeah, I'm glad we did the panel yesterday. I mean, what a good example of bubbles. You feel me? I did. I am. I didn't. I was not still not aware. Man, the political bubble is so different. Like, reflecting back on it, even the way I use words, they're like, oh, you're using words differently. I'm like, yeah. N now, like, I want, I wonder if people in the politics bubble understand that, like, Politics is still a minority issue for most people. Most people care about social dynamics, not political ones. They don't care about policy. They only say they care about policy. And people barely know how to vote. They barely know how to vote correctly on a ballot. Like, most people don't... Hello? I don't know why people in politics feel like everyone shows up for it. When people are doing, like, um, polling on people's um, state of feeling satisfied with the economy... Are they also asking how many of those people vote? You know what I mean? And also, what does voting mean when people feel disenfranchised? But it is kind of funny. Um, <clears throat> I think sort of being in that bubble and then for people to say like, oh, you're using that word differently. But I think what people hear is you're using that word wrong. But it's like, no, just differently. You know, and that's what I'm really getting. I want people to recognize. You know what I mean? Is that... Uh, People aren't using words like wrong. They're using them differently. And then you have to understand like there isn't an objective way that people use words. You only have to agree on what they mean. I saw Tom Foolery. Where's Tom? Tell Tom to get online. I'll yell at him. I saw Tom reviewing the debate. And he was like, why does Brittany always do this? Why does she always bring it back to the individual? And you know what's so funny? I think Lav said it. But I think she called me like a libertarian. And I was like, I have never. Don't. I have never been a libertarian. No offense to my libertarians. But like. What? What is she talking about? What is she talking about? And I realize, like, in political bubbles, when you use the word individual, they think you're a libertarian because they think you mean politically an individual. When I'm literally a progressive. But because, like, it's so interesting. Like, when you're in the political bubble, 
they think I sound like a libertarian. And in my head, I'm talking about the person's lived experience. So I'm realizing like, oh my God, I this is why I don't do political debates. I did not realize I was walking into an actual political debate. I thought I was walking into a conversation about the differences of ideology between men and women, which is about values and consciousness. It's not about politics. Politics is a reflection of values. That's why you choose your politics. It's a reflection of what's going on at home. Politics is usually a reflection of culture and family. So when I walked in and it ended up being a video or a, a panel about politics, that's fine. But uh, not what I was expecting. Roller Spice, join the Discord. Let's go. If you need to be tagged in the live stream chat, because um, I read the live stream chat, it's in our thread section. If you can't see it, just at me or at or ask general and we'll tag you into the group so you can be there because I not everybody can see all the threads for some reason. Sometimes you have to be added to some of them. I don't understand how technology works. Okay, but if you need help finding the chat on live stream and you want to see it, just like chat chat in general or at me specifically and I'll see a notification. Um, if I'm in stream though, it might it, what I'm talking to Rashad, it might be different because I'll be talking to him. Which, by the way, we're going to jump into that really quick here. Um, Melanie says, where can I watch the panel? It's on. It's right now available for YouTube members. It's unlisted, it, unlisted but I will uh, clip it. So I'll clip it. I'm just behind on clips, guys. <laughs> I'm doing a one. Oh, my God. I'm like one person trying to do all these things. Um, but I will fix it. I will work on it. I will definitely get there. Oh, yeah. Wick TV has it up. What am I? I'm so stupid. Wick has it up right now. Go to Wick's channel. You can watch it through Wick. Duh. You don't have to wait for my slow ass to clip it. <laughs> I'm working on the ABBA and ABBA and Preach video right now with uh, Ethan. Keep it up, Ethan. Ethan. Anyways. Thank you, Ingrid, for tagging people. Oh, how Tep says you can be a libertarian and a progressive, but to the extent that you can while staying in the libertarian bubble, it's a wide range of beliefs in that sphere. Sure. I just don't identify with the libertarian. I've never voted third party. I don't know what any of that means to me. But it was interesting to hear that perspective. Again, my whole point is that it's interesting when you jump into a different bubble. They just like right away zone in. And and to be fair, nobody cares about Lav's opinions because she has no real opinions. But it is interesting the way people perceive you or even the way like you can have the conversation. I feel a little bit bad. Like I don't I hope they know I had a good time. I just I felt definitely like out of place. Also, I'm definitely more solution-based, and I think solution-based means individual consciousness base. You know what I mean? How'd you feel about Lab last night? I mean, like I said, last night after the panel, I feel like she's begging for attention, and I'm I'm not going to give it to her. So I told Wick I won't collab with Lab anymore. So if Lab's on a panel, I don't have to be. But, you know, I don't do very many panels anyways. I'm happy to be invited, but I don't want to work with Lab. She's unnecessarily... Uh, disrespectful and unnecessarily rude and I just don't have time to cope with someone's trauma that hard like you know this is a very safe space for people who are in their trauma but there's an extent to which like it's just beyond and super inappropriate and I feel like uh, yeah I feel like that's laugh she's just very inappropriate with the way she begs for attention I know a lot of you are rooting for her I mean same but also girl I'm not your mom girl I might be Mama Simon, but I'm not your mother, you know? Yeah, rude girl behavior is tiresome, Ripley. I agree. Yeah. Ingrid says, lab is only there to be flagrant. I love that word. I love that word, flagrant. Oh, that's such a good word. That's such a good word. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. I just, I love having, you know, okay. Just put into contrast the panels that I'm hosting once a month right now and that panel. Can you imagine if Genevieve and I were talking to each other like that? Or if, you know, Harmony and I or Arena and I talked to each other like that? It would be so disrespectful if I was like, um, Harmony, is this your autism? <laughs> uh, Genevieve, do you ever think it's because you're a sex worker? <laughs> it's just so disrespectful. It's like, what are you doing? Like, it's not even a real question, you know what I mean? This is so rude, you know? And I get it, like, it's a tough space out here online. 
but yeah, I just, I so appreciate the girls. We have a really great podcast coming up, or not podcast, live stream coming up this month with the girls. We're doing a panel on whether or not we revolve our life around men. So really great theme since we're, um, you know, we're here to have a discussion about it. I think, I think it'll be good. I think it'll be a really good conversation. You know what I mean? Oh, but oh man, could you even imagine, bro, the disrespect? No, I, I think that's what it's about. It's like, I respect the women that I collab with so much, or even the men, obviously, but the women I do panels with, I respect them so much. I would never want to demean them by like trying to trigger them or trying to like personally attack them or trying to do anything cruel to them. Like I couldn't imagine, I love these girls. Like I couldn't even imagine trying to on purpose fucking trigger them. It's like, whoa, like bro. It's just so weird, bro. And like, how dare, like in a world where people are like, we want the world to be better. Also, is this your borderline, Brittany? <laughs> I get it, I get it, I get it. I also want the world to be love better. And I also think lab doesn't need to be in it. So <laughs> I get it, I totally get it. I absolutely understand. Okay, I'm gonna bring uh, Rashad in here. I told him, give me like 15 minutes to talk to you guys and uh, lube you up. And now that everyone's lubed. Woo! Feels like bad faith. Girl, bad breath. Girl, full on bad breath. That's what lav is. Lav is bad breath. You feel me? Bad faith, bad breath, bad takes. With peace and love. With peace and love. With peace and love. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so funny. <laughs> I really do crack myself up, though. I really do crack myself up, though. Ooh, oh, where's my Luffy emoji? Where's my Luffy emoji? Ooh. Ooh. <clears throat> Oh, whew, okay. Whew. I can get my shits and giggles out now. Ooh. Okay, okay, okay. Let me get Rashad in here. <laughs> it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to disappear for a moment. Will I get my... Because I have to call him on Discord. It's going to be a whole thing. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm still here. Hold on. He's ready. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. We'll mute this. Okay, let's bring him in. Okay. Hold on. No, you're good. I'm about to can fuck with me? my tech for a bit. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you? Oh wait, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? I can hear you. Hold on. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna fuck with my tech uh, too. Is it okay that my stream can hear you, or do you want me to mute you? Uh, yeah, you can mute me for now. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, guys, hold on. He's muted. I'll be right back. I'm gonna mute myself.
I'm unmuting you. I've unmuted myself. All right, guys, please let us know if the voice and tech is good. Otherwise, how are you? Doing good, doing good. How yeah? are you? Okay, Rashad, right? Yeah, Rashad. Okay, really nice to meet you. I have the most random question to ask you. Have you reached out to me before? Um, I reached out to a lot of people in this space to try to like see if I could like get people to see my content. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't remember because I saw you yesterday in the panel, and I, I swear, I was like, I feel like I know this face from somewhere, but that I couldn't decide if it was just that I'd seen you on another panel, and no. then. I just never know if I'm placing people for different reasons and I do get requests and then I just feel very overwhelmed and I like shut down when I see too many emails and then I'm just like this. So I'm glad we can talk. You really stood out to me yesterday on the panel. Yeah. I mean, I'm flattered to hear that. I've been watching all of you guys for like a year now. So to talk to you guys is still kind of, it's like a, it's like a funny experience for me, but yeah. Okay. Wait, that is exciting to me because I was thinking about how to approach this conversation and because uh, after yesterday, I the whole time I was there, I was like, I don't think I'm supposed to be here. <laughs> this is I didn't know this was like a full on political conversation. I thought it was going to be <laughs> totally different. So yeah. I felt kind of out of place. Um, but then I wondered, how are you and I going to have the conversation then? Because I don't know if you're purely political or do you do social commentary? It sounds like you do. Uh, I do like both, I guess. Like, um I do like some social commentary and some political. I'm getting more political now and I'm getting less views. Yeah. But um yeah, I'm going more political now cuz I'm just that's always been my main focus. But like when I was younger, uh I was more into like philosophy and like social stuff and stuff like that. Sure. Well, why the switch? I don't know. Like I just got older and like um you're like I've always liked the whole political social commentary realm. But then, like, my passion for the specific top, like, specific stuff kind of became a little bit more, like, ref I don't want to say refined, but more, mm. s like, specific. Yeah, of course. So, what do you, mm. so I want to know, just so I know and my audience knows, especially, like, what are you doing on the internet? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm trying to become the biggest socio political commentator ever. I would ideally. Would love to walk on a stage with a do rag and a chain on and debate politics. <laughs> Let's go. I don't, yeah, that's that's the ideal situation. So, yeah, that's that's what I'm after. What about you? Um. Well, I think uh, as I've recently told my audience, I think this might be my favorite neurodivergent hobby. I think YouTube is the only thing I've ever done so consistently for over a decade. It's the only thing I've fully done full time for work that hasn't made me feel uh, like I want to quit. I mm -hmm. definitely tried to do normie jobs and do that kind of stuff. But then I realized, as my dad always said, like I've, I've always had to be strictly independent and work for myself. And so this is the way I was able to do it in the most independent way. And so here I am. But I think my content changes as I change as a person. So I've had so many different audiences. I've done so many different things. I used to be a political streamer for as a Republican and as a Democrat or as a progressive, okay. I should say. And then I – well, it just reflected who I was. So then I was like a peer educator in alternative communities. And then I've moved into philosophy because that's my recent niche. I try not to get bored. So for me, this is like the thing that's interesting to me right now. I like social commentary. I like political channels, but not for the politics. I like political channels for them being a person and then watch like watching humans socialize. I, I feel like I get what you're trying to say. Like, I get it. Yeah. I understand the concept. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess it was, I was, uh, you stood out to me because yesterday you said something like, um, like I want to get boys and men more to like the left or more liberal. Is that accurate? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you're kind of like a man, man. You're like a man. <laughs> you're like the most I mean, man I've, I've ever I, seen in this space. <laughs> I try to be. I attempt to be, um, but yeah, I definitely want more young guys to be more liberal. I think there is some level of masculinity in being liberal that's not as easy to see, but you can see it if you're like open-minded enough to look beyond just hunting, fishing, which are all cool things that I sure. obviously would love to do and enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, going to the gym, being fit, all of these things are masculine, but like compassion is also masculine. 
yeah. helping groups of people that are less fortunate or individuals less fortunate than you as a masculine. Um, sometimes the most masculine guys in the room are the guys that can solve everyone's problem. Yeah. Or at least attempt to. So I like to, I've always idolized the idea of being the guy that can kind of like walk in a room and like assess everyone's situation. Like, you know, somebody could say, oh, this isn't going well. Okay, call Rashad. Like that's always been my, my ideal sense of masculinity. Are you an older sibling? I am a sibling of many people, <laughs> but I don't, I, have, I don't have a sibling relationship with them. So oh, it doesn't count. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't count. So yeah. Okay, okay. So do you, f right there that stood out, well, gosh, so many things stood out to me. So first thing I think is this desire to be this masculine man who can solve people's problems mm -hmm. seems like a huge weight and responsibility that a lot of men do take upon their shoulders, I think for meaning and purpose. And I wonder like, what is your motivation to be that type of man? Um, I don't know. It's just like a, it's one of those things where I've tried to be introspective about it and ask myself like, what's the the reason? And yeah. I literally have no clue. Like, it's just one of those, like, what do they call it? Factory settings. Yeah. Do you <laughs> it's think like, it's like innate? Like, do you think it's part of your personality? Probably. I've tried to like reverse track and like explain it, but there's really no, because I was never a problem solver as a kid growing up. I was like a mediator, but I was never a problem solver. Interesting. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Kind of just poofed in my head one day. I think actually joining the military was probably where I got at, where it kind of like stuck in my, like I became more like obsessed with it, I guess. What branch? I went to the army um what's ironic is i didn't even make it through training because i broke my ankle in half um but when i was there you kind of like your drill sergeants can do everything they can mm -hmm. run faster than you they can move there they can move better than you they're stronger than you like you th like you look at some of them and you think like mm, he's just a guy and then they're not just a guy they're like better than you at literally everything like you feel subhuman and i feel like um that was kind of like one of those moments where I was like, that's what the fuck I want. I, everyone was like, yo, that's what the fuck I want to be. Like, I want to be the guy where like, I can do everything. I can solve everyone's problem. So that was kind of like where I was like, yo, this is a really cool thing. Like, I like this. Yeah, that's interesting. It's almost like they had like a sleeper build of like, uh, you just assume they're regular and then here they go. <laughs> not regular. That's so funny, they're actually. That's funny. Yeah, I had so two brothers who didn't basically didn't make it through their four years because of medical problems, but they will say like the time they did spend, especially through training, was like a totally different world. Like they put you through things psychologically and physically that like the regular world just doesn't doesn't do normally. They try to mimic it like with these like runs and these like, you know, I forget what they're always called, like, mar you know, the – What's the ones where they do all these obstacles and they try to like get people with Iron Man and stuff like that? And I think that's cool. Yeah, exactly. But I think yeah. the like the military adds another element to it just because you become so a part of something other than yourself. Did the military mm -hmm. for the short time you were in it give you a sense of purpose in terms of service? Mm, not really. It was kind of like a it was just the decision I made at the time, but I didn't really like derive a feeling of purpose from it. To be honest, the thing that really had my attention the most was kind of like politics, mm. but I just, I didn't have a camera. I mean, like I could have asked my, like I could have asked for those things and probably would have gotten them, but it just wasn't my time. Like would it just didn't happen. you allowed happen. while you were serving? Well, I was in high school when I wanted to be a YouTuber. And then like, I joined the army, like, like right out of high school. So I don't know if I would have been a, a yeah. I, I, to be honest, I probably wouldn't even be talking to you if it had worked out the way I wanted it to, because um, I started YouTubing a year after I came back home. So yeah. I would have been away like doing other stuff and I probably wouldn't have like, so much stuff had to properly align, like breaking my ankle had to happen for me yeah. to even like, yeah, so. Do you, uh, do you think like things happen for a reason? Mm, yeah, I do get into that like main character mindset sometimes where I'm like, yo, like this is with bad things. It depends like, if it's really, really bad. I'm like, yo, this is bullshit. But if it's like, if it's reasonably bad, I'm like, God's plan. You know, I pick and choose depending upon how fucked up it is, Sure. which I guess is like, not really, you know, it's not honest. What about you? 
think, well, because I, well, okay. I think it's a little bit of both. I think everything is meant to happen the way it is because it was always going to happen that way. And at the same time, I believe so much in my agency as a person that I can decide to, I always say, turn left the moment I want to. So I always say, like, I pick and choose, but ultimately, like, whatever I picked and choose was always going to be what I picked and choose anyway. So, like, I'm just kind of doing it. Um, but I really, I, I heavily believe in free will, which I know the determinists in the audience. I get it, guys. I get it. Everything might be determined, but I'm still picking and choosing, you know? And so uh, that's definitely my perspective. So, okay, here's a here's a real question then. And this is going to tell me what bubble you're in, bro. Are you ready? Okay. Yeah. Which uh, main character anime protagonist do you identify with? Here we go. Here we go. How did I fucking know this would happen? Um, <laughs> this is a wild take, but I'm gonna say it. I Sasuke is my Sasuke is my character for oh, sure. Really? Okay, you're right. That totally yeah. did not see that coming. Tell me why. It's the same thing that I was talking about before. Like honestly, like as a kid, like watching Naruto as a kid, mm -hmm. and like seeing Sasuke be able to do everything that no one else could in the mm -hmm. team was like it was like something that you kind of like like if someone's really really good at stuff i won't envy them i'll try to like get on their level mm. so like sasuke was like the character where like you know naruto gets shook up in the first mission and sasuke just handles it yeah. and that was kind of like one of those things where i was like that's what the fuck i want to be um and i mean like his story like in general he's kind of like always bearing burdens right like trying to then just family and stuff like that and you know, he's just a guy that's constantly, you know, I guess, avenging and, you know, carrying the burden of something else. And I think that's really cool. So, yeah. And he's just just a smooth character as well. You know, a smooth guy. So uh, he's a complicated one in some ways. I think a lot of people do like his trope because he seems um, and I only don't yell at me, but I never finish a and Everybody don't make mad at me. I'm so sorry. But it's one of those things where I know my brothers are like, Ugh. anyways, I'm on One Piece, okay? I'm like on episode 600. Everybody relax. I'm busy. You'll but, be in the afterlife watching One Piece. <laughs> let me tell you. So Sasuke's interesting because what I know about him is he sort of, forgive my French, a little emo. <laughs> okay, so he doesn't I'll take seem it. like a c caregiver in the way that like I imagined you going in that direction. So when you say you identify with him, are you speaking internally but then externally? Are you having a relationship outwardly like an all might? Like are you being perceived as like the all American hero or are you even being perceived like a Sasuke? Um I guess like the appeal of Sasuke's like for one the talent, like the aspect of I'm good at whatever yeah. is asked of me. Mm. Then there's also the aspect of my whole family's dead. This will, I will solve this. Like, I will settle this. Like, every single person is, because, uh, I mean, realistically, most, no sane human is chasing a vengeance for that long, especially with that much, like, you know, like, that's, you would have to be so obsessed with, like, avenging every single person. Yeah. And I feel like there is a twisted sense of caregiving and a sense of, like, okay, everyone I've ever known is dead. I have to I have to settle this score. And I and I am a vengeful person as well, so there's probably a little overlap there. Sure. But there is like a something to respect in someone who's who recognizes the value of like, okay, my whole people are gone. I'm willing to sacrifice my comfort and like my life that I could have. I could have a new life with my friends and Kakashi and all these other yeah. characters. But I have to I have to make this right. And I, I admire that in a way. But yeah, Sasuke's a character where, like, he probably wouldn't be the best example of someone who's a caregiver because he's just, like, he's so me, 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 me. Sure. Or he's, like, willing to do some crazy stuff to get what he wants. But yeah, that's my favorite. What about you? Oh, gosh, it's hard to say. But I obviously I'm watching One Piece right now. So I'm like, um, Luffy and I are, like, twins, everybody. <laughs> But it's not, like, Luffy's power that's interesting to me. I think it's actually his carefree spirit of how he gets along with basically everyone as long as they get along. And I think I really identify with that in particular. Like, I'm not interested in your politics. I'm not interested in who you guys think is the good guy or bad guy. I'm only interested in, like, can we get along? What are our values? And, mm -hmm. like, do you need to be an enemy today? Because, like, if you don't need to be an enemy, let's keep going. Like, I'm good. I don't want to fight you. So I think in that way I really relate to him. And then – of course, Nami, because we're all trying to get our bag, you know. 
Um, so it's just a, a matter of where I am in my life. It just goes in and out with who I identify with. I mean, gosh, at one point I was like, I'm totally Vegeta, bro. Yeah. I'm angsty. I do a hundred pushups. I got a hot wife, like everything about me, bro. And then I'm like, I'm Bulma. What am I talking about? I'm Bulma, bro. And then I'm tough. I'm tough. Let's sit down. Everybody. I'm tough. It's like, tough is a good one. I love tough. tough. Good- I love, she ends up in a swamp, like so Zen. <laughs> tough is definitely a character that like. I feel like she's underrated in terms of like what lessons you can learn from Tom. Oh, absolutely. Especially if you've ident- especially if you're kind of a girl that's a little bit more like Toph. I think I mean I've always been I mean, as far as my brothers are concerned, I'm like an- another brother. And only we only have one sister as far as we were really concerned, right? But like the truth is is that I am still a girl. I'm just the girl who tends to be more in her masculine for a lot of reasons. Um, mostly personality, I think, honestly. I always say if my personality looked like a person, it would look like me. And so that's a that's a that's a good way to look at it. Yeah, I don't think I could have been any other like this personality and like a super femme body just wouldn't have made sense. Like this personality and like, you know, a different kind of tall girl body. No, no, I'm five one. So, you know, it matches. I'm telling you, it matches. That's a good way of looking at your personality. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Well, I guess that kind of coincides with uh, questions leading up to like your work, especially because you have this like internal relationship with yourself and then this external person you want to be. And because you want to be a leader, you are giving your life to other people. So why, I guess, like, how do you balance the life you're giving to people and the life you're living for yourself? Well, I'm not in a place right now where I'm doing too much okay. caregiving. I'm in a much more like isolated place in my life right now where I don't have too many people. Okay. But, um, Hmm. Like, in a sense of like introspect, like knowing like where it's coming from, like the desire, or like yeah, um, like I guess I want to know about you as a person. I know after last night's panel, I don't know if you, I know you say you've seen my work, but I don't know if you know exactly what I'm focused on. But I really do think politics is a reflection of like people and the relationships they have with their families and the bubbles they're born into. So I think everything is a like a reflection of us as a whole. So when I look mm-hmm. at you and I hear your desire to help men, I think, okay, this is new. A masculine dude who wants to move men more liberal, who wants to be a leader and watches anime. So, you know, we need that in politics. But, like, yeah. what is that? Where does that come from? How does he live his life when he's not being perceived, when he's not being seen? And then what is the life he's living for other people? Like, how much of the person you're going to be for people is you? I'd say it's, like, 50-50. Like, um, like if I'm not being perceived, I don't know. Like I've always, I've never, I've never viewed myself in a lens of like, um, I'd say I'm the same person. I'd say I'm the same person in both senses, but like, there is a little bit more of like a, um, like when I'm doing YouTube, which I guess it coincides with the idea of like leading or getting into people's heads and trying to convince them of things and stuff like that. It's definitely like a, um, you ever feel like you're at 100 percent, like like a battery of you is like fully charged mm-hmm. where, you, where you feel like you're kind of like this is corny but like in tune with your higher self sure like yeah that's kind of where i i feel with like doing what i do as it pertains to the internet like it feels like a 100 percent version of me when i'm not being perceived it kind of feels incomplete mm-hmm. like i don't want to say like i'm an attention seeker but like i do view myself in a lens of like I should be out there in some form or fashion. Like I should be on some level out there. It doesn't have to be like YouTube. It could just be like talking to people and just like interacting with people and just, you know, making sure that, you know, they feel like, hey, like he's there. If I want to talk to him, if I want to ask for advice or if I need a favor or whatever. So Okay, two questions to that then. Does it have anything to do with your uh, personality needs like in terms of being extroverted, introverted? I'd say I'm an introverted extrovert. I'd say, yeah, there is like a, there's a personality need thing there for sure. Okay. Okay. And then the second point is, I think we talked about it on the panel, but like sense of purpose and meaning in terms of being like servants, is it you fulfilling like your desire to be a servant to the community? Mm. Or more like what Lab was saying, which is like men are all, men are like well, soldiers. What did she say? <laughs> men are... <laughs> Uh, men watch yeah. Andrew Tate because they want to be soldiers. And yeah, that was is that what, what it is? Um, I think it's... Hmm. Now you're making me introspect on something that I've kind of always just looked at as like a factory setting. Let's go. Okay, so 
now you're making me like actually make this shit make sense in my own head um i'd say it's like uh there is obviously like a desire for like you know external validation and stuff like that sure but it just feels like it just feels like that's just it just feels like a factory setting i hate to like come back to that mm. but it does kind of just feel like this is just me like this is what i do this is what i prefer to do yeah um this is what i like to do um i think there's definitely just a there's definitely an affinity it's i think it's just like my because like everybody has their own different flavor of masculinity that they like some guys like to be like physically tough some guys like to be mentally tough everyone has their own flavor you know what i mean yeah would you say yours is probably a mix of both yeah, I'd say like for sure. I uh I definitely think that you should prop you should aim for both. You don't want to be one hundred percent one or the other. You wanna you wanna be in the middle. You don't wanna go too dorky and nerdy, but yeah. you don't wanna be too much of a jock. You wanna make sure you're somewhere in the middle where you're you're like relatable and also not someone who's so closed off from other people that you're just, you know, you're an ass. Yeah. Actually, okay, something you said to me really stood out because my dad is like um, not a perfect person because nobody is, but for the most part, I think he's a very good man. And I think he's been an upstanding man. He is the mediator of the family, but he's also mm -hmm. has a home gym, drove a Harley for most of my life, has a decked out pickup truck, let me tell you. And like, is very conservative. You know what I mean? And I grew up in a very conservative home household. And he's like a man's man. Like people are so intimidated by my dad that I just look at him. I'm like, I don't know. It's my dad, bro. And everyone's like, dude, your dad is like. A, a, and I'm like, my dad is like the sweetest man I've ever met. You should see him around his grandkids. He's like a grandpa. He's so nice. But people see him and they're like, but then my dad is like an amazing person to go to for like emotional support. He's like, when I got my period, I called my dad. I was like, mom, call dad. I'm bleeding. He'll know what to do. And my mom was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> and he, right. like, he like came home from work, made me soup and tucked me into bed. And I was like let's go like my you know i relied on my dad i think we all do um my mom's great too but I, you said um you want to be like a mediator but also a man's man so it kind of reminded me of my dad and that coincides with how i see my brothers because they're all going through their own journey there's eight of them and some are old and some are young but the young ones the gen z ones i always tell them i was like you are not ready to be someone's husband you're not ready how do you feel about the state of men being ready to be people's husbands Man, that's like a. It's uh. It's one of those things where like you kind of have to like as a man. You have to first like you. I always say like that one of the key things to figuring out where you're what you're missing is to butt your head against things. You have to butt your head like you have to scrape your knee. Um, I realized that I was missing in terms of fitness when I was approaching women and I wasn't getting any numbers. I was like, hmm. I am fat. That is true. Like, maybe I could do something about that. Or, you know, like, I would talk to people and I would, like, never listen. I would just talk, talk, talk. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until I kept interacting with women that I was like, yo, like, I'm not a listener. I just keep fucking yapping. Maybe if I was, like, would stop for a second, maybe I'd have a little bit more success. I think for young men, you have to, like, you have to constantly, like, look for the holes in your game and the holes in you as a person. What's wrong? not try to like constantly like shit on yourself but realize you're not as amazing as you think you are you do have flaws and in order for you to be compatible with a woman for the rest of your life you have to be on some level introspective enough to say i was wrong about that or i'm doing this wrong or i'm you know not capable in this place i need to get better of course yeah. we can talk about like oh you know your finances which is a given you need to have money you need to have an education and you need to have all these other things going on but i think that becoming like a good partner for someone else is so dependent on like you being a genuinely like self-searching person mm, mm. i mean i definitely think so i do think most people are settling into relationships that feel like good enough and mm -hmm. i do think that's contributing to the divorce rate in my opinion and i think that that's probably something i'd like to not that i want to make a prescription y'all do whatever you want okay but if I was going to move people in a direction, it'd be one of success for any of the plans that they had for themselves, whether you're a progressive or a conservative, like I think you can find success in the world. Um, mm -hmm. But that stems from like a value system. I think a lot of people have preferences, but they don't actually have values. And I, I do run a little bit 
I do become a little bit annoyed. I think when I work with groups of people that are very like gender focused, whether they're men or women, who are very much explaining to me their preferences. Like you said yesterday, let's say a woman says, I want someone who's six feet tall. I'm like, how does that coincide with your with your values? Mm-hmm. You know, like where does height come into values? And they'll say like, oh, I, will, I want a baby that's tall. And I'm like, okay, again, how does that stem or relate to right. your values? <laughs> so like, where do, what does this all mean? And look, my, my husband and I always joke like, we're, we're probably not going to have kids, you know, but if we ever did have kids, they'd be little neurodiver- neurodivergent fucks who couldn't talk. Like, they'd probably just, like, literally be nonverbal autists, you know, running around with ADHD pills. And so, like, I can't even help it. Like, it's a big joke, but truthfully, like, if we looked at our genetic predispositions, <laughs> our kid is coming out fucked. And we love that for them because we love them no matter what. We would We would love them no matter what. But the world might not. And so, like, there's something pretty funny about that. Like, we're not dating for genetic offspring compatibility. We fell fucking in love. And we want to watch One Piece together. So, like, you know what I mean? It's going to take a lifetime. So yeah. how, how does that conversation sort of happen with the men in your life or with your friends about that compatibility in relation to values and not that superficial stuff we were talking about earlier, which is superficial, but also, to be fair, does coincide with values. I work out every day. Okay. Yesterday was leg day. Today's full body day. Tomorrow's like, I get it. Like I am all about it. Okay. All my brothers lift. We're all trying to get into shape. We're trying to be healthy. Um, that could be a values thing, but it also could be shallow. And so Mm -hmm. how do you know the difference when you're having those conversations? I mean, like I said, like, you got to like scrape your knee. Like I kind of figured it, I kind of figured out exactly what you're talking about when I met someone who was like, um, like I met this person and they were like everything that I was looking for in a person. And I was like, oh shit. Like I I want someone who has similar interests to me. Like, yeah, she's cute. But what if her and I didn't have similar interests? What if we didn't have similar political beliefs? What if yeah. we didn't have overlapping sense of humor? Like the stuff that will mm. like help us stand the test of time and just be able to like actually be together for a long period of time i kind of realized like yo like a chick can be like a 10 out of 10 but if we're not like compatible as people this is going to be a very very short run Mm. and if we're looking to be together for as long as possible it's not gonna happen if you know like if we're not compatible on any level which is why like you said it's so important to have values that match um, personalities that match, beliefs that match. Because if yeah. you don't, the slightest little bit of wind can blow the entire house down. For sure. So, yeah. My, uh, you know that um, that uh, statistic where uh, after seven years you're heading for a divorce or you're staying together, and then after fourteen years you're heading for a divorce or staying together, and the couples who can make it through the seven and the couples who can make it through the fourteen are more likely to make it to the thirty and forty. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I call my mom up and I asked her about it. I was like, what were you guys doing at your seventh? And what were you doing at your 14th? And what happened during those times? She goes, well, the question is, which baby was I pregnant with? Because, you know, they got 10 kids. And I'm like, okay. okay. So then they, you know, just going over their story. She said, like, from her, from her memory, they were falling more and more in love because they were actually uniting more and more in their religion. They're Catholic. Okay. Um, their team attitude. So my parents taught us you are team mate with your partner, your spouse, and you can make a decision if you would like to be something different, but it's us against the world. So my mom always told me growing up, it's me and your father against you, my child and against the world and against everybody. Cause one day I'm going to kick you out of the nest and you're going to go build your own family and you better same thing. So when I courted my husband and I told my parents about him, they were less than pleased at the moment. They're very happy now, but, um, yeah, it became that moment where I was like, I am making the responsible decision at 33 years old, just a reminder that I'm in my 30s, to choose my husband and leave my family. And they were like, oh. and like now they're all on board and it's really great. And my brothers had met him and they loved him. But my parents were really hesitant because they really wanted me to end up with a Catholic man who was practicing. Right. As a reminder, I left the church when I was 19. I'm 34. Like okay. I, I've been an atheist since I was 19. So just like a oh, full reminder 13, here. 13 here. Yeah, so see, now were you raised what religion? Man, shit. <laughs> um Christian, but like it got shit got real when I was 13. We uh my mom moved a little bit more towards Seventh-day Adventism. Mm-hmm. And um 
when I was around like 11 or 12, I was like, bro, I'm tired of going to church. I like playing Skyrim. Like I, I like playing Skyrim and like church is just not really fitting into this whole Saturday, Sunday thing. Yeah. And plus I don't like doing my schoolwork and I definitely don't like doing it on the, on the weekend. So like, if we could just never go to church, great. So great. I would just like research, like is God, I would like, I like, try to find any reason to not go to church. And I found like the amazing atheist. Yeah. Let's um, go. Yeah, when I was like like thirteen, I found like Cult of Dusty, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Dark Matter twenty five, his little cartoons. Um, yeah, I just I, I I just I don't know. Like it started out with me not wanting to go to church because I wanted to play Skyrim forever, and then it kind of like drifted into like, yo, like, why do I believe in God? Yeah, does this make sense to me? Does this yeah. even like? And you know, I've met people that are like, you don't believe in God, we're not compatible. And I'm like, that's fine. Like, I just can't go back. Like, I can't go yeah. back to thinking about the world the same way that I did. Because I've just spent too much time asking myself, why do you even believe this shit? Yeah. And I kind of just came to the conclusion and I'm like, mm, I don't really believe anymore. So So do you um have any like spiritual beliefs now? Um, I believe in a higher power, but I don't know if that higher, like, I think that higher power, like, is involved, but I don't think they have any intention of, like, talking to us. Like, I guess as I got older, I went from, like, there's no God to, like, there could be something out there. Like, there are times where I'm like, yo, like, this is, this is some divine intervention, but I'm not so bold as to say this God is of this book and he said this and nah, that's a little bit too much for me. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Do you feel like that disconnects you or connects you to your guy groups? Because I, I'm sorry, I was watching Aiden. You know, I was watching Aiden, and he was literally yeah. like, "It's all about God, man. It's all about God." I was like, "Sir, what God? Which one?" How do you feel about that? Like all of them, even Andrew taping, like, "Oh, I'm a Muslim now, Sneeko," and I'm like, "Sit down." <laughs> like, but okay, yeah, that's good for them, I guess. <laughs> my thing about God is like, I've told my friends this before. I'm like, bro. I don't want to look God in the face. And he's like, so all that Christian shit you was talking about, I saw you at the strip club. I saw you doing all this bullshit. Mm. You kept talking about me and all these verses. That was all cap. So what do you have to say for yourself? I would much rather look God in the face and be like, bro, I'm gonna keep it on it. <laughs> like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I really enjoy all the debauchery. And frankly, the book wasn't that convincing. So, <laughs> you know, I like... <laughs> I, I would much rather be honest with God and just be like, bro, like, I'm gonna keep it 100. Like, I just, like, I did what was best for me. And, like, right. if I'm gonna burn alive forever, that's fine. But, like, I just, I can't sit there and talk about God on, like, a dogmatic level, mm. comfortably knowing that I'm not, like, living in his word. Like, I just know for a fact that I just, I'm just, I have no intention of doing that. I, I'm a, I'm a pretty uh, hedonistic person. I'm willing oh. to admit that. And I just can't, I can't sit there and say, yeah, God did like on like a really serious level of like Allah or Jesus or whatever. I can say God did, but I can't like just get all dogmatic knowing that I have no intention of following any, like any yeah, rules. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, okay, now you're a little extra confusing to me. So super okay. masculine man, American flag in the background, but also a hedonist. Make it make sense. <laughs> make it make sense. It's, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I keep parts of my phases. I keep some of them. I don't like get rid of it all. So like whatever, some stuff just stays forever. Like I'm a, I'm a jingoist. So like, um, I'm, I am a, I would like to think that I'm someone who likes to care for others, but like there are lines in the sand where I'm like, I'm more than happy to have a Mexican standoff with, sure. uh, in certain situations. Um, I'm definitely like if you made me president, I would have a pretty like mean way of interacting with other countries. Like I wouldn't be a lunatic, but like, you know, that's just the kind of person that I am. So it's like I, I definitely have a lot of confusing and maybe contradictory aspects of my personality. Uh, to be fair, I think life is tiny contradictions. I know everyone's always trying to be like, Brittany's contradicting herself. I was like, bro, everybody's contradicting themselves. Yeah. Please sit down. Yeah. Sit down. OK, so then I, I got to ask, um, how old are you? I'm 22. Okay. What's that like? What's it like being, you're Gen Z, right? Is that Gen Z? Yeah, I'm 01. What's it like? It's It sucks, but I'm currently working my way out of it sucking. Okay. So it's, um, it's, I don't know. I, I mean, like, I don't know if Gen Z, I don't know if it's anything unique. I have a hard time imagining that I'm living 
different of a life from other people. Like I have a hard time thinking that I'm so that like my generation has it specifically really, really special. Sure. I'm kind of just chilling unless you think there might be something there that I that maybe I'm missing. I I will say as a mid I call it mid millennial because I'm not quite an older millennial. I'm not a younger one. I do think it's interesting to watch Gen Z, but I'm also very disconnected from them. I learn all of it through my brothers and I try to watch who they're watching so I can pay attention. And my experience is mostly I actually have zero idea what's happening with Gen Z girls, like almost zero. But Gen Z boys, yeah. I think I'm more in tune with just because I have brothers. But um, mm -hmm. from my understanding, it feels like it feels a, and I don't mean to phrase it this way, but it does feel like they got the best and worst of it. The best in a sense because they all feel like they can just say like, fuck it. I don't need to do anything. And I'm like, oh, I could never as a millennial. Like that wasn't an option. And the worst because they feel like they can say that because there's no hope. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Because as <laughs> yeah. a millennial, I felt like I did have a lot of hope. I mean, I feel like I do. I mean, I feel like I'm literally, I made my dream job come true. And, you know, I make more money than mm -hmm. the average man. That makes me happy. And like, not because like I am competing with men. Like I'm not in competition with women. <laughs> no offense. So, like, when I think about the market and what I'm doing, like, I make good money. I do pretty well. Like, I'm pretty happy with my choices. But I did that, you know, without a college degree. And I did that coming from a homeschool background, barely any public school. Coming from a background wow. where, like, yeah. And, like, in a background where I think um, there was a lot of expectation on me to actually run businesses. My dad's an, uh, a business owner and an immigrant. Okay. They're, my parents are immigrants. And okay. um, so they raised us with, like, this, like, the, we got the easiest immigrant expectation which was like, love your life and do good by God, which meant we weren't pressured to be doctors or lawyers. Wow. We were pressured okay. to be good Catholics. <laughs> that's that's better than most immigrant kids can, can yeah, say. Yeah, well, know? but let me tell you this. All my siblings then, of course, are middle class. So my mom would say, why don't my kids make more money? And I was like, th 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 we, may, we grew up middle class. We're going to die middle class. You're welcome. <laughs> And I was like, it's not my fault you didn't pressure us to be doctors, okay? Like, yeah. your kids are making good money in this economy. We're making more than the average. We did okay. And she was just like, yes, but I expected you guys to be in a different place. I was like, I also expected the economy to be in a different place. So we're all disappointed. We all have expectations. We're all disappointed. We're yeah, all disappointed. Sure. And um, sure. it makes me wonder, you talk about not having family and having a connection to people you're not connected to. So who is your village? Mm. I don't really, as of right now, I'm kind of in a place where like, I've kind of left a lot of friendships behind. Mm. Not necessarily because um, I'm like one of those people that's like, you know, those fucking people like every year that are like this year, I'm cutting out all my fake friends and all that <laughs> yeah. weird shit. Yeah, no, nah, I just, you know, like I, I'm kind of reaching a place where I'm becoming a little bit more like uh, a fan of myself. Mm. where um you know like if a friendship isn't as like if i feel like this person doesn't respect me i'm kind of like i'm i will i will pick respect over being a part of the group any day and if i don't feel respected i'll i'll, I'll bow out yeah um and it could be the ego in me because i know a lot of people that you know like they'll, they'll let some things pass to be able to say i have friends and to oh, be able to sure you know, socialize and stuff. And I'm one of those people that's definitely like probably a little bit too big headed for their own good in that sense. But I don't really have a village right now, but I'm working on making new friends. I, I would consider myself like an introverted extrovert, sure. um, which is like a silly thing to say. But um, yeah, like I don't have one right now, but I'm, I've always been someone who's been good at making friends. I've always been a pretty like, I guess, likable person. Um, so mm -hmm. But generally, like, I have Gen Z friends. They're, like, young. They're my age, mostly black, um, mostly male. I don't really, like, make a lot of female friends. Mm -hmm. So I'd say, like, most of the friends I have are kind of just my age, my demographic. But I don't really have a lot of, like, social and, like, philosophical conversations with them. Like, it's usually about, like, yo, who got knocked out last Saturday? And, <laughs> you know, like, just, you know, or conversations about the past. But never sure. really anything too sure. deep. Okay. Um, even with even any of them watch anime? I do have some friends that watch anime. Um, How is that not have, about philosophy, bro? Anime's all philosophy. 
Yeah, but like, I've never had a conversation with an anime fan about like the philosophy, at least not in real life. You can go on Reddit and fight as many world wars as you want about any character, but in terms of like in real life, it's very yeah. rare to find someone who will sit down and like argue with you about is Sasuke a piece of shit? Like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I just, it's hard to find, but I definitely do derive like uh, a lot, of, a lot of opinions on life from anime, but I haven't been able to bounce that off of people that I know. Yeah, that's so funny. I forget, like, I, I really do, I can, I, calling yourself an introvert, extrovert is kind of a funny way to say it, because, like, everyone always thinks, and in my whole life, they're like, Brittany's so extroverted. I was like, Brittany is interested in people, but Brittany would not leave the house unless she had to, so it's also, like, this weird dichotomy, because I also have a job online where I talk to people for a living, but at the same time, like, I, like, that's good. That's my social. I'm good. I'm pooped out, but I forget, like, I'm really lucky. I grew up in a family with parents who stayed together and loved each other and never yelled at each other or hit each other or anything like no fighting basically um but plenty <laughs> of political disagreements because we are a political home and we're a philosophy home and we're a religious home and even my parents would watch anime with us and ask us like what do you think about goku doing this right here do you think he's a good dad and i was like <laughs> and then like as little kids we're all like arguing about like whether or not goku's a good dad and like that's something that my parents, like, I remember when they sat us down for our first, like, Miyazaki film. So, like, okay, let's go. And, like, they don't even like anime now. They just did it because their kids were into it. And they wanted their kids to have good conversations around the things they liked. So we knew how to form communities. And so all of my siblings have their own communities for sure. And then, of course, there's home-based community, which is us as a family. But funny enough, all of my siblings have their own communities. Even my Gen C brothers have two different friend groups because they're just a little bit far off in age. But, like, even the way their friend groups organized, mostly dudes, all ethnically diverse because we're Syrian. So most of their friends are basically, like, black, Mexican, white. Like, they're all from the suburbs. All suburb kids okay. who, like, all came together and, like, combined together. And then they all have this, like, togetherness attitude that when girls come in and out of the groups, it's so interesting. Never girlfriends. Never friends that are girls. Right. That is not a thing, right? And, like, especially <laughs> – my brothers are kind of handsome, so, like, no girls ever want to be friends. You know what I mean? They always want to be girlfriends. Yeah. And so it's, like, a weird world compared to my world where I'm queer and I've been in bisexual, queer, sex-positive groups my whole life, like, outside of conservatism. So all my friends are everybody. The idea right. that I wouldn't have a friend that's a guy is, like, the weirdest. I don't even think about it. My husband has friends that are girls. Like, we don't even think about it. But I wonder, how do you feel about – how do you – what do you think about that? Like, that difference between that. I – I, I can't imagine having a female friend. I yeah. just, like, I can't imagine it. Like, we can be friendly, and when I see you, I'll say hi, and we can chat it up, and we can chop it up. Or if I'm in a call and you happen to be in a call, but I just, I just, I don't, I'm not really, like, I left the female friend thing behind, because I was, like, when I was young, like, I would end up in the friend zone, and I'm like, like, this isn't honest. I don't really, I'm not really this person's friend this isn't really the kind of person that I like that I want to be like if I like this person I should probably just tell them and if they say no keep it moving for sure oh so I feel like you're, you you might this might trigger you I think there's a lot of fake friendships mostly from men who for whatever reason maybe they took too much time to tell the woman that they like them or maybe they you know whatever I think there's a lot of fake friendships in terms of intergender friendships and I feel like uh me personally I just felt like you know like I was like young I was like 18 I was like mm, I don't like this I'd much rather just be honest and just roll with the punches sure so I feel like that's the main reason why I lack female friends generally speaking but I'll make acquaintances but if I like them I'll just like let it be known as soon as possible yeah, I'm curious about that because that I, I, I really want to validate everyone's unique experience. And I do think like we're all categories of people. So I will say even with my brothers, it's pretty clear that I could categorize them all socially different and they don't all socialize the same. So like I have a brother who's married. We call him farm brother and he has a wife because okay. he has a farm. I don't okay. like to say my sibling's name is on the Internet. So like he has a farm yeah. Yeah. and if a girl wanted to be his friend, I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you trying to be his friend? Because, like, he, don't, he doesn't need friends. Like, he's married. Like, what do you need? And then yeah. same with my sister-in-law. But that's because their relationship and the way that it works, like, I can't explain it to people. It would be so inappropriate for them to have opposite-sex friends. 
it would mm-hmm. the idea of it is so weird but he thinks it makes sense that i have male friends because he's like yeah that's different though and he thinks it's because i'm gay like i'm bisexual and pansexual he thinks it's like because he's straight and she's straight like what do straight people need opposite sex friends for but it's not even that it's like a specific kind of straight because my other brothers same thing like they don't need girlfriends. I don't know how to explain it. Like, they don't need girlfriends. I know that, and I'm not saying it the way you're saying it, though. You're saying it in a particular way about friend zones and all that. But maybe that has to do with it because I meet so many men. Like, my husband is a D&D player. Okay. The boys I've dated my whole life are D&D players and anime watchers. Okay. They don't care about having friends that are girls because they're like, do you roll dice good? Do you video game good? Cool. Do that. And then they don't care, really. But they're also guys who I think are less worried about being masculine. They're not very masculine men. Oh, okay. So I wonder if that plays a role. I mean, I'm I'm someone who's out. I guess I am more masculine. Um, I also have a very hyper socialized mind. So like, I'm mm-hmm. someone who's always like calculating like you know hierarchies, and I'm someone who's always like calculating my place in the hierarchy, and I'm someone who's mm-hmm. very. Uh, I would like to think that I'm. Maybe I'm jumping the gun, but I, 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 I'm someone who likes to, like, like, I can tell when someone's someone's friend for reasons other than friendship. Sure. Um, and in certain space, yeah, like, in certain spaces, like, I just feel like if you're not as hyper-social or hyper, I don't want to say hyper-sexual, but someone who's, like, like, I like women a lot. So, like, I, like, obviously, like, you know, like, for me... If I don't find a chick attractive, we could chop it up and joke around. I do it all the time. I joke with like women all the time and talk to them all the time because they're people. But um, as it pertains to like like genuine friendships and relationships, I just don't like I just I've never seen the point. And one of the main reasons being is because like it's kind of hard to relate. Like it's kind of hard to relate on certain issues and like ask for certain pieces of advice because there's just such a big difference in experiences like you can ask a woman like you know what do i tell this girl and she'll tell you some shit that sounds great on paper amazing Mm. you do it and you're like yo like yo this is not like this is what i thought was gonna happen so i mean i don't know like i just feel like you're probably right the more like masculine and maybe even like more sexual you are as a person you're probably a lot more likely to like be like I don't know, maybe this might be fucked up to say, but like a little bit more primitive in your relationships. Like you're probably a lot less likely to say, okay, you roll dice good. So like you're my buddy now. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like I feel like that's a much more, but I do think that 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 moving toward that is a much better way to be able to like have more friends and not think of things through like such a narrow way Mm -hmm. and to be able to say, look, like you're a talented person or you're good at this or you're good at that. And I like this thing too. Let's be friends. So I think, You've you've poofed something in my head just mm. by, by okay, telling well, me what you, This is how I'll relate it to you this way. You know how gym yeah. culture is so diverse? Like there's so many different gym bubbles. Like not all gyms yeah. work the same. I think of the gym bubbles where like Lean Beef Patty would show up or like girls who work out would show up and guys in them are friends and they're just like enjoying or Jesse James West or like men who are like less concerned with the fact that like it's a girl and more concerned with like what are you lifting? But also, like, what do you like versus the other gym? Like, there are some gyms I don't work out at because it's too guy energy. And then some gyms I like it when it's a certain kind of guy energy where they're like, you, you know, like the they're cheering you on. Like, I love going to the gym with my brothers because then it's like a group of people that are all there to see you lift and have fun and run and exercise and like they encourage you versus like think about fucking you. Even if they are thinking about fucking you, let's do that later. You know what I mean? So, like, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Okay. Um, I think there is a social aspect to it. Like, um, these influencers, they're probably in such a place where they prioritize business first. Sure. So, like, they're able to look past the sex, where it's like, yeah, you're fine as hell, but like, like this collab's gonna do both of us really, really good numbers. So, like, I'm, I'm probably not even gonna even like make it known to you that I think you're attractive, because like, it's just gonna fuck up this good, this good situation. Plus, then there's. What do you mean? tell you you're attractive because i tell everybody i think you're attractive i'll just say it right now like i was just like damn he's kind of got a thing going i'm watching chat they're like "Mm -hmm." and i was like yeah yeah he got a thing going but like i can say that like because like it's it's just like yeah i'm not i think there's like a fear i'm i'm very like blunt though like i think we should get past that and just tell people like i think you're hot but 
then decide what mm. that means. But I think in Depends. certain bubbles, girls don't like that or boys don't like it. Well, there's other variables. Like, what if you're single? You're not single. But, like, what if what if in an alternate reality, we're, you, you're single, I'm single, mm -hmm. we're in the same city, we're both influencers, and we sure. can make a whole bunch of money working together. I'm probably a lot less likely to say, you know, Brittany, you're cute, because it's like, we're both, there's just so much on the line <laughs> that it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to risk it. And then there's also the aspect of like, I think there's always service level friendliness of like, hey, what's up? How are you doing? Da, 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 da. Sure. But people like each other. People see chest, shoulders, ass. Like people see these things. And at the end of the day, I, I try not to like delude myself into thinking like, oh, that's just a surface level friendship, especially if one of the two people is really attractive. Um, I'm not the type to like shit on someone for to be like but you know you like nah like I'll, I'll observe and i have my own personal opinion about what someone's relationship probably is under the surface but i am very skeptical of innocent friendships between attractive people or one of them being attractive in the gym i'm very mm. skeptical of that and it could be because like again like this hyper social like you know but i don't think things are as innocent but at the same time, it's not a bad thing. Like, we're humans. Like, we, yeah. we, you know, like, it's not a bad thing. But um, I do kind of, like, contest the idea of, like, oh, that's just 100% not what it probably is. But I don't yeah, know. What I, do you I, I think this is, I think this is, like, genuinely very true for people. But not mm -hmm. all people. So the generalization is also what my lived experience just, like, refutes. The books I've read, the people I've met. And look, in my okay. 20s, I was like a, I was doing a, like a 10 year open relationship. It was a polyamorous relationship. I was like having sex with people that were my friends because like those are my favorite people to sleep with because like we know each other. We can go watch movies later. We can do things together. Like I've never had a one night stand. Like I don't like people that much. And so um, for me, like the conversations I've always had with my male counterparts was always something like, um, hey, uh, do you want to go see a movie? And it's like, yeah, cool. And it's like, oh, oh wait, are we going to have sex? Should I get tested? And then they'd be like, uh, yeah, let's go get tested. And then we go get tested, and then we just have sex. Because we were in such a sex-positive bubble, it was never offensive to ask, can I have sex? What was offensive was to ask for emotional comfort in order to get sex. So if a man said to me, hey, I'm really hurting right now. I really need some comfort. Uh, can you come over? And I'm like, oh, my God, what happened? And then he would try to make a move. I'd be like, whoa. Why'd you do it that way? Why didn't you just mm. ask if I wanted to have sex? Because, like, I would have been much more open to that. But now I feel like you, as a friend, lied to me in order to have sex with me versus just asked me. So even in sex-positive circles, we ran into guys who would almost, like, think they had to lie to us in a space that was so open to sex. And, of course, people could say no. I mean, th no offense. Like, these were, like, Three, four, five, sixes, and sevens all like people were getting laid. Okay. okay. But we're all fucking okay. each other on each other's levels. You feel me? It's not like anybody okay. was a 10. Okay. But like okay. that's a different game is what it is being played, is what I'm saying. So, like, what do you think about people who are having those experiences where like the way they're built or the way that they perceive relationships, some of it is just cultural and or personality and or the masculine feminine but like there's something there that tells me you're having a very unique experience yours is very different my brother is not having my experience yeah you're having a very unique experience you me? um that story <laughs> yes you um <laughs> that story you told it's interesting but it's so rare like it's so rare to like be in a sex positive space where people are like oh let's go to the movies oh we're gonna have sex after that's rare like that's that's like uh that's that's like something out of like i don't know like that's just it's just rare it's hard to find so i think that in a situation like that um most people can't even conceive of that mm. like most people can't even conceive of such a social space or a circle where that's possible so it's like i think i'm gonna push back on you i okay. think my my assessment is a little bit more realistic for most people mm. where it's like people aren't as open you do have to jump over a lot of hoops and you know s slide under a lot of you know you got to do a lot of you got to play a lot of not play a lot of games but there's a lot of the normal the normal motions you got to sure. get through those um i think that's mo what it's like for most people so as a result i don't assume that it's like a innocent 
sex positive space where people are just friends and they're also fucking those things do exist mm. but it's like it's usually like they pick one person they're like okay i like this person i trust this person we have a history you know i trust this person yeah. whereas i think for most people you know that's just the way it is like i like this one person i have casual sex with this one person but i don't think most people are that open which isn't a bad thing i mean like sure. i'm one who's all for freedom like shit like if people are responsible and they enjoy it and they you know, or having a healthy experience, then who the fuck am I to bust that fun down and fuck it up for everyone else? But I do think it's rare, though. I think you are in a, what do you say, bubbles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so definitely you, a bubble. A I mean, they're all bubbles, right? So it's definitely a bubble. So this is, okay, where, so my whole life, I was born into, like, see, even my life is, I would argue, unconventional growing up in an immigrant family story with 10 kids in Orange County, yeah. California. And like, even that set me apart. And then I only, I only went to public school for like two years of my high school. Otherwise I was homeschooled yeah. my whole life. So that made it a thing. I'm also like neurodivergent. So that made it a thing. And then on top of that, like I'm very blunt as a person. So I always, like I always play to my strength as an individual, not in a libertarian way, in a <laughs> philosophy like way. Allegations. Fuck, I hate being a libertarian, bro. They're like the cringe group of the group, bro. Anyways, I love them. <laughs> Peace to my libertarians. But um, I've always tried to figure out how to make, how, where do I fit in the world? And the truth is, is like the world isn't built for Britney, but I find peace within it. I'm good with it. I, I function, right? Um, mm -hmm. So I am an anomaly, but I think more people could be that anomaly if they were willing to forgo their communities and find new ones. But that's really, really scary. And so I don't want them to do that if they don't really want to. Most people live in a bubble, die in a bubble that they're raised in. Most people stay in the town they were raised in or the state. Most people stay with their communities. Most people, and I think that's great. But if y'all keep fucking complaining, I swear to God, and you don't think about one little alternative change, like maybe you just do it this way. And by the way, I do not like the representation of Polly on the YouTubes. They all fucking cheat and they're all doing it wrong. Okay. I don't like those relationships because the communities I was in, People do cheat. It happens. I've been cheated on. Right. But mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that they weren't just doing something that was so human. Right. Everything we're doing is so human. So people's need to play these games is also part of a construct humans created to feel like they know what's going on. But when you're neurodivergent and you're like, can you just tell me what the game is? And I was like, no, no, no. You have to guess. Or no, 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 no. There's like a hierarchy. Oh, when you walk into a room, figure out where you fit. And I'm like, fucking A, bro. Where do you fit? What's the rules? What are you doing? <laughs> And then people yeah. are like, Brittany, you can't do that. But then didn't I just do it, bitch? So what are you going to do? Answer the fucking question so I know what to do. Yes, I'm hmm. rocking the boat, but I'm saying I'm sick of people complaining about the boat and not rocking it. Either rock the boat or get the fuck off the boat or stay in the boat and shut the fuck up. Or adapt. Or adapt. That's what I did. Uh, I wasn't, I'm not neurodivergent. I don't have any special superpowers. Um, I'm very much a normal human. Sure. <laughs> I don't have any, no, no superpowers over here. Sure, sure, um, sure. But I mean, me personally, like I, I, when it comes to these hierarchies and social circles, even bubbles, I think as it pertains to the bubbles thing, I think most people are content. I think mm. you as an individual probably are, are a much more of a searcher kind of person. You're mm. looking for something. Maybe you're looking for new things after you found the last, or maybe you're like searching for one big, like serious thing. And you're just willing to go into new spaces to find that thing. But I think most people find big fulfillment in just like their spot. Okay. And I think that it's really important to acknowledge and know when you're someone who might not be easily content. And I'm not, not, I'm not saying that's you, but like someone who's looking for something more constantly. Sure. Um, I kind of like, I kind of like, I know for a fact that like, there'll, there'll probably never be enough success for me. Like I could be as big as like, I don't know. I could, I could be huge. Like I could be like a massive star one day and it'll never be enough. But I also understand that for whatever reason, that's just who I am. Mm. And I'm not really too big of like a stickler to encourage others to pr pursue the same thing. Yeah. Even if they're complaining. Cause I, sometimes I'm like, that person will probably figure it out. Like they'll have an experience or two where they're like, mm. Maybe that wasn't for me, or maybe that's just not, you know, like, I feel like I hate, to, I hate to use the term factory setting, but I do think that there are a lot of things in us that are just kind of like, whether it's inborn or ingrained that starts out early and you just carry it with you forever. And I think one of the things is like a desire for like more is one of those things that I have. Sure. And um, I think like through introspection, I kind of realized over time that I'm never going to be able to fill it. Mm. 
and yet like for some reason i'm trying to like shove shit in this like void and i I know it's never gonna fill Mm. but like i just keep throwing stuff in there and it's kind of weird where it's like realizing like okay this is me i'm different um and i should probably like kind of just understand that that's just like people are you know like understanding that other people can find fulfillment in normalcy was hard for me to understand i'm like you want to be normal like you want to live a normal life are you a bum and then i realized i was the one who was a little bit you know yeah i don't know you've kind of like you've you've opened up a few things up here okay well let's open up another one because now i'm confused about your panel presentation yesterday because your panel presentation insinuates a desire to actually move people in a direction of fulfilling their com- their complaints. So when I see people mm-hmm. complain and doing nothing about it, I say like, you're happy, you just wanna complain, have fun. Like I don't fix bubbles, like they have to fix themselves. But if people come to me and say, hey, I'm really struggling, I'm like, cool, let's figure out what you need. Which is why mm-hmm. I can work it on individuals. It depends on what they're complaining about. Say if they're complaining about. It depends on what they're complaining about. Okay, okay. There are certain complaints where I will not help you. Where I'm okay. like, bro, like, just just hold that hell you know what i'm saying and there are other complaints where i'm like okay like if i don't if no one explains this to you you are going to crash out mm. and like i have to i have to I have to help you like if a young guy comes to me he's like bro like i can't i can't get a girlfriend he's like 22 or like 21 or whatever like i'm gonna stop him i'm gonna pull him aside and be like all right bro like i'm gonna tell you exactly where you might be like what, what you're missing and i need you to tell me where you think you might be wrong if he's like coming to me about something a little bit more abstract like bro like i want to be clouded up i'm not from the top like bro like get away from me like i, I don't want to have this conversation like I, it's just I, it's not something i feel the need to like i think social interaction romantic relationships these are things that we should all help one another with so that's one of the few situations where i'm like all right i will help you but as it pertains to like more broad things like the, like the petty shit that i'm pay- chasing like success on the internet or sure. something like that I, I could never see myself like like stepping aside to like which is kind of fucked up because i would want somebody to give me advice in this space but like i don't know like i'm just not in that place yet where i would probably entertain it but i do think that when it comes to like young men or young women like i was saying on the panel like we can't market to young men by saying okay we'll restrict these things from women to help you succeed that's just not like that's just not that that's unacceptable like we can't derail people's personal lives and happiness for the sake of another group of people the best we can do for young men is meet them where they say that they're stuck at if they're saying look we're stuck at dating and and, and friendship and education and money let's meet them there mm. you know that's what i and i thought the, the conversation definitely got derailed mm. um ironically i actually wanted to like add you earlier and be like yo like like jump like like butt in because i could see you kind of wanted to say something a few times and I was like, I, I really bro, want her to just like, my chat I wanted you to like, like shove your way in. My chat was like, Brittany, what are you doing here? And I was like, shh, just let me, yeah, okay? Shit. Yeah. And I feel like half the time I hang out on those panels just to show my audience, I'm like, bubbles. Yes, we all see them. Like, we're all in bubbles. We all have ideologies and thought processes, and we all have to fit a role within those things. Like, I am a temporary resident here in Croatia. I am now the American girl who shows up at the grocery store and everybody knows her because I'm the only one who shows up that looks like me and that like is loud in personality like me and I'm very distinct. Okay. They know I'm American by the way that I walk. They know. That's, that's real. That is true. That is a... It yeah. is real. And the pressure is on. Okay? The pressure is on to be a good representation and like I have to, you know, think about it. It is It is on, bro. I sweat every time I go out. And so it's nice. They're very yeah. kind. They're very good yeah. people, but it is um, an awareness that I'm in like this new bubble and I'm here representing another one that's not fair because I don't even represent the USA, but at the same time, like, I, I got this, I can do this for the team. And there's like yeah. a pressure there. And then on top of that, I'm like, you know, when I go with my in-laws and they, they, oh my gosh, it's so fascinating being in a bubble that's a Catholic country, but no one's Catholic because everyone left the church after World War II, basically. So everyone still is Catholic, everything, everywhere, but the only people that go to church are like old ladies. So like, My partner wasn't even raised religious. So it's like, and then when they hear my family's still religious, they're like, oh, how weird. And I'm like, you're in a Catholic nationalist country. They take off holidays. Stores shut down for Catholic holidays here. And no one's really, no one's Catholicing in spite of the fact that. 
that is interesting it's it's like the weirdest little change i'm like okay cool and like it's a vibe um but in terms of like dating or other problems like everyone's gonna have different variations i mean my husband and i met on a fucking discord look Okay. Wherever you, hey, where you meet is where you meet. You, that's what I'm saying. Like, I would never have thought I would not be in America. The fact that I'm living in a foreign country, I'm just like, look at me go, bro. Look at me go. But that is all because we, we didn't just connect on like this idea of like I deserve a spouse. We both had come to a point in our life where we're like, we have jobs, we have our own apartments, we're relaxing. If we meet that person, great. If we don't, fuck it. I'm he's playing video games. I'm doing streaming. <clears throat> we're both very happy with our lives. And then we just happened to like meet because the internet and my job and it was really nice. And then all of a sudden, a boom, boom. And it was one of those things where we had come to a point where we were like not worried because we had worked mm-hmm. on ourselves. My concern when I hear men are like, we want women. It sounds mm-hmm. like they are putting too much stake in wanting a woman or they go to the other side of it, which is like no fap, no women, no bitches, no distractions, gym life 24 seven. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. I, like- I mean, that's a delusion. Yeah, that's okay. that is a delusion. I feel like there's a balance, and I'm looking for the balance in the man groups. What is the balance that you want to encourage men to have? So it's it's interesting you're asking this because I actually consumed a fuck ton of red pill content when I was 18, mm-hmm. and I am not ashamed to say it saved my life. Great. It wasn't it wasn't what it is now. <laughs> it is oh, it, it, it was great. Very different I love it. Then. Okay. Um. I who wait wait who was it I back think, then? Who was the people? Who was the red pillars? It's this YouTuber named Step is Cold. He's um he's you would have to like watch like it's he doesn't appear on Fresh and Fit or anything like that. You okay. have to go looking for him. But he okay. was really he was much more popular back in like 2019, 2020. Okay. And um, you know, you know, he's a black guy, so there's there's a relatability there. Right. Um and it was mostly just, it wasn't too ideological. It was very like, look, bro, like some of y'all niggas is fat. Like some of y'all are broke. Some of y'all are dusty. <laughs> like, no, nah, but like, this is really the stuff that's like, there was a, he made a whole video where he was like, being fat is unacceptable. And it was like, you know, it was like, I needed that shit. Like everybody, like, it was kind of like, um, there was no strings attached. There was no, there was no JQ. <laughs> there was no, there was no like, new world order like there was no nothing it was just like look y'all are bums like one of the funniest ones where he was like you have no followers and your profile picture is an anime character you're weird and it was whoa, like whoa whoa <laughs> no I, so no it was one of those things where it's like a lot of young men needed a reality check that was disconnected from any sort of political ideology yeah. and he was the guy that was like you suck <laughs> you literally said you suck and it was like, you kind of like, you need that. You need someone that's like, look, like, here's what women want. You're not meeting that. Instead of us sitting down in a campfire talking about how much we fucking hate these women, yeah. you can either do one of two things. You can either adapt or you can just sign out. And that was kind of his message. It was like, look, we are not here to change women. We're not here to make them different because you're never going to do that. Mm. You can either listen to what I'm telling you because we all... he. Even outside of him, we kind of like all knew like, bro, you've now discovered the red pill. You know what women want. Okay, now you're at this situation where it's like, are you going to change or are you going to stay the same? Mm. And if you're going to stay the same, because for whatever reason, maybe like the porn you're watching is just too good to stop or the video game you're playing is just so amazing that you just don't want it or you're scared of approaching whatever your reasoning is. Be sure to make peace with that, because now, you know, now you're no longer living in the fantasy of that she doesn't care about weight or muscle or size or now you know but now you got to do something about it and hating on women is not going to change anything and i think that that middle ground was it was really really lucky for me because if i was consuming red pill content in 2022 it would look different it would have islam attached and i want 20 bitches attached and all these other things attached that just yeah. isn't fulfilling yeah. for the average man you know yeah so it's like um young men want women i think that the problem that we have is like I think we can acknowledge that romantic relationships is a really important part of life, right? Like most people need it. There are some people that for whatever reason, they're just chilling and there's like, they just don't care. Great for them. Do you think but they for capital most people, N need it or want it? N capital need. Really? Like you can reach a point, you can reach a point where you are self-sufficient emotionally, 
you're someone who's a good partner if someone were to choose you but you do need to have a, a romantic relationship at some point in your life you can't go your whole life lonely it's what, just not you mean a whole i'm sorry do you mean a relationship at some point or do you mean like that one that you like grow old with both Mm, okay. I don't even think you can be I don't even think you can be the right one for the one until you've scraped your knee a few times whether it's getting rejected or sure. falling in love when that person says eh, you're not the one bye sure, sure, sure. and then you have to sit there and kind of like like you know pick up the pieces and put it back together but in order for you to be the right person for that one your heart might need a few cracks in it like sure. you know you might need you know you need some experience so I think that both young men and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna really piss off a lot of people with this. I think it's very easy for women to say that men don't need these things because for women it's an option. Mm. It's an option to say, mm, I don't want to be in a relationship right now. None of the guys I'm talking to are it material. Mm. For most of these young men, not most, like a little half or a little bit under half, there is no option. There is I'm 22 or I'm 23, no one's talking to me what is my life going to look like at 30 if I'm 23 and I'm alone? Sure. You know what I mean? You kind of have that, like, I don't want to be dramatic, but you kind of have that look into the abyss where you're like, oh, shit, like, I'm 23 or I'm 21 or whatever age because it's a lot of older Gen Z guys that are really, really into the red pill now. And it's like, I'm at that age where, like, I'm supposed to be making everything make sense or at least forming things in a sense of making sense. And it's not looking good. It's it, the, you know, the years are going by and nothing's making sense. Nothing's adding up. Sure. What's 30 look like if 20 looks this bad? What's 40 going to look like if shit doesn't turn around around 30? So I think that one of the really good ways we could pull young men to the left is saying, look, we'll tell you all the shit that Andrew Tate's telling you outside of the craziness. Yeah. Women care about your looks. Women care about your height. Women care about all this other stuff. Control what you can control. If you're broken out of shape and fat and all of that, bro, like, get to it. Like, get to it. Figure it, figure it out, but get to it. That is how we get young men away from Andrew Tate. And it's hard for a lot of people to believe, but I don't think young men want JQ conspiracy theories. I don't think young men want is 9-11, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. with George Bush on the phone with Osama bin Laden, you know, like, turning up and, you know, gaming. And like, no, like... You know what I mean? Like young men don't want that. I don't, it's fun to watch, but I don't think that young men feel that they need conspiracy theory content about how many people Hillary Clinton knocked off. Like, yeah. I think what they want is, yo, like we just want to get women and we're having a hard time knowing how it works. Mm. And if someone would tell us, they could lead us anywhere. And I think that young men are in a place where like, yeah, like if anyone's willing to just tell them what it takes to get women, they'll go anywhere, which is in some, well, clearly a bad thing. Mm. So... I don't want to yap. I don't. I, I want you to respond to that and really like. I mean, if you I like, would, like it because I'm trying to understand like the thought process. It's hard, and I'm also trying not to look at chat because the chat, like, you guys are in a bubble chat. You're in a bubble because <laughs> they're all just like, yeah. this is a weird bubble, and like they're like, why can't men choose it? And it's like because I'm trying to, I'm trying to be open to the idea that everyone is in their own on their own journey like everyone's in their own anime on their own path and like sasuke and naruto yeah. are not the same fucking person they're doing different fucking shit okay yeah. the question is like who are you in the anime that's a question i post to my audience a lot who are you in the anime right now and are you and do you have to be that character forever or are you going to switch it up right mm -hmm. so when i hear like men want women it's hard for me to process that because of course like being around what I think is the average girl, a lot of these girls are being rejected by the men they want. And so when women hear these stories about like, I can get any guy I want, da, 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 all these women are like, what the fuck's wrong with me? Then why are they saying no to me? Why aren't they sleeping with me? Why don't they want to be with me? And I'm like, cause you're fat. <laughs> and then that's, there, there is that sometimes. so that's true too. Like men don't want to fuck fat women anyways, but then they do because America's fat and America fucking America got fat families that is true so like why are we acting like people aren't fucking fat well, in both ways <laughs> i think women are having a lot better of a time getting at least sexual partners mm. and i think men are um men like sex obviously sure why not? and relationships but men i think are a lot more i think women value relationships a lot more mm. and men, men value sex a lot more mm. and once you get one you kind of like meet it all in the middle sure um 
I think that young women do have an easier time getting both relationships and sex. But I do know for a fact, this is a fact, women do have a hard time getting that guy that they want. Sure. And oftentimes because that guy is probably really attractive. Mm. He probably has something that makes her like him that all the other girls want. And he's sitting there with like, I don't know, like 10 women in his phone. She could be the one for him. And I've seen this. Yo. Bruh. I've seen this so many times. Like, I pray to God every day this don't happen to me. i known people, dudes that have, like, baddies, like, cute girls that are willing to do anything for them. And this dude is over here entertaining nine thoughts. And I'm like, mm. bro, if you don't put that phone down, bro, like, put the phone down and please realize that you have someone literally cooking food for you, yeah, cleaning for you, like putting away your game control like bro she ain't your mama but she's doing mama shit like if you don't like bro like lock in but these guys that are being chosen by women are oftentimes chosen because they're being chosen sure. that's a really big thing as well like you get a girlfriend and then like a bunch of chicks that were ignoring you start texting you it's like like yeah huh? yeah yeah. It, yeah it's one of those things where it's like women have their own set of issues that have to be acknowledged but young men are kind of in a space where it's like hey we're not getting sex or relationships so like not only are we like worried about dying a virgin but we're also worried about like yo like are we ever going to even be in love mm -hmm. so it's one of those things where it's like the answer is obviously not to pass legislation to like curtail women's freedom or anything insane the answer is really obvious and it's just like giving young men advice and i think andrew tate's rise has shown like if i just offer these guys what you won't tell them I can convince them of fucking anything. I can yeah. I can take them anywhere, even fresh and fit. You know, I like consuming these guys' content, but I'm 22, about to turn 23 next month. I'm old enough and I've experienced enough shit to be able to say, mm, 10 baby mamas, like, bruh, that's too much for me. Like, I'm not with that. Like, I mm -hmm. saw Sneeko, mm -hmm. he was talking with Abba. He was like, you know, I want 10 baby mamas, 10 this, 10, like all this stuff. And I'm like, y'all, I'm realizing like a lot of us aren't, old enough yet and experienced enough yet to know like where to separate what andrew tate has sure. to what applies to you and what you really don't want you probably don't want 10 baby mamas that's 10 different people's kids yeah. 10 different people's health problems mental health problems you don't want to juggle that you want one chick that's going to be good for you and i think that young men are getting dragged into a much more radical and unrealistic state of mind mm. when the left is kind of like just be nice just be sweet be kind it's like, hello, like most people are nice to the people that they like. And then some people, you know, they, they let the mask drop, but most people are nice to the people that they like. It's not, niceness isn't the problem. The problem is you're fat, you're broke, you're out of shape, you're a bum, you have no followers. These are the kinds of things that young men are saying, like, look, we don't mind you guys telling us the truth at all. Mm. But if the left isn't willing to be like, yeah, those things do matter, but you can change ch change as much as you can we're not willing to do that. And I think part of the reason why is we're afraid of making young men misogynistic. Sure. And I want to know if you think that there is a risk of that just by telling young men that women care about things like money and status and looks and height and stuff like that. Do you feel like the left seeding that ground could be maybe threatening for women? So it's really difficult to say because once again, I think specifically straight women and straight men, specifically straight, no bisexuals involved. None of the bi girls, everyone shut up if you're bi, okay? But if you're straight, you're a woman who like needs to be with a man. You're not going to pick a woman as your spouse. You are the one I'm talking about, okay? So straight people and men, men who are just for women, okay? I think that is true of that demographic. I think it's very true. I think a lot of my straight female friends, uh, my, minus the asexuals and the demisexuals and the pansexuals, minus that I knew of you guys, the straight straights, okay, who are not queer adjacent at all. Yes, mm -hmm. they are workers who eventually want a guy who makes more than them. They care about height. They care about, you know, all that stuff, status, all that stuff. And I think it makes them unhappy. You think so? They are miserable. And I think it's because they're shallow. And I think it's because they won't face themselves and recognize that they are shallow and they want shallow relationships and they're going to end up in divorces because they are not looking for kind and compassionate relationships. They are looking for status. And I'm worried that men's desire to have a girlfriend is the same as the man's desire to have a Bugatti. Mm. 
And same for women. Men, women's I'm desire not, to have. Run, yeah, go ahead. I'm about to run defense for the straight female community. Mm -hmm. I'm about to run like mad defense for them. Um, <laughs> I think nature is just nature, and I feel like I, I feel like one of the worst things like. One of the things that I, I always prided myself on when I was consuming red pill content was not hating women or not shitting on them for what they like. Because it's like, as men, we tend to think that we're not as shallow because we like less stuff. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, how do you think the woman with no ass, no titties and no face feels invisible, yeah. like not even a person? Mm. So when, of course, you know, there are a lot of attractive women out there. Women can go to the gym. They can, they can get BBLs. Like, of course. But we all like something so i try to i try not to shame too much or like dig too deep into what women like because there are women out there that have none of those traits that men like and kind of are probably looking into the same abyss that a lot of young incel men are looking into or it's like shit. like if i don't get this bbl in miami it's over with like you know what i mean like it's one of those things where it's like i try to extend an olive branch and realize that women like what they like for good reason and you do want to curtail a bit you, you do want to you're right to an extent you don't want to let your desires take over what's best for you you don't want to be so ca like caught up with ass and titties and like a, a, per a perfect face to where you're like you know this person can't even sit down and watch an anime with me mm. how in the fuck could i be with this person if i can't be myself for sure this person doesn't want to sit down and watch like historical documentaries with me even if it's entertaining yeah. like well shit like i can't be with this person that's, even, that's just the small stuff you're right to an extent where it's like you do have to be willing to seed ground mm. you do and i think fresh and fit they talk about this all the time you know modern women don't want to give up anything they want to have it all and i think that there is a yeah, you're right. I think I, I, I want to I wanna defend women's desires of status and height and, you know, super looks and all of that stuff. But you are right to an extent where it's like you got to, like, pick a few things and let some of the other stuff go. And I've, I've found that um, that's really true. Like, you know, like. I've experienced it where I'm like, yo, like this person, I could see myself being with this person for a long time. And they didn't, they didn't necessarily have all the traits. Sure. They had a few. But what they were missing, they made up for in who they were. Mm -hmm. And that was huge. And I think that um, that's why I say, like, scraping your knee is so important as a young man. Because you're going to be sitting there in that bubble of, like, I need 10 hoes. I need 10 million yeah. followers. And, like, bro, that is not going to fulfill you. Mm -mm. And you don't want to find that shit out too late. Because when you do, it's too late. You don't want to overinvest your life into all these different things when the answer was really, really simple. So I think you're right. I think you changed my mind on that to like a 50% level where it's like, yeah, you should probably trim the fat in terms of your desires. Just in terms so of I the think, shallow um, stuff, right? Like not in terms of values. I'm not asking anyone to like change values. I'm just saying like, mm -hmm. what's the superficial part of it? And why do you even think you need it? And is it for other people? Because I know there's a pressure I think a lot of couples have to like picking a mate that other people are jealous of. And I think that yeah. needs to go away. I think women like men that other women like. I don't. I, That's I, I, toxic I, as fuck. That's therapy status, bro. I think those people no, need therapy. I, I, res I, I understand it because it's like throughout human history, like, like let's like way before social media, way before even proper infrastructure, right? You know, you probably don't want to be pregnant for nine months with a bum's baby. Oh, you know what sure. I'm saying? Like, for sure. Yeah, like that's you're 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 down bad at that no, point. No, no, like, no. I meant in terms ahead. of aesthetic, like in terms of shallow shit, not values. But I, think I think there is an aspect of of like of yeah, there is a because I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna trigger some people. Women are very much more social media like crazed than men, where like women make a lot of tactical moves on Instagram that I'm like, why would you like? I've seen like pretty girls that get mad likes turn off their like like count. I'm like, bro, you are attractive and popular. You can leave your like count on. It's not that serious. Mm. There are definitely people out there who are making like really shallow relationship decisions on the like the basis of impressing others. Mm. But I don't think that's most women. I think no, I don't. Either. I think women are, I think women are following biology. Just like men are. Like, men see a fat ass, but it's like, is that really, like, is that going to, like, that's great. That's not going to fulfill you. Now, it's great if she does have a nice body and she's fulfilling. But I think that women are looking for a guy with status for, you know, biological reasons. And I think that, you know, 
if you can find someone who meets that meets that standard and is good for you, that's fine. But I don't know. Is it you think it's shallow? Go more into the shallow thing because I'm not seeing it and I want to understand because you would know more. Well, it's difficult. It's it's hard for me also when people do reference like evolution and biology and science, but like all the data says like everything we do is nature. All the data says is like we are biology. So there is mm -hmm. no such thing as you can't fight your biology. There is no data to show you can fight it. There's only data to show that you can socialize in a way that signals to our brain we're rising above it. But the rising above it is a part of your biology. Yeah, so yeah. you can't actually be not your nature. Your nature is what you are. A butterfly can't be not nature. Like it's a butterfly. Mm. So like we're a tree the same way the tree is. So the data shows, the science shows like this whole talk of like what's evolutionary. A lot of it I think is misunderstood by lay people, myself included, because I'm not in that field. But from what I understand about it and from what I've consumed about it, I try to recognize that everything we do is within our nature and then the question is like what part of the na natural process are we are we the tornadoes or the the volcanoes are we the trees okay. or the oceans so when i look at humans i do think a lot of people are shallow because that is the relationship that they're able to have with everything that they've been given genetically and environmentally and their relationship mm -hmm. is only what they can have so like when i watch fresh and fit as difficult as it is to get through their podcasts, when you yeah. watch Fresh and Fit, I don't meet girls like that ever. My brothers don't know women like that. My parents don't know women like that. It's a very niche demographic it's of women. Very yeah, specific. They're not, they're okay? not normal. So when I look at them, I'm like, and then Fresh and Fit always pull this card of like, we get these women all over. They're college graduates. They're not college graduates. Yes, but it's the same kind of girl in every category. Like every kind of trope exists in all populace. So they keep getting mm -hmm. the same trope and they're like, they're different women. They're the same woman, mm -hmm. different wigs. That's it. Same women, same trope. You've hit something there for me where I think that I don't think in terms of status, the average woman wants like Drake. Like right. I think, well, I think, I think they probably do, but I like mean, they're they not would so crazy. Say yes to Drake, but they're yeah. not really thinking they're gonna get drained. Yeah, right? but they're not like their their mission is not. Yeah, yeah, their mission is not that. Um, I think you know pro women probably want you to have like a thousand followers so they know that you're not gonna kidnap them like when they go on a date with you. Like that's probably as Wait, as deep as it goes. Is this like, a Gen Z thing? Because like all the people in my life are also not is, on social media. It yeah. is. It is warfare. Let me tell you. That's no, being no, thirteen. Okay. Yes, thirteen. Yeah. Being thirteen with Instagram coming out was was a work of Satan. Believe me, that was demonic. We should have never, ever had Instagram in 2013 as 12 year olds. It should have never happened. If you think middle school is hell on earth, which it is, imagine middle school, because I went to private school. Oh. So it was a really, really small space where there wasn't enough social status to go around for everyone. When you add in social media, it's oh, like, bro, like it's over with. Like, I'm like, I don't want to say I'm like some man's man, but like in middle school, I was like five, five chubby fat played roblox every day i was a dork mm -hmm. um you know what i'm saying like it was over with for me from the <laughs> it was already over with um that experience was like yo like i kind of became that's kind of like where i became like really like hyper obsessed with like social interaction and social hierarchies where i was like i thought like yo like i'm talented i can talk my ass off i can debate this i can do that like, even that that young i kind of knew where my mind was but there was no debate team. There was no none of that. If you didn't play basketball, it was over mm. for you. And if you all, oh, it was over for you. And I think that Gen Z having social media at that formative space where you're becoming more sexually aware and more socially aware was like the death blow to like, like if you weren't attractive or athletic, you got the picture very quickly of like where you stood in terms of like yourself with your peers. And it, shit got shit got very. Damn. I see the face you're making, but shit got very real. Sounds. I thank God I'm old, bro. But like, okay, I'll tell you <laughs> the closest I got to modern dating was during COVID. I was going on dates. I didn't care about that. Like I was open. Like I was again not worried about it. But like I was gonna be open. So that way, when people were like, "Well, are you even dating anybody?" I was like, "Look, I'm going on dates, bros." But I was courting. I was like, I knew what I was looking for. I had a list. I do go on really rough, and it does feel like an interview. And you're either gonna pass or fail. That's how it's gonna go. And um, almost no one got to a second date except for two people. One ended up being my husband. The other guy, though, he was really into anime. So, like, we vibed for a really long time, okay? Yeah. Um, but one of the dates I went on, it was, you know, COVID dates. So they were online on Zoom. 
the guy goes, oh, I really like your Etsy shop. I was like, Etsy shop? I was like, I don't have an Etsy shop anymore. Wait, why would you know that? And he was like, oh, I Googled your email. I was like, you Googled my email? He goes, yeah. That's crazy. I did it. I never think to do this. I never Google anyone. Even other YouTubers I work with, I don't fucking know. Like, I just, hey, what's up? Who are you? I don't do these things because I didn't, it's not how I was raised. But he, I use, you know what? And I'll tell you this. I had an, in, I had an inkling that I should use an email that's not associated with my YouTube. I knew and my instinct told me. So I used a random email. It happened to be a part of an Etsy shop. I didn't even realize it was still active. I was like, oh, shit, I gotta take this down, bro. I'm not even doing this right now. And, um, it made me realize like, oh, I don't like this. I don't like that you Googled for a Zoom date. But at the same time, like I can't really fault him because apparently it's pretty common. Apparently everyone is Googling each other. So even mm -hmm. I'm aware like, okay, if you're dating a certain way, it's working a certain way. I remember I took a dating app. Uh, I think it was Bumble. And I took it. I gave it to my parents. And I said, go ahead. Find me a husband. You know, because my parents are pretty anti-gay. So like I'm not going to tell them find me a wife. So I was like, find me a husband. Go yeah. ahead. My mom and dad are swiping through. They go, ugh is this it? I was like, this is it. Go ahead, pick one. And my dad's like, none. And I go, hello. Like my dad hates everybody. My mom doesn't like anybody. They all think everyone's a loser. <laughs> like, you know, because my dad grew up in a different environment where like him and my mom are a love marriage. Oh my God. Let me tell you this. I told my dad, I go, dad, do you know women won't date men if they're not six feet? I'm generalizing, but I did tell him this fact. And my dad goes, that doesn't even make sense. I'm 5'10". I'm very tall. I was like, you're very tall. And he goes, he goes, what the fuck? Why, why not? I have a good job. I have a life. I was like, I know. But some women don't want to date men unless they're six feet. And then my brothers were all snorting like, hey, like the ones who were six feet. And then the other short brothers were like, fucked. But the thing is, is like my dad goes, don't date women like this. These women are useless. My parents openly would talk shit about people that are shallow because they were looking for almost 40 years of marriage. None of that shallow shit matters. Because when shit gets hard, when you get pregnant, when you get fat, when you get hurt, yeah, shit gets serious. And a lot of men leave women when they get terminally sick, and a lot of women stay. So that's another thing to talk about, too. Are you guys going on these dates and saying, if I get stage 4 cancer and a double mastectomy, how do you feel about it? If I get prostate cancer and I got to lose like something, maybe my life, how do you feel about it? Nobody talks about this. Nobody's serious about marriage. Everyone just wants the status. Hmm. I think I think people I'm going to make a biology argument. Do it. I think people are I think it's less to do with status and the fact that a lot of people when shit gets very real, they just call it quits. Like they mm. I don't think they did, I don't I don't think that they don't love the person. <clears throat> But I think that a lot of people had that just natural instinct of like, this person's no longer of any use or this person's no longer going to complete my my fantasies or whatever. I'm getting rid of this person, so which sad, like for bro. me, that I, that's the only thing I can imagine. I mean, for me, if someone that I genuinely love had stage four cancer, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. Because if I had Alzheimer's? stage four cancer. What? Is it what? So what? What did you say? Did you have stage four cancer? No, no. Oh, I was like, I holy shit. No. If I have stage four cancer and I look like this, I'm doing something right. Hey, okay. You know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And not SARMs. Yeah, um yeah, yeah. Oh. I just I think that um it like if I had stage four cancer, I would want the person to stay with me. Mm. And um maybe I'm just soft as fuck where it's like, I don't know. If I if I felt that strongly about someone, I'm not going anywhere just because they have stage four cancer. Sure. But there sure. I, I feel like a lot of people I don't want to, I don't want to underestimate like nature. Like I never want to like put like a social, cause I think we do this on the left a lot. We always put like social, like this is, this is um systematic or this is mm. social. I think a lot of times the shit just gets real and nature is mean as fuck. Sure. And um, sure. I mean, it's like, you know, like, uh, like we were talking about, like, uh, like I was explaining like in middle school, like, um, like shit got real, like nature kicked in, mm. where social status became even more important than before. And although there was no bullying involved, like thank God I've never experienced that, um, there was a lot of like, the, the pecking order became very real. So it was one of those things where it's like, I don't think, I think nature was like exacerbated by a certain circumstance. 
So I, I don't know. I try never to. I try not to underestimate the fact that sometimes people just do shit because like they just do it sure. more so than sure. there being like a social thing. And maybe that's just like my my way of like protecting myself mentally of saying there's nothing I could have done or there's nothing I could have done to fix it or this person's just defunct. That's why they're an asshole. The end. Um, but I think that maybe push back on it if you want, because maybe there is a, a much more status obsessed social aspect to it that i'm not seeing well why is my favorite question and i do think that if we're actually asking that question then we will find some part of the population that is sort of like defaulting to every part of like what is instinctual to them and it could be rooted down into trauma or learned experience but ultimately again i think everything is your biology so you can't escape it so again like when we're having a philosophy argument about introspection we can say like rise above that instinct but you're not Mm -hmm. really rising above your biology but you can use that wording i think it's accurate socially to say rise above your biology do something different um Mm -hmm. but i think some people just default to like their nervous system their instinct their trauma like in you know how when people get into fight flight you you know fight flight or freeze yeah that's like a part of it is so like so much of it is like out of your control in that moment because your body's mm-hmm. making a decision, but there's this narrative that if I train or if I do self-defense classes or if I do all of this, maybe it will help. But then some people mm-hmm. report that it doesn't always help. It just might help. And actually, I think it goes back to what you said. I think what helps the most, it's going to sound really bad, is actually getting fucked over a few times with that freeze moment yeah. to get yourself sort of in a new, like, oh, wait, I know this feeling. I know what's coming. I'll do something different this time. Versus when it happens the first time, you're like, what the fuck is this? What happened to my fucking Dragon Ball Z Super Saiyan, like, goals here? Like, what happened? Why, what did I, what the fuck? Like, why didn't I fight, you know? And I think that that is probably what's happening more often, even in dating or in car accidents or even childcare. Like, if you look at the stories of parents that are more than willing to let their offsprings die, because they're too busy doing other things, you have to start to wonder, okay, is this also a part of nature? And I would say yes. I would say parents acting in self-preserving ways for their own selfish reasons in neglect of their offspring is a part of their evolutionary part process and where they've ended up. But I think you could interrupt that and say you can do something else by giving them the tools. But you actually have to like almost like rewire them, retrain because like even introspection is a tr- it's a tool you have to train. You have to train like at the gym introspection. Oh my god, that's why I joke I'm always having two moments where I'm like fuck this bitch just kidding. We're all humans and everyone's like Wait, even- do you have do you have like Vietnam flashbacks when you're in the gym? Uh, like do you just have like like in regards to anything. Like any anything that's just pissing you off or like bothers you. I well, I will tell you this. I used to motivate myself by bullying myself. And now I motivate myself to remain Zen. And I think that is really hard. So I have flashbacks to like old versions of myself, but then I remind myself I'm not there anymore. And then that puts me back into the present. So in that way, I guess, but I don't really have flashbacks. I don't think in the way that you mean, maybe. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. In the gym, I have like mad flashbacks. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I will say I used to be quite an angry person. I used to like (laughs) punch a lot of my car. Let me tell you, I used to be very unregulated because like when I would get frustrated, that was the one way for me to like express myself. I also come from a very like a physically playful home. So like not like a domestic violence home, but like a playful home. Where like our mm-hmm. brothers, we were allowed to wrestle and fight. My parents bought us boxing gloves. Like we bought a teeth guard. Like we were allowed to be physical in order to mm-hmm. express ourselves. And also, I think like there's a lot about that that translates to the gym. So when I am frustrated, I'm like I'm gonna go work out. And so there's something there that's just like right. I'm gonna like. And I feel it even with me being neurodivergent. I think like with overstimulation, sometimes it helps to work out. So that's all I'm focusing on, and I'm not like getting overwhelmed by a lot of things. So these guns are gonna get my ass. <laughs> Because I'm overstimulated all the time, guys. I'm going to be huge one day. Mm-hmm. My goal is to be big, bro. I'm going to be so big. I'm going to choke my husband out for fun. It's going to be great. But like, okay, <laughs> like it's going to be fun. But um, I wondered what you think about this. I think sometimes the outliers in society, the ones that look like it's not working for the normative because they're complaining so much, tend to be happier because they're going their own way. <laughs> Nick Talbros. <laughs> but like, you know, they're, 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 all of them are delusional. But everyone's yeah. delusional in their own way because they think, stay with me here, they all have the answer. And I'm mm-hmm. saying the, the wrong think 
is that any of us have the answer. Capital T. All we all have is the answer that worked for us. So subjective. The answer that worked for my friend, anecdotal. The answer that worked for my society, cultural. The answer that worked for my religion, belief. We don't Mm -hmm. have a capital T, the answer, or T, truth. So how do you contend with that reality that there might not be one of those? I think there are truths. And like you said, there's no the truth. Mm. Um, I think like when young men are complaining about like their inability to get women, there are certain truths you can give them. But like you said, like a lot of the people that are complaining are never going to make it. Like, for example, I was watching the whatever podcast and I saw this guy with like an anime profile pic donate $60 and he said some crazy shit. He was like, um, you know, my friends want me to go out and hang out and, you know, have fun and stuff, but I'm a virgin and I respect myself. And I, and I'm like, you just donated sixty dollars to a podcast to say that you don't hang out with your boys, and you're a young man. You are lost. Sixty yeah. bucks? You could have you could have done anything else with that money. I kind of realize over time, like watching these podcasts, um, and a lot of like OG Red Pill content creators would say this all the time. Of those of you that are watching this shit a good majority of y'all are not going to do anything about what you've learned. Mm. You are going to continuously watch hate content about women. Mm -hmm. You're going to continuously just like keep coming back here. You're not going anywhere. You're not, you're not going to do anything. And that was like, I remember hearing, that was one of my first like, oh shit moments where I'm like, which am I? Like, am I the, am I the guy who's going to be like sitting here watching my 1 millionth video about why women ain't shit? Or am I going to be, you know, like in the gym, getting my life together, doing what I'm supposed to be doing? It was one of those things where it's like, I realize over time, there are some people that cannot be helped. Yeah. I think that in question of like young men and where they're where they are, I just don't want young men going to like the far right because I just don't think it's beneficial for society in any way, shape or form. For sure. Um, I think the solution is mostly advice based and culture based more so than like legislative based or legislation based excuse me so like when we talk about like multiple truths and the truth you're right there is no like massive like anything that uh, that young men can grab onto that's going to solve every problem Mm -hmm. because as you get more attractive toward women and you start talking to them and dating them you start realizing certain shit that the red pill is never going to teach you and then you're like okay like clearly the truth if i can even get close to something like that is not going to be found on fresh and fit or on andrew tate and i love watching both those like contents uh content creators but as i've grown older i kind of realized like my own individual life is not going to be reflective of these guys i don't want multiple wives bro like one chick is already like a like a whole human being to deal with yeah i'll just keep one i don't want to be i mean i do want to be famous and like you know drown in money and clout but like you know, like, I understand that these are me things. Like, these are me individual things. Yeah. Like, I like I acknowledge the fact that this is who I am as a person. And I think that what young men need probably is, like, more masculine, liberal, you know, male role models that are willing to tell them the truth without necessarily, like, adding in crazy shit. You know, yeah. like, stuff that's getting into the minds of young men. And that's the thing about the panel yesterday. I was like, we're discussing, like... A lot of other stuff that's, I think the thing that, that kind of blew my mind was they were like, yeah, like the young male vote doesn't matter. So we shouldn't be worried about what young men think. And I'm like, well, when they get older, they're going to vote more. Mm-hmm. They're going to give more of a fuck about the world when they start voting. Um, you know, they're going to start affecting the world. Should, shouldn't we like stop this before it could maybe turn into something that could affect women's right to abortion? That could affect sure. the shit that we're saying. It's no biggie now. It's not any biggie now, but I don't want it to be a big problem later on. And I just think that, you know, you're just never going to be attractive to women if you're like in this rage space of like, you know, like you've got to mellow out. You've got to relax. You've got to chill. I don't know. I think. I think. Your individualist, because I remember bringing something like this up and you brought up like neurodivergence, autism, stuff like that. We never actually got into it because Lav did the entire fucking thing. Lav is just really she's in love with me, bro. Me. Lav flirts with me every time I'm on stream with her, bro. Always trying to trigger me and shit. That's flirt. That's flirting from a crazy. Ironically, girl. I watched you, her, and Eridice stream the day before. 
like, oh, that's fucking funny. And I was like, these guys are getting along just fine. And then I hop on the stream. I find out Lab is like on the panel that day. And I'm like, yeah. oh shit, like I'm on here with all these people that I've been watching for a while. Mm -hmm. And things kind of went south. But I wanted to hear you expound on that more because, you know, things did kind of go in a, in a shitty yeah. direction. No, first of all, I blocked Lav because she makes false accusations against people and women who make false accusations against men. Trash. Thank you. I want no problems with you, Lav. I'm just Trash. <laughs> scared Trash. of you. Trash. Um, uh wait what was the question what was neurodivergence <laughs> okay yeah you were you were you, you got into neurodivergence when i brought up like young men yeah, in yeah. so obviously the struggle i'm gonna run into is the men who come to talk to me are anomalies or feel like they are but i'm not really convinced that they are so much as their friends aren't talking about things out loud or they're not getting tested or they're in denial like everyone in this space I always joke is so neurodivergent, but in denial when everyone has ADHD and OCD and like, what do you think that is? That is neurodivergency. What is, that's literally what it is. That's what we mean when we say neurodivergent. So when people are like, oh, I have ADHD, I'm not neurodivergent. I'm like, what, what do you think? It is? <laughs> like, that's what it is. Okay. So when all these boys in schools are ADHD, like Sneeko and being prescribed drugs and they don't know why they're getting it and they don't understand what it is. And you, then you're David Goggins and you also have ADHD and you muscle through and discipline through and then say your life is miserable every day because you're suffering and you won't take a fucking pill to help you. Now that it's easy to find the right pill, it's very hard, but it is possible. You don't have to take it if you don't want to. My concern is that men are missing out on tools and opportunities to actually help themselves be more efficient so they aren't left out in the dust. But it's too embarrassing mm -hmm. to say I'm neurodivergent because it associates you with like fat girls on Tumblr who like love furry shit or something. And I'm saying mm -hmm. we're not all like that. But even if we are, I love you all. I love all my children equally, all of you. But like I want my boys to succeed. I just – need them to understand that we need a masculine role model like david goggins who has adhd bro the goggins mm. has it but his only solution is your life is suffering because you have this thing and i'm like oh, bro take the pill bro take a pill so you don't have to fucking discipline yourself so hard i love discipline bro. i live for discipline right okay. but not unnecessary suffering wisdom is suffering well so when you suffer you gain wisdom not misery I have a joyful, beautiful life, but I had to suffer the right way to get yeah. there, not the wrong way. I suffered a lot the wrong way most of my life, right? Blaming the system, blaming everyone, blaming men, blaming my parents. Until I learned to forgive and move the fuck on and just figure out my life, I never found the way to suffer properly until I could do that. I just want men to learn how to suffer properly because they're going to suffer, dude. Life is suffering. Just suffer well. Mm. yeah i think because i'm not neurodivergent it's mm. kind of um it's hard for me to comprehend like sure. um because like i mean i was a kid and like someone like like some teachers like your adhd and of course it was not true but like that was the closest i ever came to any like neurodivergence sure i think hmm so what you're saying is young men also have to be open to advice that goes beyond how to get women because there's yes. more to having a fulfilled and happy life than just getting women yes and so you're saying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no you well, think about the women who would find you so much more attractive if you were going to invest in the health of your offspring because men who smoke are more likely to bring adhd and autism autistic kids into the world and all of us be smoking hookah all of gen z be vaping yeah okay all my brothers doing nicotine patches Everybody's asthma. got their fucking – so they're about to have some neurodivergent-ass kids, according to science, okay? So I want everyone yeah. to be ready for that offspring that's going to come into the world that they're not willing to admit is going to have problems. And instead of bringing – did you you know the dad meme of doing math with your dad? Yeah. Okay, that was my childhood, and dad was scary. <laughs> and I wish – we all just knew it was fucking difficult to understand math because some of us were neurodivergent growing up. And dad was like, I'm an engineer and I could do the shit in my head, do it in your head. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, it was like WWE in the living room, bro. Like two plus two. And it's just like, Jesus Christ. And my younger siblings, by the way, went to public school. So my littlest brother, I called him the other day. I was like, yo, you were never homeschooled. He's like, no. And I was like, 
I keep saying we were all homeschooled, but bro, you went to full public school from K to 12. He's like, yeah. Mm. And I was like, so he's in a completely different world than I am. Different tools, different yeah. social expectations. Mm -hmm. So again, I understand that men are suffering, but I wonder if men are open-minded to the fact that they might be suffering for more than just the assumed reasons. Mm. Yeah, other than just like the, I know what you mean. Instead of looking at just the big fish, looking yeah. at the little fish. Yeah, the stepping yeah. stones, just to, to build on, oh, just, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? So women can, because like, I've seen black women talk about this, how they're afraid of dating black men who might be homophobic mm -hmm. or transphobic to their kids. Mm -hmm. And that's scary for a lot of people. Like my husband, one of the first, the, you want to know my first dating question? This is the question I ask on every first date. This is yeah. it. What do you do if we have a trans kid? I mean, yeah, I guess that's a, and I mean, you don't have to answer I mean, it, but no, right I mean, I, away, I mean, yeah. oh, do you, do you want to say it? Just accept, you got to accept it. I mean, that's your kid, no matter what, that's your family. I mean, your child is your child. You can't crash out because you didn't get exactly what you wanted in your child. And on top of that, they're not your template. They're mm. a different person. They're not your Crusader Kings three character that you can fucking you know, they're a person separate from you and you have to make peace with the fact that even little shit like your your kid not being some jock, what if they're a mm -hmm. dork? Are you going to crash out then? Like, you know, how angry are you going to be about that? Like, it's really, really important for parents to definitely be able to make peace with the fact that your kid is a separate person from you, yeah. no matter how much you want them to be like this, like carbon copy, or maybe you want them to be the opposite of what you were. And maybe mm -hmm. they might come out being another you and you have to like, like, roll with that you know what i'm saying not even roll with it but just like like what if it were you that was different in some way you yeah. probably want your parents to like you yeah so you know it's one of those things where it's like i've had that question asked like are you an ally <laughs> like are you an ally like yeah and the answer is always yes um but like that stuff is important to ask in a relationship because you know you don't want to be you don't want to bring a gay friend around and then your boyfriend yeah. just hates this person yeah. because they're gay yeah um yeah. You know, I say pause after like something gay is said or something sounding gay is said, but sure, I don't sure. hate gay people. It's just yeah. being, it's just, it's the joke of being a grown ass man. It still yeah. feels a need. To say it's a funny joke. Um, but like in terms of actual hatred or like disgust, I got over that when I was like 12. I was Christian, raised in Christian school. We were taught that like homo homosexuality was the worst thing in the world. And I remember watching like an amazing atheist video where he was like, why the fuck do y'all give a fuck about what other people are doing? And it hit me. I'm like, why the i don't care like i realize like i just like playing video games when i go home and that's it like i'm 12 i don't give a fuck about what other people are doing with their personal lives mm -hmm. so i think that yeah that's a i wonder how we got to this you were Wait, saying something okay two i'm gonna bring it back are you ready i'm gonna bring back two things okay. one ladies did you hear that yeah. he's an ally and he's single <laughs> and he works out so make your moves okay second thing is um Oh, and the girls do want to know what your relationship type is. They've seen it in chat a few times now. Like, what's his thing for women? So we might get into that in a second. But let's bring yeah. it back. Okay. Same yeah. way you see that as a parent. This is how I model my whole, like, theory of people off of, too. It's like your family units. Okay? okay. Peace in the Middle East, please. I'm trying to get peace with my family. Everybody relax. Okay? Okay. So you have 10 different kids, all with different personalities and types. One's a jock. One's a nerd. One likes anime. One likes science. The science guy, he's the anime guy. The anime guy doesn't under – blah, 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 blah. That's men. And then mm -hmm. when you say men are telling us what they need, I'm like, which men? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the jocks or the anime guys? The anime jock yeah. guys? Which men? So that's why I get confused. Because I'm like, yeah. well, which ones? Because they need very different things. Yeah. Mm. So. I feel like. I feel like the <laughs> there's something. <laughs> A lot of old heads like to say this. They say the questions might be complicated, but the answers are simple. I think um, there are so many different types of young men, but we all have to come to terms with the same reality. And I think that's one of those things that you can be a nerd. I was a nerd at one point. I was a dork. Do you watch anime? Reason. Relax there, buddy. I'm yeah. still a nerd. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm still a nerd, but like I grew into, you know, a little bit yeah. more yeah. other territory as yeah, time yeah, yeah. went on. Because, you know, everyone just... You know, some people start out really, really jockish and then they get into anime and they're like, you know, like people, people grow into more, they grow into more. Um, but no matter what you are, whether you're the dorkiest dork or the jockiest jock, 
you bro women aren't gonna just stop being women because you're different from the other guy they like what they like and of course there are other things you need to work on besides looks money status you still have to be a whole person who's mature mentally and emotionally right you can't be um like for example i have like mad paranoia i can't ex i can't i can't at least i can't exude it all the time i have to learn how to control it and keep it to myself as much as possible because i can't have my partner being paranoid i can't like share that i can't like you know what i mean like that has to be something that i can control and contain on my own and that's something outside of how to get laid that men have to understand it's like you're gonna have personal issues that you have to fucking conquer in order to even be a, a partner that's worth being with and that has nothing to do with how much she how hot she thinks you are that's in the realm of like can this person be at peace around you you know what i mean so it's yeah. one of those things yeah. where it's like you know um the the question is complicated but the answers are simple it's one of those things where it's like none of us can escape men or women what the other sex wants and we all have to meet some kind of parameters at some point. You know, you can be some, you know, super nor nerd dork in your mom's basement playing Skyrim like, you know, I used to do um, forever and ever. But, like, women still like muscles. Women still like a, a decent amount of social status or at least someone who gets along with others very well. But, like, this is well. true. Like, you keep it saying so it like it's true. true, but it's not true. I like think women like certain things to a minimum. Like, not to, like, the extent where you need to be the ultra version. But I think women want a, a person that's liked, generally speaking. Yes. I think women yeah. want a person that's fit, generally speaking. I think it, women want it, someone that makes America's a pretty good very amount of fat. America's very fat. Just a reminder, everyone's America very is fat. fat. But it doesn't change the fact that our standards are still our standards, right? Okay, it just, I guess... Are you talking mean, about the shallowness? Like, yeah, everyone, like, wants a six-pack, but girl, I, I also want in and out. Like, yeah. I don't know if I want to call it... Okay. It depends on how far you go. Like, if you want a guy that's like ten percent body fat, your boyfriend's on steroids. I don't know how to. Yeah, I don't know how to break okay. you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you could live in your delusion, but you know, this it's one of those things where it's like, I don't want to cut you off. I'm sorry. No, I don't um, want to cut you off. Go ahead. I'm excited. <laughs> it's one of those things. I'm trying to have a thought, and then, um, oh. it's one of those things where it's like you gotta like watch like how far your standards are. Like, it's one of those things where it's like, you don't want a guy that has like like 10 percent body fat and like like okay you you could like that but you also have to be like understand the fact that like your standards might be a little bit too high like a guy with like five hundred thousand followers okay what for <laughs> like sure. do you like what for what like it's cool to see like oh my my boyfriend is liked by a whole bunch of people but do you need that much i don't think women are looking for that big of an extreme i think women want at least like a a min a reasonable minimum and I think a lot of young men are falling behind the minimum and are trying to figure out how to reach it. But I don't think it's realistic to tell young men that women don't like these. And this is where we're going to butt heads. Um, I don't think it's realistic to tell young men that women don't like these things because it's going to be, there are going to be some women that don't care because they just like you for whatever, like they just like you. And you're going to run into those women like rarely it'll happen, but like you will run into them. They just like you. Um, you're going to run into women that for some reason don't care about those things because they're just different. But most of the ones you're going to shoot your shot on, they care. And if you don't, if you have no intent of adapting, I mean, I don't know what to tell these guys. And this is like, like we said before, like some guys are kind of, con I think you mentioned this. You were like, some people who are complaining are really happy with where they are, which is mm -hmm. true. A lot of people who are whining about not being able to get women, bro, you're on your 100th game you're not getting up like you're not, you're not getting up out the crib you're on your one your one millionth madden game you have not done any like you're you seem pretty content where you are are you sure you want a woman that bad like mm -hmm. are you sure that's what you want because if you did your life would look a little bit different you'd probably be in the gym more you'd probably be like trying to fix your wardrobe you'd probably be socializing more like if getting women or even just sex was that big of a deal to you maybe you do more so i think you're right in the sense that like a lot of the people who are whining they're just yelling like they're just hooping and hollering they're not that yeah. serious and i think that it is also important for people like me who are like men need help to also understand like some of these dudes are just yapping for yeah. sure i think um i don't know if we disagree i think the way that we're phrasing it just means that like when i watch incel documentaries the boys okay. who are in incels are also autistic. They literally say, I've had autism since I was three. I've been diagnosed. Like, I know I'm autistic. I know I'm ADHD. 
mm-hmm. people who are neurodivergent have extreme issues with hygiene. Not all of them. It's a spectrum. And people can struggle to brush their teeth, to like take care of themselves, to groom. So telling them to go to the gym without understanding they're autistic or neurodivergent is not understanding those men. So the mm-hmm. incel communities aren't just normie boys who are suffering. They are ostracized parts of society that are misunderstood by their doctors because their parents won't take them in to get assessed. They're under- misunderstood by the people around them in school. They're misunderstood by themselves. The men don't even understand themselves. And so mm-hmm. then they become these unlikable characters who think women are the problem and then women don't care about them because who wants to care about the guy who's threatening to kill her or do crazy things to her online or something, even if it's just for show. It's scary or it's silly or it's weird. So it's a whole mm-hmm. cycle that I see of like what's actually the problem. Now, even David Goggins would say, and I use him as an example because a lot of boys like him, he was very fat and he was struggling. And how did he finally get himself to do it? He needed to. So a lot of people who want to do stuff, I don't care what you want to do. I'm asking you what you need to do. What's the mm-hmm. need in your life? My need is to fulfill my curiosity. Thus, I will always be going, mm-hmm. right? I'm the breadwinner in my relationship, right? We do talk about bodies and how we keep our bodies. Like we have a rule of not to get too fat or too skinny. We actually have rules around it because we're like, yeah, I'm gonna, I love you, bro, but I'm just not going to want to fuck you. And then it's going to be weird, you know, and then it's going to be weird. But we're very open and transparent. The one reason our type of marriage works, and I'm not asking anyone else to do this, is that we are both people who are very transparent and we just want a relationship where it's safe to say like things out loud. Like my husband walked in the other day. He goes, I got to tell you something. I go, what? And he goes, it's going to sound mean. I was like, I'm emotionally prepared. Go ahead. He's like, are you sure? And I was like, I'm ready. He goes, you're fat. And I was like, what's going on? And he goes, you're right. You did gain 10 pounds. I was like, I told you the skill said it was 10 pounds and I didn't think it was muscle. And like we were laughing and then we roll. And then I realized like how many people can't have that conversation. Yeah. But how many men don't say, hold on, are you ready? And I go, I'm ready. Go ahead. Because like we know it's hurtful to our ego to hear our partner say we're the thing we're trying literally not to be. Here I am Mm. trying to gain muscle. Here I am with my fibromyalgia trying to work out every day. And I'm still not seeing the gains I want because I'm just starting out. I'm just trying to get my protein in. I'm just trying to fucking counting calories is so exhausting, bro. Like weighing all my food is exhausting. All of it is so tiring. Okay. But I want a relationship where someone can say that because it's so safe in this home. We have committed our lives to each other. So now we're going to say it. So unless there's abuse, no divorce, let's go. And it's not abusive to tell me the thing that I want you to tell me, which is something honest. So the question is, do people really want that? Or do people want a relationship where there's games and lies and you got to keep your feelings to yourself? And there's a lot of he handles his shit, I handle mine, which, by the way, I think we do as well. We just also tell each other what we're working on. Like I tell him, hey, I'm really stressed today. My job is annoying. I didn't sign up to be an editor, but here I am editing like fucking so many hours a week. I'm so exhausted. I just want to do YouTube. I just want to stream, but I have to edit. And he's like, I know, but I don't make him edit. I don't then give him my burdens. I handle my burdens. I just want him to know it's happening. And same, he'll tell me his burdens. He has his own responsibilities, but he doesn't give them to me. So what do people really want, right? What do you think? Hmm. Well, the new, the neurodivergent thing you spoke about, I feel like um, I have like a eureka moment where I think what you're trying to say to young men is to explore beyond just their desire for women. For sure. That's what you're trying to say. For sure. Um, sure. To figure out like, what is your complete and like, what do you want from the existence of say a Rashad Crenshaw or a Brittany Simon? Yeah. Um, that's one thing I, I, I was able to do that once I had gotten the whole red pill thing figured out. I was like, okay, like I know what I need to do to get women. So like now I can ask myself, what does the story of Rashad Crenshaw look like in my eyes? Nice. And then I was able to like, you know, like organize everything around it and figure out exactly what I need to do and what I want to do and how I want it to look. Um, I think, I think, uh, in terms of neurodivergent men, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of aspects of like, you know, proper hygiene, simple social interactions they might not be able to understand. And I think even those guys are capable of realizing, okay, maybe, okay, maybe I'm autistic or maybe I'm ADHD. What do I need to do to, uh, you know, not change? Well, what can I do to mitigate the negatives of this sure. as best I can? Or what can I do to make sure that these things don't become a burden for my partner? Mm. Um, that's something the red pill doesn't talk about, like how to be a good partner. Like they tell you how to get to the point where a woman's giving you the the looks, the eyes of like, well, I like you. 
but there's no like okay like now she likes you and now y'all are boo boo things like now what yeah. and that's something that's the one criticism of the red pill that i always was like yeah that's true like they tell you how to get there but not what to do once you've gotten there mm -hmm. and i think that um i think that both men and women in today's society are, are dealing with that issue where it's like okay like i've got the guy or i've got the girl but like 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 what are you doing to keep that person like like yeah. are you a capable are you a capable person or are you someone and are you someone worth keeping which i think is a step further than the red pill has ever gone mm. which is interesting because i think that one of the reasons why the red pill is kind of able to go so far in terms of success without necessarily giving young men the whole explanation i don't know what it maybe it's because maybe their audience of the guys who just for whatever reason just have no interest in doing anything different i mean i remember when i started changing my life it, it became a little bit harder to watch red pill content because it was like okay like i know like i know this now yeah. now it feels yeah. redundant now it feels a little bit now it feels a little bit uncomfortable um and yet these guys are on their one millionth episode and shout out to them i mean they're, they're great content creators but they're on their one millionth episode and they still have like loyal like rabid followers and it becomes a question of like how many guys are stuck in this space where they're not figuring out how to become attractive to women and how to be a keepable spouse and someone you know worth keeping um how, like it, it's i wonder how many because not all these guys are neurodivergent so it's like right there's got to be like a i don't know i might say something i might i might say something crazy this is a wild take but um i think this is <laughs> this might be uh i don't want to say natural selection <laughs> i actually agree I with this i agree already I, I, I want to say that this is like a women's sexual liberation has created a choke point that we haven't really seen in a long time. Because for so long, men were able to control women's sexual choices. Mm -hmm. Like, no, you're not going to go pick that like wild dude over there, the warlord. No, you're going to pick this guy that lives in the village across, you know, down there who's stable and whatever. Um, you know, now women can pick whatever they want. They, they're educated. They have jobs. They can do whatever they want young men can no longer just offer stability now they have to actually have something else something more yeah. than that yeah and i think that some guys are getting that aha moment where they're like oh yeah i'm broke i'm fat i'm a bum okay let's fix this and then there are some guys a lot based on the success that we're seeing in these red pill spaces where these guys are still making fuck loads of money it's like how many guys are stuck in that in that spot where they're like not sure where to go or what to do or maybe they're maybe they're just not motivated like it does beg the question how many guys make up that percentage that you know they used to talk about like most of you guys watching this content aren't going to do shit you're going to just stay the same and keep watching these videos um which is wild to say to your audience like it's basically calling some of the people in your audience a bitch yeah. um mm -hmm. which is why i tell ask you uh, who are you in the anime like who yeah. are you in the story I often encourage my audience, I hope you guys, I hope you fuckers are not watching me in 10 years. I hope you have families and lives and I hope you're busy doing other things because I need Please the next watch me in 10 years. No, I need the next generation to come in and watch me. I need the new ones to come in and watch me. Like there, you guys like send your kids my way, you know, when I'm saying when they're 18. But like the idea is like, obviously I hope they watch me, but I don't hope they watch me to learn the lesson I've already been teaching unless I've upgraded my content, you know, because that's my fear. I think. If I'm being honest with you, I do think a part of it is natural selection, which is why I say everything that's happening is biological and evolution. Like everything that's happening is the reality that we have to accept because like mm. that is how it is going. You're not ready to be someone's husband. You're not ready to be someone's wife. And maybe you were never meant to be someone's parent. And I think that that's the reality. And like, see, I don't think that that's a that big of a video. I'm sorry. A lot of y'all are shit parents. You're not active in your kids' lives. You do not give them the wisdom they need. Your kids are losers sitting in basements because you've allowed them to be. Your kids are obese and dying from diabetes because you allowed them to be. You are literally raising your kids on sugar in front of screens and not loving them because you're too busy working for a child you shouldn't have ever had because you couldn't provide for them. I don't want to hear it, okay? The world is irresponsible and it is a part of the evolutionary process. And this is what it is. Okay. And these parents who are all smoking and drinking while pregnant or having kids with conditions they are not even acknowledging or really radically mm -hmm. accepting that they have done this with their decisions because it's partially shameful 
And partially, we don't have the education to say, hey, you should feel a little bit bad and then forgive yourself. Let's fucking get your kids some help, bro. Because they're going to need it. They're going to fucking mm -hmm. need it. Yeah, that's a big part of like, that's another thing that that's another piece of advice that young men need is like, like, if you want a woman and you want to have sex, like, you might have a kid, then what? You know what I mean? Like, what's that? Let's say you get 100% lucky and it's a normal kid, yeah. heterosexual, you know, um, non neurodivergent, you know, normal kid. You, let's say you just get the easiest deal possible. Sure. What are you going to do then? What yeah. kind of parent are you going to be? What kind of father are you going to be? Like, you know, um, how are you going to raise them? Because it's easy to, like, raise my son to be... It's easy to teach your son to be, like, to try to make your son into a guy that women can like. You can train your son to be... That's easy, but, like, can you actually teach your your child to actually be, like, someone in society that's likable, that's that can be interacted with, that can be married, that can be... Uh, befriended these are things that i guess yeah i think we're exploring the topic of helping young men actually pretty well now like now we're getting to like the outer we're getting to like the the outermost topics where yeah. it's like okay like outside of how to get pussy like okay like what do you do once you've gotten there now what sure. do you do when she says yes to marrying you now what do you do when you have a kid because i don't think most of these young red pill content creators um i don't think most of these young content create uh, not even content creators young content consumers, I don't think most of them want to really be like Tate. Like, I don't think most dudes are built for that. Like, yeah. like even I, when I was like, man, I want this and I want that, I kind of had a, 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 an awakening moment when I was dealing with more women. I'm like, mm, I, don't, I don't really want everything that guy has. Although it's, it looks great and I do want some of, the, some of the wealth and some of the clout and some of the women, it's like, I do know that there's a limit to how much I want when I'm going into like being a grown ass adult with mm. a family. And I think that um, that's a really important thing to be able to do, to be able to say, like, okay, like, you know, like, you want all of these things, you want women, you want sex, but when you finally reach that, like, aha moment, the end, like, that finish line, what kind of young man are you going to be at that point? Which I think is, like, a... But yeah, I'm not going to lie. I, I feel like we've made, like, a, a pretty decent headway here where it's like okay this is the the final form of like giving young men advice mm. where it's like you know you can figure out how to be as attractive as possible um but once you become that once you become that guy what kind of individual are you are outside of being sexually attractive i guess yeah you know it's hard to say as well because well, i again i come from such a specific background where like religion is really prioritized mm -hmm. um so like that part changes the game that's why i don't like i love sneeko so much he's my son he knows he is but like at the same time like he's like when i look at muslim discipline or i look at catholic discipline or jewish discipline like when i look at discipline in terms of religion i'm looking at a different class of men and i'm mm -hmm. not saying the men who say they're religious and then secretly are fucking everybody okay i mean the men who literally do stay virgins or the women who do stay virgins or the people that are following the rules or the people that are adhering to their gods like that's a different game and those women and men aren't gonna hopefully settle for you but if they are it's fine too like you do you but like there are different ways that men are having different relationships with even like what is status and what is help look like what does the kind of help that I need. So that's why I struggle with this whole like systematic stuff because I think these are all games created by groups of people and okay. groups of people that are pretty in the game and they know what's going on. And the, like when I was in, you know, even activism myself, like everybody there was, they kind of knew what was going on. They weren't fucking lost. They knew the people that are lost. I feel like they don't even fucking know how to wake up in the morning. I feel like they don't even know, like, what is the purpose of my life? Like, going back to John Verveke's meaning crisis, a philosophy professor here on YouTube, often associated with Jordan Peterson and that group, if you know anything about them. Um, but he talks about this, how, like, he has sons. They were looking at Tate. There's a meaning crisis in people happening. And when we say there's no churches, what we're really saying is there's no value system to rely on to know what to do tomorrow, to know why I'm waking up tomorrow. Which is mm -hmm. why I always say, if you don't have that kind of community, congratulations, bro. It's on you. Even more responsibility. Because it would have been easier just to pick up a script and choose a religion. It would have told you what to do, Ten Commandments and all that. But now, mm -hmm. you have to work a thousand times harder. You know this going into, like, the atheist bubble. 
Like, oh, fuck, I'm an atheist. What does that even mean? Do I even have values? And it's like, now I have to make them up because I don't have a God to tell me what's up. And it's like, okay, yeah. now I have to study. I didn't formulate my values until I was about like 28, 30. I actually made a video on it. One of my best podcasts, y'all look it up. But I literally wrote them down. I handed them to my partner at the time. And I was like, these are my values. What are your values? Because like our relationship sucks and I'm very unhappy. And I'm telling you right now, I'm not marrying you unless we figure this shit out. Because we will end up in a divorce and I'm not doing that. And he looked at mm -hmm. him and goes, yeah, those are my values too. And I'm like, no, they're not. Like, they can't be your values. Look at the actions you take. I'm saying when shit gets hard and temptation is wiggling her booty at you, what are you going to do? Right. That's what I say by values. Are you going to die for your God? Are you going to say, absolutely not. I cut off my right hand before I cheat on my wife. Are you saying, what are you going to do? And I think a lot of people have preferences. They do not have values. So I definitely want to see that from men, especially if they want women to feel bad for them or sorry, or like hear their vulnerabilities. No, but I, no. you know, I always, I will say feminism did similar things for me where I left my conservative bubble, went into feminist bubble. It was really helpful, validated. Let me cry. Let me hate men. Got me therapy for my PT or not therapy for my PTSD, but for my uh, borderline DBT. It gave me an avenue for healing um, that I needed, but also became stale, also became stagnant. Also, I noticed they really hated men. And I'm like, okay, but are we over this? Like, I went to therapy, so we're done. And they were like, mm. nah, we still hate him. And I was like, oh, no. And so I left. And when I left, they were fucking mad at me. Like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I think I want to be happier over here, bro. But the place that I'm even happy in still has moments where I'm like, why are men being little bitches? Why are they complaining at me? I'm working seven days a fucking week, 12-hour days, 15-hour days. Mm. I don't want to hear it. I'm the, like, I'm working. And then they sit here and say, women have it easy. You're on easy mode. Well, not this one, but also much easier than a lot of other people. I'm so privileged, bro. Hmm. You know? So it's like those balances. Look, everyone suffers more than you. Everyone's better off than you. So where are you in the story? Hmm. I think. I think, yeah, I think uh, young men. Young men honestly people like look at like these people look at like relationship advice in such a political lens which mm -hmm. i can't blame them for because sure. it's become politicized like one of the, you mentioned something about how you kind of had to leave like feminist circles because it was just like too much man man hate it's kind of the same thing with the red pill like at some point i had to stop watching because it's like okay we're on our one millionth episode about why women ain't shit right. and this is like <laughs> it's like some of the content is funny but it's like this is unproductive yeah and at a, at a certain point in time it gets destructive like i saw that one clip of uh this was fucking hilarious sneeko got approached by that kid yeah that was like uh, yeah that wink i'm not gonna repeat what he said but yeah. he went crazy <clears throat> and i began to realize like this is kind of the direction that politics and culture is going in for young men and although i know it sounds like i'm like conservative or like republican which i am not um like don't let the flag fool you i think it's really important for liberals to be very patriotic because conservatives have a fucking monopoly on that right now they do where they make it seem like they're the only ones who give a fuck about america but i think that um genderizing like let it, allowing the right to to like politicize gender advice is one of the worst things that we could possibly do i think that like admitting to young men that women have preferences that are general i, I think that that's not a bad thing like i don't like I, th I feel like there's such a fear of like accepting the fact that women like certain things and on some level i do think it's misogynistic like why do women have to look perfect to men mm. like why do they have to look like they don't like certain things are they not people True. why are we, why can men like ass and titties but if women like status and height we need to we we need to make sure we don't say this stuff because it's too generalizing yeah. i think we kind of need to free up ourselves in a sense of where it's like we can admit that people like things, generally speaking, but sure. people are also individuals, right? But when we start talking about solving problems for big groups of people, we do have to have a very generalized perspective. And I think that um, the individualist aspect is important, and we might disagree here. I think the collectivist perspective is more important, where looking at young men as a monolith and saying neurodivergent or not, regardless of whatever you are, if you're smart enough to know you have a problem with, because there's a lot of guys that don't get it yet. If you're smart enough to realize you're having a problem with women and you're like looking for answers, you have enough brain power to solve your problem. 
And then, of course, adding in what you've, I think you've helped me come to this conclusion as well, figuring out how to become a better person outside mm. of just wanting to get laid. So, but I, I do think, though, that, because I remember you pushed back against me saying, like, women don't, you know, generally speaking, like certain things. Why do you think that that's, like, too generalizing? The data. The science shows women do like those things, but most of all, they want kindness in a partner, which is why they're not choosing male partners. What men if a mean. guy, wait, are you saying women are going gay? Women as are going single. They're buying houses with their girlfriends, with their friends. Women mm, are staying single. Okay. They're career building. Men are mean, bro. Nobody <laughs> wants to go home with Myron who says your pussy looks ugly and smells. Like nobody wants to go home with a guy. And if they do, they're fucking sad and need therapy. But men are mean, bro. Who wants to come home every day to a guy who's like, I don't give a fuck about you or your feelings, bro. And only feels obligated to do it so he can shut the fuck up. Mm. You think that's where you think do you think that's where like relationships are? Do you feel like I feel like and this is gonna piss off a lot of people at probably a lot of your chat. I think one of the main reasons why the guys that women deal with are such dickheads is because they've got mad options. And like I mentioned before, like that friend of mine that was like that had like the perfect woman and it just was just fumbling it because oh, look at all this ass in my phone. I think um I think that's just one of those like nasty bullets that like the sexes have to buy. Like women like guys that other women like. And I know that's gonna piss so many people off. Like this gonna the generalization. You know, the only reason it pisses them off is because it's not their lived experience. So they feel like you're not seeing them. That's something I think a lot of people have to like get over. But like who are you and talking about like, though? Because it's not them. If someone if someone's offended by a generalization that the majority of society is living in. I think that they need to like part of I think I, I learned this as well. Like, for example, when somebody says like um there's too much crime in the black community, it could be like my immediate response to say, fuck this guy. Yeah. But if I'm seeing this shit happening around me and I know it's happening, who and this is a this is a much more broad thing. So I know sure. it's a little bit bigger of a comparison. But it's like it's just unproductive in my opinion to get bent out of shape about a generalization mm. if it's clearly happening furthermore it's like so what if women like men that other women like what if it's bi what if it's biological what if it's the reason why anyone alive is fucking breathing oxygen right like like the, what if it's the reason why we're all here why demonize i think that we and this is going to be a crazy fucking take again i think it is some level of misogyny in this idea on both the right and the left where it's like these fucking bitches love status and it's like why are you saying women love status on both ends women can't like what the fuck they like because it sounds so wrong i guess mm. i feel like we've kind of over and i think this is part of where like a lot of young male rage comes from in the red pill where you go from having this like perfect idea of what a woman is supposed to be like and women are people they're supposed to like stuff Sometimes they're going to like things you can't match up to. Like women, generally speaking, do love height. I'm five, nine, I'm the tallest five, nine guy I know. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great height. Um, great height. Yeah, yeah, I can take the fact that I'm five, nine. I know that I've had a, I had a woman that I really, really cared about and liked tell me, you're not tall enough. She's we not can't. your soulmate, bro. Fuck her. Yeah, I don't know about that, but. Fuck her, bro. Um, She's not your soulmate, bro. You guys were going to get divorced. Fuck her. Literally, not ruthlessly. She's a beautiful girl. We love her. She sounds like a queen. But listen, she was never going to be your soulmate, bro. She's not going to ride with you and die with you when you get Alzheimer's, bro. A woman who cares about your height isn't going to wipe your butt when you have Alzheimer's. Fair point. That is a fair point. But I didn't get, like, bent out of shape about the fact that, like, she preferred a guy of a bigger height. Like, I understand the fact that women like certain things. And I feel like part of being, like, an adult like a, a well-adjusted human being is accepting certain aspects of reality mm. and like moving forward and not being bent out of shape. Even if you might fall into the category of like, oh, um, black guys are more athletic. Well, what if you're not an athletic black guy? Are you sure, going to sure, like sure. throw a hissy fit? Because black guys tend to be like, and this, I'm not even going to get into this because I'm not. <laughs> but the point being is there are certain generalizations that are oftentimes true. Yeah. If you don't fit into it, it doesn't mean you need to like, lose your mind it's okay maybe you don't fit into that but the desire to be seen is understandable 
but you also don't want to put too much stock in being seen. What if someone doesn't see you? Yeah, for sure. Not, you don't mind? Vibe, like, are you, not a vibe. You know what I mean? Like, at some point, like, you know what I mean? Like, not being seen is kind of like part of life, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like, yeah. people are going to look at you and okay, come ready? to unfair. Okay. I'm going to blow your fucking bubble. You're listening. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. You're right. You're right. What if I told you when I think people generalize, they're still just generalizing within their demographic of bubble. So if you move counties, countries, you're only okay. stating the data you have with the people you've surveyed. Because remember that surveys are done with really small groups of people. So you're not really seeing the nuances of how the mold has changed. We're wondering why women or men are changing and still referring to old generalizations instead of adapting to why the new things are happening. If women cared so much about status, why aren't men keeping up with status? If men are so concerned with women's looks, why aren't they seeking those partnerships out? It does seem to be a thing that neither people want and a stereotype all people are breaking. So for breaking it, who's the community that's keeping it? Probably not the majority. It's probably still a very particular type of normal. So I'll say normie. But are they actually doing it in their real life? If you go down to the people you know in your real life, how many of them are men with status? Very few. Okay. So why would that be the generalization? What if you're a young man who has no social media? Like, let's say, like, when I say My status, brothers. like, it doesn't necessarily mean, like, you don't have to be, like, What's famous. the social media back? Actually, can you educate me on this? Because, like, my brothers all have Instagrams that are private for family and friends. They are not mm -hmm. public figures. I'm the only loser in the family on the internet. All my friends and family, even, like, non-related people, none of us are on the internet. So what does that mean to be a followers or have internet? What's that? This would be a Gen Z thing. Because, okay. like, if, if you're a millennial, you've been spared, like, this fuckery. Okay. Um, How many followers you have does matter to women to an extent. Like, if like, and I don't even blame them because it's like, if you meet a guy and he's okay looking and he gives you his phone and he's got like no followers, which is where I am right now because wait, I have wait, my laptop. Why would a normie have followers? Like, why would a nor are they social media people? Like, why would my brothers have followers? They're Gen Zers. Why would they care about followers? They're not on. Like, what, like the young men who are like looking out for guidance, a lot of them are not socially calibrated. So some guys who have good, great social lives and good romance lives, they're not, they don't need strong social media. Maybe they're attractive. Maybe they're tall. Maybe they, they've got something else going on that makes like social media status a non-factor. Okay. But if you're a guy who say you're starting from ground zero, which a lot of these guys are, which is why they love red pill content because they don't know where the fuck they're going. Mm. For those guys, like I referenced before, you got no followers and you got an anime profile pic. Bro, you, you, like... Like, that's great that you love anime. I love anime too. But, like, women do care about your presence on social media, spe specifically Gen Z, which goes to my greater point about, like, bubbles. Millennial women might not care much about social media because you guys got to experience life knowing that this shit isn't really that big of a deal. Sure. What if you're Gen Z? What if your formative years were centered around your social status in almost every fucking way? You can't comprehend not caring about a partner's minimal presence on social media like it's not even like this is a this might be a generational gap thing but where I it's even, like, like how my young siblings you don't are. talk about this none of them have public profiles i'm on all their public profiles like they don't care about they this don't. stuff so what that's what i'm saying is it culturally like to your city to your state is this like um a part they of might not care the, mm -hmm. they might not care specifically but i would argue gen z very much cares about social status and, okay. and there's some people that don't care i know some people that give no fucks about social media okay i lost last account so i'm fucked but i know a lot of guys who don't care but it doesn't change the fact that generally speaking it does matter and it can't affect you it's i don't think that mm -hmm. i don't think that it's wrong for women to give a fuck about you being liked but i do think that w women especially gen z and i think it's a really gen z thing and this is really important when we're discussing young men because we're talking about a young gen right like gen z guys who are dealing with a subculture that maybe millennials can't wrap their mind around where they're like well what bubble are you in the gen z bubble in and of itself culturally is massively different right yeah like it's probably harder for a millennial guy to fall down the fucking red pill pipeline because he's grown as fuck he's probably spent enough time away from social media sure. in his formative sure. years to be able to make different life decisions and have different perspectives but i think people underestimate how different gen z is and how we value 
stuff like social status in relationships. Like, generally speaking, I mean, we look at human history. Only a minority of men have reproduced um, for a myriad of reasons, but social status is definitely a big factor in that. Sure. I think that, I don't think women are looking for, like, some fucking multimillionaire rapper. Right. But I do think that women are looking for a guy that has some, some sign of, like, do you, are you liked on some level? Which is fair, yeah, right? If like, you're dealing um, with something, uh, you know, weird. Go ahead. I'm sorry, is Gen Z followers kind of the same thing as, like, I want to know I can take my husband to a restaurant and he knows how to socialize? Kind of in the same vein, where it's, like, followers became, like, this way of, like, judging a person's, like, I don't want damn near worth. Like, in a way, where it's, like, how many followers do you have in comparison to how many people are following? Like, petty shit that does not matter. But this stuff for Gen Z is real. And I know it sounds fucking insane. Mm. But, like, men, especially as myself, like, I can say experience-wise, like, having a decent social media page is important for, like, most guys. Some guys, they don't have to. Like, I know a guy from high school, he's six foot two, six foot three, handsome guy, no Instagram. He doesn't need Instagram. He's a very good looking person. So he can just sit there and just chill and just be himself. And he doesn't have to worry about his social status. But if you're a more average guy and you're starting from ground zero, that matters. You don't have looks working for you. You may not have height working for you. I don't think that women in general don't care about Instagram followers. I do think it's a more heightened though, irrationally heightened in Gen Z. I think women generally do care about your social status in social media and amongst people. But I will surrender my point that Gen Z is like, I think our perception of social media is like unbelievably like unhealthy. So I do think you're right in the sense that I'm in a generational bubble mm. where it's hard for me to comprehend people, maybe even in your audience who might feel like I'm talking crazy. All of them are getting triggered. It's really interesting. Yeah, they're, they're, I, I'm, they're, not, I'm sure they are. Cause well, I, I'm sure they are. And yeah. I, yeah, I, I surrender. Really... Part of them. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, I surrender part of my point that it's a generational bubble, but I think that like when young men are saying, hey, like this shit matters for us and like women are like, no, it doesn't. It's like, well, like, bro, like we're telling you that we're not like this shit matters to young women. Yeah. And yeah. if women are saying, no, it doesn't. It's kind of like. It's kind of like we're kind of like at, at an impasse where it's like, you know. Yeah, I always say, like, if it's not working for the people you know, it's the people you know, right? So, like, ultimately, I weren't, I will ask my brothers, because I'm very curious. I'll even ask them, I'm like, hey, am I fucking wrong on this? Like, or not wrong on this, but, like, what experience am I missing? Because I do want to know. There must be some, I'm going to say this out loud, and I think this might be true, but I doubt you because you're in this sphere. In order to be in the sphere, in order to be connected to anyone that I talk to, I feel like you cannot be a normal, popular kid. But I'm wondering, are you a normie normie who's pretending not to be normie? Are you a fake normie who's pretending to be normie? Because I'm dead serious. Like, you're talking we'll give about- you the chronological. I'll give you the whole story. Okay, tell me. So I started out, I started out, like, I'm still nerdy. Mm -hmm. um, I started out, like, nerdy as fuck. But- like over time, like I was watching the amazing atheist at 13. You're a dork. Like, come on. Like, you know what I'm saying? You are a nerd. Um, you're an, and, and I was always cool with that. I played video games mostly growing up. I didn't really socialize as much. I was kind of chill, just like being in the crib, like not really like getting out and stuff like that. Um, but like over time, like you change, like your, your priorities change. You get older and you're like, well, like Roblox and Skyrim is like, that's fly, but like I'm 16, 17 now not really all that cool to be chilling at the crib when everyone else is going to, you know, going to parties and hanging out. Like your priorities shift where you're not like, I think this is the funniest shit I ever, do you remember when Kanye and Drake were having mad problems like in 2021 or it was like Donda versus CLB? Yeah. He sent Drake a funny ass message. This shit had me, every time I think about it, he said, he said, I've been dealing with nerd ass jock niggas like you my whole life. <laughs> and he was saying that to Drake. And it was one of those like, <laughs> I realized, like, okay, like, it's possible to be a dork and a nerd and still be a little bit popular. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't say I was, I wasn't bullied or picked on because I was, like, witty enough and, like, talkative enough to where, like, people were like, you're not cool, but we don't, we don't hate you or we don't look at you as, like, a loser. You're just yeah. there. But I wasn't, um, I was never, like, the guy. So it was like one of those things where like I kind of had that experience where I started out 
nerdy like you're definitely not like if you're in this space you're not you're definitely not some like popular kid like okay. even like zerka he likes fucking naruto and shit like, obviously what a nerd like, bro yeah. i couldn't take these people yeah. i couldn't take sneeko i couldn't take none of these people to a normie party and have anyone look at them like what's wrong with you it's too exaggerated the online space is too exaggerated for real life Look at Lav yelling yesterday and being so mean and personal. Like, that doesn't happen in real life. In real life, no one's going to call yeah. up my borderline and say something fucking fucked up like that. Like, no one does that in real life. That's an online also, chronic habit. I think it's also racial in a sense that, like, growing up black, there is a pressure to be cool. Mm. Or it's like, you, you do, like, if you start out nerdy, you're probably not going to, like, I know some guys that have named, and shout out to them. Maybe I'm just a bitch for not staying true to the fucking cops. <laughs> But, like, a lot of guys are still, like, strong-ass nerds to this day. And sometimes I wonder, like, was I just bitch-made? Like, was I just, did I just, like, did I just, like, give in? Like, where did I, did I go right or did I go wrong? Like, mm. um, but there is, like, a pressure to be cool. Yeah. In the sense that we're, and then there's also, like, shit can get real from saying the wrong thing. Oh. Where, like, you, you, like, like, laugh calling out your BPD. That was, like, a moment where I was, like, this is happening because this is not in real life. Like it's yeah. one of those things where like I'm reminding myself, this is happening because it's not in real life. Because if this were in real life, a lot of the words exchanged wouldn't be exchanged. And like growing up as a young black kid, and I know this might offend people, but like there is a lot of there is a lot of like there is a lot like talk shit get hit is a very real thing. Oh, bro, I, after stream, well. after stream, I said, oh, Lab's lucky because I would have WWE'd her in any other reality. She's lucky yeah. she's cute on the internet and this is a game. She's lucky it's a game, bro. And it's a game yeah, where you don't hit people. Like, she's lucky it's a game where you don't hit people. There's a lot of Southern white boys that are like that too, where it's like, it's like if you talk crazy, they will more than happily body slam you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, I kind of, I did have a strong desire to be more accepted than I was as a kid, sure. which probably drove me a little bit more to being normie. Yeah. So like, I can tell you the whole And by the way, can I, just say, can I tell you, I think normie people yeah. are incredibly shallow. And I think they're boring as fuck. And I love them all to bits and pieces. But they are worried about like what social media is happening on social media while the real life is going by. And then they're wondering why they're sad. You are so much more interesting and introspective and fascinating. And watching you in real time contemplate your life and your existence right here in front of an audience is a beautiful fucking thing that a normie would not have time to do. I think normies are... <laughs> I like normies because without normies, I well, well, then that'd be a dumb thing to say. I think normies are cool in the sense that like, you gotta, you gotta learn from everybody. Absolutely. Like normie, like I needed dudes to be like, bro, like you being weird, like bro, like you're sure. you're you're acting. Like, you know, like I needed guys that were a little bit less nerdy to be able to like. There is like that shallowness that normies have. Yeah. Like when you're a full on nerd, you need like one of the nicer guys to come along and say like, bro, chill. Like yeah, you trip. Like you know, you need somebody that's willing to like come to you and say like, bro, like you're tweaking right now. But like. Mm -hmm. That was like, I kind of realized that although normies can be perceived as a little bit more shallow, you kind of want like that balance. Like you want to be able to yeah. be able to, you want to be able to, be, you want to be able to know your limits as a fucking, what, what's the opposite of normie? I don't want to see you keep shitting on nerds and dorks. Well, subcultures, like subcultures create themselves yeah. because normal society doesn't have a place for them. But I will say I go to my most normal brother. <laughs> And I go, hey, what, what's this? What is happening? And like he translates for me. And he's very, mm -hmm. he suffers from pretty privilege. He's like Hassan, so annoying. Six something, beautiful Middle Eastern men. And they fucking like, get, they, their life is so easy. And they're like, anyways. So I'm like, okay, you're normal. What are the normies doing? Like, tell me. And he tells me, you know, he's into Marvel and all that stuff. But not in a nerdy way. In a normie way. Normies who like Marvel is a completely different experience than when a nerd likes Marvel. Like he's not the fat guy with glasses who has all the fingerings in his house and spent like six figures on them. He's the guy who mm -hmm. goes to it with his boys so they could joke and like have some fun about like Marvel characters. But to be fair, he does love Toriyama. Mm, he does like Dragon Ball Z. I gotta push back. I think a lot more people are less normie than they give off the the idea oh. of being. Wait. So like. Wait. 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 I'm gonna push back. Hold your thought. Because this is the one thing about generations that don't work. Because if you okay. actually believe that, then you would have to say then, if you really examine the individual, no one fits into the average and no one is the generalization. Mm, you got me there. But I can I get my... Yes, let me, please, go. Let me I'll shut up. I'll shut up. 
my conspiracy theory stems from the fact that everybody started fucking with anime around 2019 2020 as a early gen zer i i i remember bringing a dragon ball z manga to school mm. not gonna lie my social status took a hit that day. Anime was not cool in 2012. I'm not gonna lie. Damn. And you know, now people that used to clown me for it, and I was cool with it because I'm like, bro, I, I enjoyed the show. It's a good show. They're they got anime pro. I'm like, nah, you ain't about to act like this shit didn't happen. Like, you're not about to act like you did not clown me mm-hmm. for watching Naruto or mm-hmm. talking about Avatar in school or what like you're not gonna act like this didn't happen. I think a lot more people are kind of like spooked to just say like yeah fuck with that because it's like looking back it's like how was i the only person that fucked with like cartoons and show there's no way we're all 12 you mother y'all like something we're just not talking tv bro cartoon network was on tv we're all watching tv looking back i was like y'all pretty y'all did a very good job of acting like you watched nothing but espn but we're 20 something now looking back y'all motherfuckers just lying bro like somebody wasn't telling the truth so i feel like normie people are a lot more a lot more nerdy i guess than they might give off the impression of being but i think like as humans we all want to fit in like some people like i I will admit when i was younger i didn't care about fitting in as much as i did when i got older like when i was younger i was like yeah like yeah dragon ball z i'm a nerd yeah but this shit is hitting though i fuck with it so i'm gonna keep reading it so good um but as i got older i was like yeah there are certain things that i like but I'm not going to go all out in expressing it as much now. And maybe I have, like, maybe I have become pussy or whatever, but, like, that is one of those things where it's, like, I understand why somebody would say, like, are you really a normie? Are you just, it's, like, I don't know. Like, you kind of, you just get older and your priorities change. I, I will never, like, let go. Like, I listen to, like, soundtracks from, like, Skyrim to this day. Like, I'm I'm not ashamed so of, like, so so yeah, like, I'll I'll listen to the fucking music. Like I I'll I'll watch the Borgias on fucking YouTube or whatever. Like I'll 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 do nerd shit, but I will admit, like, I, I do have some normy aspects to me because it just as time goes on, you just you start yeah. liking girls and you like like you like status and you like all this other stuff, you know, besides just video games. So like it just called coalesces into just being this like nerd ass like normie, I guess. No, I think ultimately, like because I even um I really think that when I say normal, I mean to say like not me, but then when I'm in my group, I'm like, oh, I'm very normal, bro. I'm normal. I'm more normal than all of you. I might have a life off this internet. I'm more normal than Mm. all of you. And then there's like this idea of like, what is normal? It's just like this idea we have in our head. But then when I look at the studies and I look at the status, or I try to understand like, well, not the status, the, the statistics, I'm trying to figure out like, what is this based on? Who who are they talking to? What's the conversation around these numbers? Because I do think everyone is freaking out that they're not playing to some tribe. And I think that's fair. So that's why I always say like, we all live in bubbles, but then we can also choose to make them our life or we can choose to make our own bubble. So my husband and I, like we have this little bubble we made in our apartment, right? This is our home. We have a home here. We have a cat. We have a life that when we go out in public and we're socializing, the moment we get home, we're like, whoo, we take it all off. It's like we're unmasking. We're like fully ourselves. We're in public. We are in allowing space for other people to exist, mm. which means it's not just yeah. about us. So we, how are you? Like, it's not just about me right now. Tell me you have your moment. Let's have a social. Mo- That's what socializing is for is to give other people space within your space. But also, I think going back to seeing people, I think there's all parts of us we can see. Like, I think you and I could say, oh, we have some overlap with our anime interests or we have some overlap yeah. with maybe some gym stuff or some X, Y and Z. Or like I said, you noticed on the panel yesterday how I mentioned some Menosphere stuff and nobody else looked like they got it. But you I was like, y'all not watch these people. <laughs> Like, you knew what I meant when I said what I said. Everyone else looked a little like, oh, I kind of know who that is. And I was like, you don't know who it is like the way I know who it is. Anyways, that's us saying we have a thing we can see in each other that helps me humanize and put you in, like, a box that also allows me to trust the box and go, Mm. okay, this person is safe. This person knows what I mean. So when I talk, they don't, like, oh, my God, Brittany's a freak. What the fuck? Like, that's why I say in different countries – if you take two people from two foreign countries and put them together, someone's going to feel like someone else is not normal. But they're all yeah. normal according to their culture and their bubble. So then when we yeah. all get together, it's like 
are you normal? What we're, I think, trying to say is like, are you safe? Are you typical? Are, do you have behavior I can expect so I can predict what's next? Like when I say, hi, how are you? And regardless of how you're doing, you better say fine, bitch. Right. Okay? Because I didn't actually want to hear your sob story today. I just wanted to get through my cash register or through my doctor's line or through my – because what we're signaling to one another is I'm normal. I know what the script is. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. So when you deviate from that script, like going somewhere barefoot, you're like, whoa, hey, we don't do that unless we do. Mm -hmm. You know? So again, I think like everyone is normal. Because I want to be loved like everyone else. I want a safety for my kids like everyone else. I want good schools like everyone else. I want good health care like everyone else. The way we have a relationship with those things just looks a little different, which makes people then be afraid, right, of each okay. other. But ultimately, like, that's why I say I get along with everybody unless you're obviously overly mean. Like Myron, I don't like how mean he is. He's too mean. I love Abbott and Preach. Do you watch Abbott and Preach? A lot. Yeah. I love them. <sighs> I can't tell you how what a relief is. Like, I'm not even arguing. Like, I'm not even, no, I'm sorry. I'm not even exaggerating. It is, like, such a relief to me to hang out with somebody like Abba and be like, oh, my God, you're so nice. <laughs> He's so nice. He was such a gentleman. He was so, and I just thought, man, if you were Myron, I would want to die. Because, <laughs> like, he's so mean. Just, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I think, I think um, there's an, there's an entertainment aspect to it. I think, sure. um. I think he he definitely understands that um, playing up that character on that show. I don't know if it's fully a character because they definitely do believe way too much of what they say. Um, it's one of those things where it's like, I, I welcome all the characters. I welcome all the bullshit. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like people like Myron need to exist. People sure. like Abba need sure. to exist. Sure. People like, in order for this space to be as entertaining as it is for all the people that consume content like myself. Um, I welcome the fuckery sure. to an extent. Sure. I don't like being involved in it, but I like observing it. But um, hmm. do you mean that from a business perspective? Because from a YouTube perspective, absolutely. From like a community aspect, I don't think I'd want Myron in my communities, like my literal communities. I wouldn't want him dating my daughters, right? From a from a business aspect, it's great because sure. like they provide like great entertainment. Mm -hmm. And from what I can tell, Myron's a pretty tight lipped guy in terms of like how he deals with the people that are cool with him in the space yeah. like you don't really see him like going crazy on destiny or like wild and out on people he's getting along with sure um so like from a business perspective a guy like him in spite of his insane beliefs it's like okay like he's he's just chilling um but in terms of like day-to-day -day, for sure like a guy that writes a that writes a book saying women deserve less i read that book i bought it really yeah okay i, I need to research I need to get on your level. Um, yeah, on a on a community wide level, I don't think it's funny that a lot. It's a good question you asked. A lot of us guys that have consumed red pill content love it to death, but if we had to send our sisters or mothers or someone else away to be with a guy that's like all the way into red pill, I think half these niggas would have a heart attack and die in that yeah. moment if they had. Yeah. yeah, I don't think. Which is why it's, it's so important to like extend your beliefs to. The people you care about like do you want your sister dating a red pill guy or like when destiny asked nico would you would you marry off your daughter to andrew tate it's like one of those things where it's like you can believe what you want to believe but when you like expound it to you know someone you care about i'm gonna piss off your audience for example um i think it came up in conversation did it come up like caring about like what your woman like what your girl is like wearing or whatever sure sure i think um and I've had this argument with plenty of women. And I my 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 question to them is always this. Like, if you had a son and you love your son and his wife or girlfriend was leaving the house at Friday night, like 8 or 9 p.m. every week or every Saturday or whatever, dressed, like, scantily clad, sure. going out to go clubbing with her girls, could you really look at your son and say nothing ever? Mm. Could you really just, like, you know, like, you don't want to put, like, obviously, like, if your girlfriend has, like, a fat ass or titties, bro, you know, you know what you're, you know what you're getting into. Her body's going to be her body. But when someone's going out of their way to, like, parade themselves to others, can you actually look a family member in the face and say, why are you insecure? So it's one of those things where, like, both sides have, like, crazy beliefs where when you actually just expound it to someone you give a fuck about, you're like, whoa, actually, maybe I couldn't look my brother or my son in the face and say, get over that. You're insecure. 
or maybe I can't look at my sister and say, oh yeah, he thinks that you're, that you deserve less mm -hmm. and that you're just, you know, you're you know, <laughs> the crazy shit that they say. I don't think people expound their beliefs to those that they care about. And that's so important. And of course, like misogyny is way worse than thinking someone's insecure for not wanting their girlfriend to wear something crazy on a Friday night. But the point being is like, these things matter to people and oftentimes we can like brush it off until it's happening to someone we give a fuck about and then it forces us to kind of ask ourselves are we against this because it's right or, or do are we against this because it's wrong and do we believe it's right in any way shape or form because we're not thinking of it in a way that affects us so i don't know sure. i'm rambling here but that was a good point that you brought up in terms of like like is this is this kind of content could you see someone like this being in your community could you mm. see a Myron dating your daughter could you mm. see an andrew tate <laughs> like you know what i mean that's a good question to pose to someone yeah. who's like hardcore red or even like, sneeko i love sneeko but no i always tell women that's why i mean it like youtubers might get mad at me when i'm like don't date him he's a cheater but like i'm not <laughs> saying like don't like him like him all you want i love him don't date yeah. him though he's a cheater <laughs> like he's gonna fuck you over bro now this is what i'll say i think my audience would agree guys I think we would agree that if our people left the house at 10 p.m. looking slutty AF, we'd be like, yo, 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 where are you going? Yeah, at least what's up. Right? Like, what's up? What's going on? Because we love our people, and that's kind of out of character for all us introverts who never leave the house. <laughs> but also, are you going with the gays? Are you going with the boys? And also, I, in all my clubbing years, never went to a straight club. I think once we went to one, and it was a horrific experience. I've always gay clubbed. So that also changed things up and not lesbian club because, you know, you lesbians never show up. It's the gay guy clubs. They show up. So the mm. idea is like, I don't think it's weird to say, hey, whoa, what's our lifestyle like? Are we leaving the house yeah. at 10 p.m. to go to the club? Because like, I remember my partner. Oh, my God. We got married and he's like, hey, so now that you're like in Croatia, do you want to go to like a club? I was like, what? Like a club? Like, what do you mean? And he was just like, no, no. Well, yeah, like a club. And I was like no like we already went through our 20s i don't want to go to a club i want to go to bed by nine and that's not even true yeah. it's like i stream i don't want to do that and he goes mm -hmm. i was just asking because even though we've done that separate do you want to do it together i was like i literally would rather kill myself i don't want to do that <laughs> now he was like he's like do you want to go to a bar i was like oh hold up do you mean a croatian bar which are like coffee shops with the like booze yes i do they're classy mm -hmm. they're chic we sit around and talk about anime with his boys okay and all his boys are nerds, so we all sit around and talk about anime and drink ciders. So, Neat. like, very cool. Next to Roman ruins that are 2,000 years old, bro. You're, now you're, like, trying to bring out like more nerds. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, like, next to literally, like, Roman nerd. ruins. Don't quote me on the 2,000 years, guys. I don't know history. But you know what I mean? Like, next to a wall that was up. And I was like, wow, Croatia's kind of wild. Like, one of the most, the oldest roads are through here. Like, these buildings are, like, 1,000 years old. And I'm sitting here with my American ass just like, mm -hmm. Yep, mm -hmm, yep. Yeah, so anyways, tapping into the nerdier part of me now, bringing up that see? shit. I'm just saying, like, okay, I don't think it is weird to ask your partner, do we have the same values? Because my values say, and this is why it's not about insecurity, though it could be. It's not about it be. being jealous because it could be. It's about values. If you are okay with your partner leaving the house, going to a straight club with girls to dance sluttily around other men, that's you and that's your relationship. But I think it is very common and normal, <laughs> look at me, to say, mm, that feels a little sussy. Because, like, I'm going to tell you this right now. The only person um, I'm going to do those things is with, like, um, my husband or my girls or my gays. But I'll tell you this. I'll, I'll serve you one, uh, another challenge. I am on OnlyFans. Okay. And a lot of people are like, aren't you married? I was like, yeah. But one of the things is, like, before I even met my husband, I've been like a nudist activist. I've done naked parades. I joined all the noose events in Seattle. I was very, very ingrained in that community because I was like trying to figure out myself. How do I feel about my body? How do I feel about the body as a entity, as a vessel? How do I feel about it? You know, because like, I consider this like our ship that holds our soul. So you got to keep it mm -hmm. in shape because like, you know, it's kind of like driving things, you know. Yeah. And so I told him I'm sex positive. I want to be sex positive. I want to be out there with it. I want to be. Also, I want to make it clear that I'm not an OnlyFans girl. Like, you wouldn't ask me to show up to, like, whatever podcast or Fresh and Fit. Like, I'm not even making the same kind of content. If I'm doing my thing because I'm, like, sex positive and queer. I'm thinking about it from an artful perspective. But I'm also thinking about it from a sex worker perspective because I think it's both. For me. Okay. For me, ladies. For me, men. For me. So 
did I just put out a video of me masturbating? Absolutely. It was great. It was fantastic. Thank you for asking. It was very beautifully done. I really love the shots that I got. But I'm looking at it even like a YouTuber, right? I'm just thinking like, this is beautiful. And I would have put, I used to post all my shit for free. Because I just mm -hmm. wanted to be like, yo, did I not make a good ass film or what? But I can understand how there's a stereotype of a type of Instagram girl and a type of OnlyFans girl. And you notice how like, look at me. You know that's not me, bro. But I'm still doing OnlyFans yeah. and I'm still on Instagram. But I'm not the stereotype of the category of bubble of girl who's quote Instagram girl, OnlyFans girl. So can you see the overlap of me with fucking Naruto and Dragon Ball Z and all this, all this, all this? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like it's it's very much it's it's rare to find, but it's very much possible. Totally. I think, like what you were bringing up, like if you're dating someone that does OnlyFans, you probably met them before they. You probably met them after they started OnlyFans, so you know. Yeah, you know what this is, and it's yeah. not someone who is like talking about commitment and how much they love you, and then one day they're going to the club looking like For they're ready sure. to find you. Yeah. Right, that's two different things. I think. Um, I think. I would venture to argue that it's more insecure of a man to say, hey, look, this is really wrong. This is not wrong. This is, it's wrong for me to go against my values. I should talk to my partner and see if this is something that we either can't compromise on or can make sense of. I think it's insecure to know that something's happening that you don't really want to happen mm. and you can't see yourself continuing with, but still staying there mm. because you're worried someone might call you insecure. Mm. I think- there has to be some level of security, especially as a man, because it's hard to like just for the average guy burn through women. You're probably gonna probably be a while before you meet another woman. You got you kind of got to be a secure person to say, look, you know, this might not like this might not be a thing that we can both compromise on. What's what do you value more? And then having to accept the fact that maybe your partner wants to go to the club and they don't want you telling them what to wear and what to do because they're in a place in their life where that's what they enjoy. Sure. And you're gonna have to take that L. And I think that it's important for men to be able to responsibly, rationally, non-violently make their boundaries known, but also be responsible enough as an adult to say, look, okay, this is kind of far for me. I can't really do this anymore and walk away. Yeah. More so than like stewing in the, cause guy, like it's very rare to find a guy that can be in a relationship where a woman is doing that and not be bent out of shape. So it's like, you're just bottling up this energy. that's probably going to come out in a way that you're really going to regret if you don't I hate to say it, like, man up and just say, hey, like, like, what's going on? Like, where, where are you mentally? Where are yeah. you? What do you, like, is this, is this what you want for the rest of your life? Are you looking towards something else? Have you met someone else? What's going on? I think that requires a level of security that I think most people generally don't have. Um, but, like, I'm sure, like, I'm probably triggered. <laughs> I'm probably pissing off your audience. Um, but... I don't know. I mean, I feel like there's like a lot of, I feel like both the left and the right have unrealistic dating expectations and cultural norms. And I think that as we get deeper and deeper into like bubbles, I think young, particularly young men and women are becoming kind of like irrational in what to expect from the opposite sex. For sure. And that's why like I'm so concerned about um, bringing young men more to the left, even though I might not seem like a liberal, which I am, but I get it. It's so important to bring young men to the left because like, an egalitarian society where people are free to do what they want, I think is what men really want. Everyone wants. I don't think young men are really ready for a world where the incels get to have a wife because gov the government says so. Right. Like who's really trying to send their sister off to some loser mm -mm. because right. it's what's best for society. I don't even think men as angry as they are, even if they think they want it, if it comes time to give up people they care about, it'll be the bill would be rescinded as soon as it, it'll it'll be done away with no so i don't i feel i feel like i have a very centrist approach to these things because i always feel like the truth is in the middle as it pertains to this stuff i think it's never really one side i think it's both individualistic oftentimes as you say where it's like you have to also figure out who you are as a person if you're trying to become more attractive to women because you can't just meet all the marks of what the average woman wants and then say i've arrived because you really haven't arrived what if you have mental health issues what if you have an addiction what if you have something else going on outside of being attractive that could completely derail your relationship now you're sure. basically worthless to the woman that you want to be with yeah so 
I think um, your individualist aspect definitely kind of broadened my horizons on what advice to young men actually looks like instead of just saying, you know, feel free to. No, I think like it's interesting to hear you say because like I think my audience is probably more unique in the sense that they're all like so different from each other, which is why my Discord's so great because we're all they're international, they're global, they're interesting, they're all different genders and perspectives and religious backgrounds, and they are all different levels and they all have different relationships with introspection. But more than anything, they just want to live in a world where they can just do what they want and everyone can have preferences, but no one's going to like yeah. hold it legally against them or no one's going to like persecute them or no one's mm -hmm. going to do anything. And I think like you said with men, like one of the things that I think is so cute about my, my youngest brother in particular is that how protective he is of my mom. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really, really precious. And I think a part of that is I'm looking at him like, okay, you love mom. Mom mm -hmm. is a say it with me woman and like we want to treat mom with dignity. So what does dignity look like? And dignity is going to look different culturally speaking. But I think as long as things are dignified, there's the way like my dad would never talk about my mom the way Andrew Tate or Myron talk about women. My dad mm -hmm. would like never allow his sons to talk about women that way. And if when he does hear it, he's annoyed. He's like, hey, that's not how I raised you. You speak mm -hmm. about women with dignity. We're Middle Eastern. But we're the kind of Middle Eastern bubble, and I think a lot of Arabs feel this way, where, like, women are treated with a lot more dignity than whatever is, like, seen in these Dubai clips you all see. But, like, there's a lot of dignity there because the mother is the matriarch. She does everything. She cooks and she cleans and she feeds everybody and she's slaving 24-7. And the men are all about taking care of, which is why when I had my period, I called my father. In Muslim homes, when women are on their period, even during fasting times, they're given more like leniency and luxury because like we understand like what you're going through is like, so there's like a respectability that is there because it's mutual and symbiotic. But when one side or both sides are angry and in competition and always getting, I'll tell you this, in my feminist days, I was in competition with my partners. Total mistake, <laughs> red flag. I was a yeah. horribly toxic person in my 20s in that sense, like horribly toxically feminist, horribly in like competition with my partners, thinking like all of these things. And then I realized like, this is not what I want. I want to be on a team. I want this team to make it to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. That's as far as I go with straight analogies. But like, okay, that's what I want. Okay. okay. I want to get, I want to go to the thing. Okay. And I'm not going to do that if I'm in competition with my partner. Mm -hmm. Like we are on a team, period. And I don't think a lot of people are ready to be on a team. Yeah, I think um, that's a that's a relationship perspective that like is really because that's what's like that's what life's gonna feel like is life's gonna feel like you and that person teaming up against shit, which is basically like one of the best ways to grow a bond with someone is to feel like you've gone through something with them. Yeah, rather than science. Yeah, like that's that's where that's where bonds and like that's where like people who aren't related to one another start treating each other like family because they've been through enough shit together where it's almost like, yeah, we're not related, but like at this stage in the game, yep. like, you know what yep. I mean? Like we've been through so many battles and wars together that like to not look at you like family is impossible. Yeah. And I think that's where like the uh, bond and family comes from. It's not necessarily the aspect of relation. It's the fact that you've been around this person forever. Every bad thing that's happened, they either were there for it or you spoke to them about it. So it's like, that aspect of relationship is really important and it's a really good thing that you pointed it out because that teamwork perspective is going to give you that kind of tribal like look this is our team this is what we're going through and it gives you that bond of like we're together and we face that together yeah but if it's like uh if you're in a place in your in your life where you're kind of like yeah i'm with this person but like i'm still searching for something else or i'm still on team me yeah you're definitely going to have a harder time going the distance because you're still looking for something else. And I think that um, for like people in our space, I don't know, like, I feel like it attracts like really, really, I don't, I, I don't know if ambitious is the right word. Maybe ambitious personalities, where it's like for a lot of us, like a, a traditional common relationship is probably not because that's it. Here's the thing I've wanted to talk about, like to someone in this space is like, what the space is like and what people are like in this not in the sense of like drama or like this particular person that particular person but like um i guess what it means to be like a political or social or philosophical streamer like i basically what i want to ask is like specifically for you 
what got you into this, what pushes you, what motivates you? Because mo- my motivations are both like shallow and like grand. Mm. Um, I wonder what what makes you like this space, what makes you participate in this space, even when crazy shit happens like mm. last night. Like what is the fuel for Britney Simon? Because I've always like calculated this stuff watching people like like when Mr. Girl and Destiny fell out. I'm like, okay, why did he choose that path instead of like yeah. piecing it up? Yeah. Right. Like what what's making everyone do different things? So like I want to know what makes Britney Simon want to be in the space and go as far as you've gone. I think similar to you, it's definitely multifaceted. Like one, just from a working perspective, it is the best job for my brain. I love it. I can do it every day. I do it seven days a week and I fucking never get tired of it. Um, I'm willing to do it. I'm good at it. I make a pretty damn good income. I'm not mad about it. Like I'm not rich, like a middle class, but man, middle class looking pretty damn good. So yeah. let's go from a working perspective. It's just the best thing. It's 11. It's like almost midnight. I'm in Croatia. I'm able to do this job. Oh, that's another thing. If I had a real job, like a real job, it's a real job. I pay tax. That's a real job. <laughs> But if it was, like, a job where I had to work at an office, like, what would moving be like? I could just move countries. Mm-hmm. I just – okay? And, like, okay, that's great. So, like, it works for my lifestyle. works for everything that I am. But more importantly, it works for the kind of brain that I have. I tried to work nine to fives. I've worked my whole life since I was, like, 11 years old, hustling, washing cars, waking up at 7 a.m. to, like, cut grass, whatever. Worked all my life. And – people love me like bro always got raises always got promotions always got recommended like i do not i'm weird as fuck but people fucking Mm -hmm. trust me bro because i'm a trustworthy person and i love that and i love having that reputation but leaving my house commuting driving to work dealing with weather dealing with people is just like i'm gonna i'm gonna break down i'm gonna break down Mm -hmm. i need to be able to make my own schedule i need to be able to say i'm sleeping nine hours today fibro bros so i turned my inconveniences into major pluses for me is how I kind of look at it. Um, So that's why from that perspective and then from an emotional like Britney perspective, I feel so at home here. I feel like everyone here is the type of category of person that I am to some extent, which is why we all find each other here. And I think this is the only space in the world where I can globally reach people with similar enough expre- uh, uh, um, interests and mm-hmm. they are all in the same niche. So just like the fresh and fit finds girls all over the world in the same niche. Yeah. I'm finding people who are interested in introspection and philosophy and politics in their niches around the world. And we're all talking. So it's the same thing. I'm doing the same thing. Fresh and fit are doing a diverse group of people who are all in the same niche, mm. but it's this niche. So I just love it here. I love everyone. I love my fucking chat. I love reading everyone's names and getting to know everybody, even though I don't see their faces. I like love everything. I love learning details about people's lives. And I'm like, how do you do this? And then I love talking to you. Like this conversation has been incredibly stimulating. And I just love like learning about people and being like, I'm sorry, what's happening? Social status followers, what? Yeah. Who? What? I'm learning. You pop my bubble. You like maybe go like, holy fuck, what's happening in the world? And so that makes me want to go, okay, I got to know more about this. Mm-hmm. that's fucking cool where else would i have there if i had worked a normal job i would have interacted with the same fucking hundred people every day seeing the same fucking customers every day i wouldn't have gotten this opportunity mm. yeah what about you though ultimately like, do you have a are you still figuring yours out or you have a good idea i mean you kind of said it earlier a little bit yeah clout money women <laughs> that's that's definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. the Okay, um, I question this. Hold on. I question this all the time from a business. I love YouTube business, by the way. I'm obsessed with algorithms and views. Okay. And I always ask myself, like, I know what to do. I know Clip is king. I know Clip is king. I'm not dumb. I know That's... Clip is king. But I am, like, a little bit exhausted at clipping, finding those moments, getting them up. And then the question is, am I also slightly afraid of blowing up? Okay. That is a fear. That is a Bro. that's you desire it, but then you're also like, when it happens, am I ready? Am I mm-hmm. am I ready? Like Lav yesterday, my child was like, Don't let her trigger you. I was like, No, no, no. I've prepared for this moment. And like, because she's right, like 10 years ago, that would have made me cry on stream. I'm like, why are you being mean? Why are you talking about my personal shit? Why are you doing mm-hmm. that? Like, that's so interesting. And then I'm like, what is she doing? So I know as I get older, I'm getting a little bit more prepared because I do think in my forties, I think I'm actually gonna I think it it's gonna be my time. 
I think 40s is that you're stretching it way, way too far. You're probably going to blow up a lot sooner. Than no, that. girl, I'm almost 40. I'm like five years away. It's like almost there. You know, you're probably going to blow up sooner than sooner than that. Yeah, maybe. Probably I don't know. I hope I'm ready. I think so. I think I think you'll blow up in the next year or two. I, I, I've, I can kind of like look at certain channels and be like, yeah, I can tell the trajectory of certain channels just by looking at the frequency of posting activity. Your community is really, really like good and unique. I know like we're disagreeing right now, but like one thing I like about your community is like they stress individualism so much. Mm. And I feel like um, although like I'll probably never agree with them on how much individualism I'll use when looking at the world at large. Sure. I think when dealing with people specifically, it's so important to like surrender your like preconceived notions and just mm -hmm. get to know them for them. Yeah. Because then you can have the best relationship possible. Whereas yeah. when you're trying to shove a circle through a square hole, you're shoving a circle through a square hole. Yeah. So I think that's a really nice, it's a really like good thing when it comes to interacting with people individually is being able to like, what did you say? Be seen to like yeah. see them for what they are. Cause some mm -hmm. people are different and some people can't fit into society's norms and society's like oh this is what's cool and this is what's acceptable and some people are just different and um one thing i've tried to do when getting along with people is like okay that person may not necessarily be the popular person but if they're cool to talk to what if we have overlapping interests what if all they care about is naruto but the the jocks i'm talking to don't fucking watch naruto or they're like afraid to admit it so i gotta talk to this guy yeah. he knows he'll talk to me about the whole thing so now I can have a stimulating conversation with this guy. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things where it's like the individualist perspective of your audience is um it's gotten into my head a little bit. I well, think I think it yeah. I think they I think they agree with you though, because like they are struggling in their communities and they want to love their communities and have compassion for them when they're at odds. So when they hear you or other people talk about community it's not like they don't want those things they just want to also understand like how do they do it like somebody asked me the other day how do i not hate my conservative parents i was like oh i'll tell you yeah. i'll tell yeah. you let's talk about it because it is very difficult like i have very conservative parents like i go home and i every time i get on the phone my mom's like if you vote for biden you're ruining this country and i was like i love you too thank you for the cookie recipe i love you and it's like, funny because my mom, I, I used to be a um, a Trump supporter when I was like a teenager oh, and like yeah, an sure. early adult. And you see, I mean, you got the, I got the I've, I've I've kept some semblance of my like America fuck yeah personality. Mm. But like my mom would watch MSNBC, and I'm like, why is she hating on Trump so much? But it never yeah. occurred to me to strike up an argument with my mom because she dislikes Trump though. Mm. I, I've never, and this is one of those things where like maybe it's just me being fake or me like social climbing. But, like, I've never been one to, like, prioritize political beliefs over personal relationships in most cases. Okay. Right? Like, generally speaking, um, unless it's, like, a really reprehensible belief and I'm like, bro, like, it's been, it's been real. When I see you, we'll dap it up and it's cool. But, like, I can't be your homeboy. But, like, I feel like it's, um, and this is a bubble for me because I've been lucky enough to not really have people that were, like, angry at me. Sure. for my political beliefs like when i would like my mom knew that i liked trump but she never went off on me about like you better not do this she would like say like vote for biden please but she was never like you will vote for biden sure. um and eventually i sat my ass down instead of like consuming like short ass clips i started doing research and i'm like actually trump is not what's best for this country mm -hmm. but it required me to sit the fuck down and do the research and actually question my own beliefs why do i support trump Totally. Uh, what do I want from a president? Does what he's doing resemble what a president should be doing? It took mad documentaries, mad articles, and I eventually got to that point. So, like, for me as a straight black man, I'm about to sound like a fucking libtard, but as What's a straight that? black man, it's hard. It, it's There's going to be a lot of issues that I don't give a fuck about that mean a lot to people that are probably in your community. So it's going to be really, really easy for me to, like, like be a trump supporter or support republicans or whatever in my past because like i have no overlap i'm not a woman i'm not worried about abortion i wasn't worried about abortion in the past mm -hmm. i'm not worried about like i'm not of hispanic origin my family's been in this country for like mad long i'm not i'm not bent out of shape about what goes on at the border like there's so many things that go on with me that makes it really really easy for me to 
kind of block out what others are thinking, which might be the reason why it's easy for me to like not get bent out of shape over someone's political beliefs. So what I want to know, if, if there's people in your audience who feel this way in the chat, what makes them so passionate about um, their parents' political beliefs that makes them feel like, how do I not hate them? Is it the, the parents being overbearing or is it just the idea that they're ca the ideas they carry? Like mm -hmm. w what's the dynamic there? I, yeah, I want to know too. I, I think for myself, it's the idea. And it, like, look, I have, you know, I have borderline personality disorder. Okay. Okay. That's like a um, personality disorder that shapes when you're a child because of your environment. Because okay. of my parents' political beliefs and religious beliefs, I get to live with this long life personality disorder until it okay. eventually dissipates as I age. A lot of the mm -hmm. queer kids or queer people growing up have personality disorders, have problems, have depression, suicidal ideations from the same parents that said they love them. But also, when I was 14, I asked my mother, would you rather have a dead child or a gay child? And she said a dead child because a dead child goes to heaven. That's that's a tough one. That's a tough that's, one. That's a tough one. That's a and tough that's one. Mild, that's mildly putting it. Okay. That's mildly putting it. And I love my parents. I would fight the world for my parents. But because mm -hmm. I know that they're coming from such a good and well-meaning place, that they are using yeah. language that makes sense to them and to them is about helping me, I can only mm -hmm. love them by loving myself enough to forgive our miscommunications and to allow us to be exactly who we are because I really think like they can't be anyone but themselves and I can't be anyone but me. Mm -hmm. So to break those generational curses, to like change the trajectory for my family – I have to be the one who says, I love you, bro, but oh my gosh, this hurts my feelings. But also, right. I love you. And sometimes they'll pull the whole, like, liberals are so sensitive. And I was like, well, you just kind of said that you'd rather have a dead child, but okay. Right. <laughs> Everyone's sensitive. Everyone you know, like, is sensitive. Oh, they are so sensitive. Yeah. And that's the thing is, like, because I know they're actually sensitive, I got to remember, like, they are me. My mom and dad are the rebels of their family. Mm. They have a love marriage. My mom was originally like engaged or married to a man who was like arranged basically. And then she divorced uh, him. First woman in the history of her family to get a divorce. Huge deal. And then my parents got married and they've been together forever. Blah, blah. And they're like okay. the rebels. But their rebellion was being like very Catholic in a very mm. specific way. My rebellion was being not Catholic and gay and like pansexual. And then I married uh, a man, a continent away <laughs> that I met on the internet, yeah. you know? Mm. But, like, we're all just each other. I am someone's child, and they are someone's child. So it really comes down to healing, like, pain. And that pain shows up in the ballot. That healing shows up in the ballot. But let me tell you, lots of my friends now assume, oh, your parents and you are cool. Are they still voting anti-LGBT? I'm like, yeah. Of course. They're religious. And everyone's like, doesn't right. that fucking hurt your feelings? And I was like, you know, it doesn't hurt my feelings anymore. I just radically accept that, like, that's their position. And, like, may the gays win. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but it is, I, I they're just people. Yeah, I can't relate to that because I guess I guess I'm just I don't want to say the word lucky because that's disrespectful. Mm -hmm. I guess um, just the role of the dice, like being male, being straight, being um, yeah, yeah, you know, being non neurodivergent, and like all sure. this other stuff. Like it's it's a lot easier to like your parents aren't gonna have too many problems with you. Now I'm not yeah. gonna lie, mm -hmm. if my son was in the crib playing video games, like you know, overdosing on Skyrim we're having problems like you know what i'm saying like i i probably w would go crazy um but that's i wanted to understand why because i would because you there's like this surface level thing where it's like you know liberals are just so like you know sensitive and they're just this and that and you think about it, it's like well what the fuck are they being told by their parents that makes them so angry like what's sure. happening because you know um it is always like cringy to me when someone's like as a straight white male or da 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 da, da you know i can't understand but like on some level it is kind of true like you can't understand like you you're you're so normal that your parents don't really have too much to be frustrated about in terms of why didn't you come out exactly the way i wanted you to come out so you kind of like get to go through life not necessarily second guessing how much love they have for you mm. because of who you are or what you are and i think that um i was i was curious about that because i'm like where is it coming from like what makes people because i just can't not only have i never dealt with it it's never occurred to me. Like, I have a, I have a friend that thinks Biden's the worst thing ever. 
Sure. Now, me personally, I've done enough research to fall in love with his, his foreign policy. We're homeboys. We're always going to be homeboys. I think that Trump being in office would fuck America geopolitically in so many ways. Oh, yeah. And it would drive me crazy if he won. But that's my boy, though. And maybe, yeah. maybe I'm just not, like, strong enough in my beliefs to crash out the friendship. But, yeah, no. that's no. I was curious no. You, I yeah. really believe, like, you, I know it's going to sound really religious, but I think, like, you're a soul. Like, I think okay. the people in my life that I love, I cannot replace them. And, yes, some friends come and go, but the ones that are here to stay, I don't give a fuck how you vote. I don't even give a fuck if you do something horrendous. I will call the cops and visit you in prison. Like, <laughs> I love you so much. I will go to the ends of the earth to stick to my values and still love you. So I don't care who you vote for. I don't even care. Yeah. I I will do what's right according to my values, but my love with like for you, my unconditional love for you is not going to change, bros. Like we have a mm -hmm. connection in this one little lifetime that I think is worth our differences. And like that's not it for everybody. Some superficial friends, I'm like, love this. I don't, I can't. This is a lot. You know what I mean? I don't want to do that. But I think about it. I think about the sacrifices we make as like neighbors and friends. And then we recognize that these people that are our neighbors are voting against our civil rights to some extent or treating us a certain way. It can feel right. very scary. When I read tweets like the the, pa the panel we did yesterday, that data sheet, Wick had sent me a link for it to a guy's Twitter that was like, women shouldn't be allowed to vote because look what they're doing. And I'm like, see, like, I, I know you're like grifting or something. I don't know what you're doing. But anyone yeah. who's willing to take away their mom's right to vote, like, you should die. But not really, because, yeah. like, I don't believe in that. But, like, you do you. But, like, you know. You've lost the plot, at least. At least you've lost the plot. Like, you've, you've lost the crazy. plot, bro. Like, you're going to take away your mom's right to vote, bro. You hate your mom, bro. You hate her. So it's got that kind of stuff, yeah. you know, where I don't know if they're really thinking it or just saying it because it's funny. But if it's funny, I mean, it's kind of funny. But, like, it's not really funny if you mean yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not funny if you mean it for sure. <laughs> it's, it's one of those, I mean, yeah, I mean, like. I consume a lot of content that's probably not the most moral in the world because it's funny as fuck. Oh yeah. Um that's like the thing about our space is like um I don't want to go too far for to a place where like the audience can't relate because I don't want to like sure. start talking about like what it's like to be a content creator and they're like, oh my God. Um but I guess like what drove you towards like this individualistic way of looking at the world? Is it the fact that you were so different? and was so hard for you to be seen that it made you more empathetic toward this very individualistic way of looking at the world where it's like, I have so many different things that make me different and I've experienced these things and I've had to pay a price for being different that mm -hmm. I empathize more with people who are also different and I advocate more. Is that where it comes from or is it even bigger than that? Well, I was raised in a really political family, and I was raised to be, like, the next president of the United States. That was always the joke. Bernie's going to be the next president. I used to call into radio hosts and, like, political commentary shows. Like, I thought I was going to be a talk radio host because I used to listen to, like, Rush Limbaugh and all these people. And I was calling in, and they all knew who I was. Basically there. Yeah. That, that, well, yeah. I modernized it, right? I, I did it on YouTube. But I was – my parents hoped I would be a Republican representation of, like, a good Catholic in, in politics. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. I was part of the Republican clubs growing up and then I deviated and I came out and I was like, I'm a lesbian. And then they were like, what? And then everyone I was just like, and I'm still a Republican. And then the, the, my gay friends who are Democrats were like, what the fuck? And I was like, shh. And then I was a loud <laughs> cabin Republican for a while. And then I came out as bisexual because I was like, that's an option. And then I was like, okay, cool. And then I became a liberal. And I voted, uh -huh. well, first I voted for John McCain and Sarah Palin. I don't even know, do you even know who that is? Are you even old enough? I was born in 01, so I was breathing oxygen and watching TV. <laughs> yes, I saw it. I was there. Okay, so then I voted for Barack Obama and then Hillary Clinton. I know and them too. Yeah. I actually didn't vote for Biden. I didn't vote for either. You let us, well, you know. I understand because we're dealing with two characters that I... I understand why someone watching this who saw Obama is like, what the fuck is this? Like yeah. to go from Obama to Biden and Trump being your options. I can't blame people for being like, no, like I just can't blame them. Mm -mm. But I but do vote locally mentioned... in the state of Arizona. You You're welcome. Locally? You mentioned something. You mentioned, oh yeah. You mentioned how you went from conservative to liberal. Yeah. And I kind of had the same thing where I, 
I made a video like a year or two ago, like defending Marjorie Taylor Greene from being expelled from Congress. Mm -hmm. And looking back, I'm like, look at this. I don't want to say the R word, but look at this buffoon. Like, like, look at this. Like, I'm looking at myself and I'm like, you are so dumb. Like, mm -hmm. like me now, having read enough and seen enough, like, I, Marjorie's funny as fuck. Mm -hmm. And as a Georgian, I'm proud that I'm in the same state as someone who's that hilarious. <laughs> but she's got to go. She's yeah. got to go. Yeah. But like, as a, I feel like, as a content creator, I was going through this space where I was like, do I want to be a conservative political commentator? And I kind of wanted to be like back in the like, like two years ago, I was like that Daily Wire deal is going to come anytime soon. And I'm going to be fucking, <laughs> I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be, but the, the thing is like, I'm the kind of guy to get a Daily Wire deal and then like go to the club and just blow it at yeah, strippers. Yeah, yeah. So then it's like, we got this guy who's a conservative commentator who's blowing money in the club. Yeah. These two things do not, <laughs> these two things do not match. And it was one of those oh. things where I was like, okay, on a lifestyle level, I could never be a conservative. Yeah. And that was like an easy answer. Like, yeah, like, um, I'm the type to go to the club and party and shit like that. Um, I'm the type of person to do stuff like that. I could never be a conservative because what the fuck do I look like promoting family values and condemning, sure. you know, uh, immorality? You want to be a hypocrite, which is very unpolitical of you. Well, you know, like, I, you know, <laughs> The thing is, like, that was the first line. The, the first line was shallow as fuck. It was like, man, like, I really do want to go clubbing, though. Like, it was shallow. But then it was like, okay, what's their actual arguments that I don't agree with politically? And um, I feel like one of the big things was, like, as a Black man, like, kind of, like, looking at a lot of conservative, like, conversations about Black culture and Black people, and I was like, this is kind of unproductive. Like, we can be tough on Black culture, while simultaneously like not rewriting history to make conservatives comfortable with what's Bruh. what's already been done. And that was like my point where I was like, yo, like this doesn't fit me. And I think sometimes, and that is kind of selfish where it's like, I didn't realize how crazy <laughs> this shit was until it came to me. I'm like, let me revisit those Candace Owens videos I was in love with as a teenager. Like, yo, like, this, this shit ain't adding up. Like, let me revisit, me crazy, bro. Yeah. Let me revisit some of the Thomas Sowell I've read. Yeah. Some of this ain't adding up. It was one of those things where I was like, let me revisit this shit because I'm a commentator now. And I'm in a place now where my life has to match up with my beliefs, not just from a um, strategic perspective of like, I can't be caught with my hand in the cookie jar, but also mm -hmm. from like a moral perspective. I'm going to be giving opinions and affecting the way people think and if i'm over here condemning like you know hedonism and i'm over here like turning up with the boys sure i'm a hypocrite and i'm i'm basically you're even honestly that's even worse than someone who really believes it because then you're like you know it's wrong but for whatever selfish reason you've chosen to persist in mm -hmm. some level of hypocrisy and um it's kind of interesting where it's like i learned the lesson i learned from that was try to extrapolate your beliefs to yourself and the people you know to figure out how much you agree with it. Like, yeah, vote conservative. Well, as a black man, do I feel like properly respected and represented in conservative circles? No. Do I fuck with conservatives? Of course, I'm I'm, I'm a southerner. Like, I, you're gonna get along with them by default. Sure. You're gonna be For boys sure. with them. You're gonna be homies with them. It's just by default. But at the same time, it's one of those things where like you do have to look at what they're preaching in conjunction with the life that you live and your story is a lot more like noble in the sense of like you were a particular thing not mm -hmm. thing but you were living you were a particular person who was a certain way that your social circle for like religious reasons and moral reasons would not accept and you had to like figure it out where so for me it was kind of like you know like i'm at this space where like i wanted to be a conservative you know hunter avalon ever yeah. heard of him yeah. I was I was high on that supply. I was like I was watching. You want to know how crazy it was? I was watching Gavin McInnes, <laughs> Lauren Southern. I shit you not. I had to stop though because like it went. I had to stop because it was like it got to like the whole like um like great replacement. And I was like, well, I'm oh, black, so I'm gonna get yeah. Like yeah, I was like this is this is the end of the road for me. <laughs> um, I was watching a lot of like. Milo, I was watching yeah. so much. Yo, Milo, yo, yo, Milo had the game on lock back in when I was fourteen. Milo had to get that's fourteen years old. Milo, crazy conversation. Anyways, it was one of those like 
like it was one of those things where I was like, I was kind of looking at what I wanted to be for so long as a kid. Like when I was like 14, I was like, I'm going to be a conservative political commentator. And then to be like 21 and to be a different person and say like, damn, like none of the shit that I've wanted to be as a kid lines up with who I am now. Mm. You know, do I want to go down that path? Because, you know, conservative commentary is the in thing now. It's the counterculture. It hasn't changed. Yeah. It's still the Don't popular thing. Don't you love thing. how the conservatives became the rebels? I fucking hate them. I was like, look at the cycle we yeah. all go in, bro. Yeah. The cycle <laughs> we all go in. Like, who's the next yeah. rebel? You know what I mean? It's going to be the centrists, the normies. More than – yeah, I think they're going to – that's that's if we get lucky. Yeah. I think they're going to see how crazy both sides are and are like, you know, like, can you both please stop? Like, chill. Because it is getting to a point where – both sides are definitely getting to a point where things are getting a little bit out of control in terms of how radical we've become. Yeah. And it's just one of those things where I was like, I was kind of forced to just like, I I really did want to make conservative content, but like, it was just getting to that point where I was like, none of this shit, like fuck the strategic aspect of it. Of like, you know, how is it going to work for my career? Like making all that money. Like Steven Crowder turning like a $50 million deal. That's like Bro. rapper shit. That's like rapper money. That's like, yo, like you could have a whole entourage of guys with you. You can have, you can have everything you want. And it was one of those things where it's like, you know, going down that path would probably be a lot for me, but I couldn't see myself. One, I couldn't get away with it. And number mm. two, I just couldn't, I can't do that. Yeah. Knowing that I'm living a different life. So I guess... Mm, the fact that like we both went from like liberal t- from conservative to liberal i don't want to drag the conversation on too long if you want to stop but um no i actually have a story to tell you i think it's gonna be even funnier to interrupt tell me t- okay I wanna know. so let me tell you so first of all obviously things don't happen overnight right you like, right. really fucking believe shit and then you start wanting mm-hmm. to get involved and then you get behind the scenes just a little bit to see how yeah. they play the game and then you realize, yo, you're all playing a real fucking game right now. So let me tell you yeah. one of the games I found out people were playing and I was like, I can't fucking play this game, bro. Same with YouTube, by the way. Same shit happens on YouTube. So get ready. Same shit. Yeah. Humans, adults, high school with money. Same thing. That's what I always say. People high get mad at me, but I'm like, bro, it's high school. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. It won't change. It never does change. I don't care if you're Trump or Biden. Look at the way they meet met each other. Okay. It's high school with money or power. So I'm um, my early 20s. I'm in San Diego. I'm working for politicians. I'm not doing great mentally, but I'm trying to get my shit together. I'm trying to do stuff in radio. I have a friend okay. who's in radio and like truly okay. in radio. And I was like, okay. She calls us all together because this whole group of friends, my first adult group friend out of high school, very big deal for me because I went to public school in two years. This is a big deal. I found these people through radio libertarians okay. conservatives and liberals but no progressives of course it wasn't the era for it right very simple cut and dry we all came together for uh, an event in san diego in hillcrest love it and okay. we became fast friends well she got us a promo possibility deal at the radio station had us all come in to do a radio show you know young liberal and conservatives battle it out type thing and i yeah was the conservative lesbian. That was my shtick, like Tammy Bruce, if you ever knew who Tammy was. Old school lesbian radio host. She has a gun in all her photos, very sexy. But she's a Republican lesbian, okay? And that was gonna be me. And as we we filmed this episode, very controversial, it didn't end up going anywhere. But I remember asking production, I said, hey, what if one day I'm not a lesbian anymore or conservative? (laughs) They're like, what do you mean? I was like, well, what if one day I changed my ideas? And they're like, no, in public, always the same shtick in private we don't give a fuck and i was like what because my dumb little ass literally thought everyone was genuinely there because they believed in conservative values i found out the radio uh 21 21 okay so it's interesting because like i reached i knew that shit was like not what it seemed at 21 what made you like what made you a little less cynical you mean over time like at 21 like why were you less cynical like because at 21 i kind of like like the optimism like everyone really believes yeah like at 21 i was like there's there's some shit going on that i don't know about yet but there has to be something what made you more positive in your thinking um people were good man okay people were fucking nice and they fucking were good and people had problems (laughs) but people were nice and like that's good 
even when shit went wrong, shit kind of went right. And like, I don't know, just people seem to be so passionate about politics, but it wasn't okay. bad. I grew up in a suburb. Everybody relaxed. Like, I grew up okay. It was nice. Just fucking people got along. They had fucking Democrat signs on one lawn and Republicans on the other. And then we also got together on the weekends. And then nobody was having affairs. Nobody I knew was hitting anybody. Nobody I knew was doing shit. Okay. That was okay. like the kids over there who had like really interesting lives. Like, I didn't have it. Okay. That wasn't my life. My life was busy okay. doing other things. I was, I was trying to kill myself since I was eight years old. That was mental health stuff. Like, that was, I was in my head. So I'm 21 okay. years old. The radio host I was in love with at the time, like, love his content. He pretends he's in Mexico. He goes, we're in Mexico. We're, we're fighting the immigrants or the, the illegal aliens who are coming over the border. And I was like, oh, my God. He's in Mexico. And I was like, this is so scary. And he goes, shut the damn door. Shut the damn door. And he's like, they're trying to kill us. They're trying to kill us. And I was like, holy fuck, this is, like, on the radio station. This is real. I call my friend who's on his team. I go, hey, are you guys okay? She goes, Britt, he's drinking mimosas at his million-dollar mansion in the hills. He's fine. And I was like, mm. I was like, girl, you're lying to me right now. She goes, Brittany, we're literally fine. We're in San Diego. We're not even in Mexico. He's literally drinking from his home. And I was like, <sighs> and she, like, sent me photos, and they were all, like, piecing, and, like, they were all thinking it was, mm. and that was it. I was <laughs> like, uh but wait, wait for it. Did I did I think this was the end of politics? No, my dumbass was like, okay, the Democrats have the answers. <laughs> That's then, crazy to me. And then I moved into the I'm such a homeschooler. And then I moved into the Democrat bubble. And I was like, the liberals have the answers. And same shit happened with the liberals. And I was like, then I moved into the progressive circles. I was like, the progressives, BLM, they have the answers. Who stole money from what? What's happening? And then I was like, oh yeah, my was, God. One thing after a fucking another. Then yeah. I finally fucking lost it. Between 28 and 30, I was like, okay, fuck all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Mexican Santa. Yeah. I was like, okay, politics is bullshit. What do I need? And then I went into a complete like introspective, like what does this person need? Because she's not fucking finding community or meaning in her life. She needs her fucking purpose. And I found okay. that purpose by understanding myself. And now I can help other people understand themselves. And now I can mm -hmm. get them to either choose politics or not. But politics for people who tend to be in my audience is a place we all were, but didn't find our peace. Everyone in my audience, for the most part, has some strong political opinion. But we don't mm -hmm. like political circles in general. I'm generalizing my audience because they're not being honest about the bullshit that they know is happening. Because the whole world is built off that bullshit. Because humans are going to human, bro. It's not mm. even that I'm condemning them. So what we do, instead of condemning everyone, is just to recognize, like, so we're all doing it? Okay. Yeah. I can accept that. Actually, much more than being told no one's doing it. Mm. So then it's about, yeah, it's about, yeah. and then I see it in YouTube. I see it in fucking YouTube. I see the politics. I know what's happening behind closed doors. I know for a fact everybody's fucking lying. But not everybody. When I say that, I don't yeah. even mean everybody. Yeah. But the ones who aren't lying, we all keep our mouths shut for the ones who are. And then I always wonder, like, am I fucking up too, bro? Should I tell everybody secrets right now, bro? Here we go. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But then if I do that, I become the bitch who talks. This is, this is, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to start jocking, social climbing, normieing right now. You got to have that code of silence. Obviously, bro. I keep it all the time. I just want everybody to know. <laughs> that, you got, that you got it ready to go okay i mean like me personally i pride myself on like as long as it's not something fucking morally bankrupt same 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 as long as it's not yeah, like fucking same. murder or grape or anything like i don't fucking yeah. your messy business yeah. is your business bro yeah I, I pride myself on not being the yeah. type of talk same, same. um same. but it is interesting that um yeah because like i don't I've always been cynical so i was never like my moment of realizing like how politics really was was like the um the lauren southern like the whole truth video mm. for me like watching that like because i was 14 15 when that shit was going on watching these people wanting to make content like them and then being 21 so i was the same age 21 as you 21 when she i think she dropped it in 2022 mm. so i should have been 21 and like seeing like like hearing all of these stories it made sense hearing and i'm like why wouldn't people do this shit like, why yeah. wouldn't they? But it never occurred to me before. Like, I always assumed people, like, were scummy and up to shit, up, up to stuff and plotting and conspiring. But, like, 
it's kind of like when you realize it's the space that you're about to head into that you get that reality check of like, oh, like, okay, so this is the game. I always assumed that people were living double lives, but then you also add in like the the personal drama and the yeah. stuff like that. So it's like, yeah, that was realizing that politics was a, a grimy space was definitely like a, it was an assumption, but I didn't grasp my assumption for real until like I realized like, oh, like the people I've watched for so long, they're people too, and, and shit happens. Yeah. So hearing your story and how you came to that conclusion is definitely interesting to me. But I do want to know, um, you have this thing called the levels. What's mm -hmm. that? Um, I, I, it's an observational philosophy, which I created to sign, kind of like bring my thoughts together about why humanity disperses into bubbles and why they have introspection like levels with themselves. So like you obviously are introspective. I don't know to which degree, but enough to say out loud, I need to change. That's a big fucking deal in a society and in a world where humans often think the last thing I need to do is change. So I started yeah. to ask myself, why, why do people have these different relationships with this need to change? And as somebody who's radically changed a lot and has been called a flip flopper her whole life, because communities expect you to pick and stay. Mm -hmm. I know how hard it was to change. And I'm like, why did I do that? Truthfully, I needed to or I was going to die. Like, it's not much more interesting than that. Like, it was either that or, like, unalive myself. Because this is too stressful. Without yeah. me realizing, like, what is happening. And I think a big part of it is, like, the neurodivergents do have an incredible sense of justice. We really like our values and morals because it tells us, like, like we know we know ourselves through like why we care about things like i and i think most humans do but some people are much more comfortable with actually not having strict values so i was like what is that and i think it's a lack of introspection because i do don't believe in objective morality so i believe even my opinions are totally subjective mm -hmm. and recognizing that means like everyone else i'm upset with are also having the same relationship with values which okay. means that even their journey is as valid as my journey. And I think recognizing that to such a profound degree is such an insane amount of introspection that it almost makes you want to, like, it, it shatters every belief you have, every bullshit idea you have, everything you think that's important about the world. Like, it's all in your head, dude. And yet we build societies off of it. We build cultures off of it. We raise kids in it. And we, like, so then when I look at the world, I'm like, you know, you could just do something else. They can't, though. Only the people who can, can. Because it's not either their journey or Robert Sp Spolowski. What is his name? He would say it's their biology. Like, mm -hmm. everyone has a reason why they can't just do it. My mom can't just be – like, she can't stop being Catholic and, like, embrace her kids. Multiple kids who are gay, right? Yeah. Because then she would have to shatter her relationship with God. She would have to decentral like, de like deconstruct everything she's built for her whole life, every miracle she felt like she experienced, everything. So something has to change fundamentally in people to be introspective to that degree. And I think mm -hmm. I just wasn't beholden to the version of me that I was. I was willing to kill her. Mm. And I'm still willing to kill this one too. I don't care about her. This is just mm. who I am right now. But if I find out new truths, new ideas about the world, since I don't know 99% of it, I'm, ho I'm happy to change. I just want to know what's capital T true, which I do think is actually impossible to know, but I'm still curious about it. What made you so, what, what made introspection such an important thing for you? Like what makes, cause I, I think your community and the way it values individualism and introspection is like super duper rare and also like really, really important where like you guys are onto some shit. Like you guys are actually like really onto something. What made you and a lot of the people in your chat if they want to answer as well, what made you guys so into this? I could be wrong for them, but I would say for myself that I never felt more free in my whole life. Free okay. of the burden of hating people, free of the burden of hating myself, free of the burden of like being worried about life, freedom of the worry. Cause like we all have to survive. But there's a difference between being in survival mode where you feel like you're in panic constantly and getting to a place in your life where you're just like living it and then you're accepting that like, oh, life is hard. Okay. Oh, mm -hmm. life is hard. Because there's this perception that if you have enough money, you'll be happy. But like that data does not show that. If you mm -hmm. have enough this, you'll be happy. Data doesn't show that. P 
people are miserable. Rich people kill themselves all the fucking time. So it's not about that. So it's like, I think my community would agree to some extent that it's about freedom from unnecessary suffering. The world unnecessarily suffers. Look what's happening in Palestine and Israel. How much of that is so unnecessary? But at the same time, they feel like it has to be this way. And that line right there, that thinking, it has to be this way, maybe. But until we try something new, we won't know. And then I'll accept it has to be this way because we've tried everything else. Right. But mm. I also don't like making prescriptions on the general because it's not my work anymore. But I will say that I think that work is necessary. I think we all believe in communities. Most of my audience is progressive. I think they want a world where everyone gets along, but they're still working on getting along with their families. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not to mention the 8 billion other people on the planet. Yeah. So it just feels like, yeah, it feels like it's about freedom for us, you know, which I think ironically enough, wouldn't you say that's what everyone thinks they're doing? Yeah. I mean, everyone thinks they're operating in good faith. Yeah. That's, and everyone uh, thinks everyone, they're seeking freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone, <laughs> that is interesting that everyone is, uh, in spite of whatever, what they, what, in spite of what they believe in the brass, you know, tax of it, we all seem to have this conviction that we're 100% right, which is interesting. Yeah. And I'm so, telling you right now, I know my attitude well, says that I think that, but I really aggressively know how little I know. That's what was so scary to realize like, oh my God, I'm so arrogant. I don't know anything, mm -hmm. bro. And like to not, to really know that is so hard because when you really know yourself, you think you know everything else. Mm -hmm. And I really know myself. So it's really hard not to be arrogant. <laughs> and that's the battle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, I've always second guessed everything I've thought, mm. generally speaking. And it's part of the reason why I've changed my mind on so much shit. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I try to pick certain things. Mm. Like when I was like a conservative, I thought America was like the greatest thing ever. I still do, even though I'm not conservative anymore. Oh. I've tried to. Well, when I was 19, I listen, when I was 19, I self published a book I will not name, but I have an American flag on the cover of it. And I sent it to every radio host. And let me tell you, it's mm. the cringiest I love America shit I've ever done in my life. And I don't ever want to relive that shit. But let me tell you how many journeys I've been on, bro. How many versions of conservative and other things I've been on, bro? I love America, but Jesus Christ, I was a simp. Yeah, I, I was never, I was never, I was never to that point. But um, I, I never <laughs> got to that point. But I do definitely, I'm definitely like, I don't know if I could call myself an Amerabu because I'm from the United <laughs> States. But like, I is it me or is it is it is it chat? That's so no Amerabu. Why? That's so funny. <laughs> yeah like i'm just like i've been obsessed with like anything american for so long like since like high school i've always like just been obsessed with just like anything anything Am american like i've always been like super duper like obsessed with sure. like for some reason like, i don't know why but do you like no do you feel like you really know the game because i would say i like america because i know how to play the game mm -hmm. i think when you don't know how to play the game it's incredibly a suffocating place play the game in what way um survive uh get a place economically understand it oh. like it's super hard but i think i know how to do it like i know how to make money and i know how to live on my own that's one thing i pride myself in is i know how to live on my own and i know how to make money that's the two things i know how to do at least enough to live on my own because like i love my parents but living with them is very difficult for me <laughs> i think i think if you if you make the right decisions you can play the game successfully in america I think there, there's all there's obviously life. Life happens. Like there's gonna yeah. you can plan perfectly and shit can just go wrong. For sure. But I think that the United States is one of the best countries in the world to live in. And because I'm from the United States, there's a lot more bias. And you know, the United States has a monopoly on world power right now. And you know, I like that as a you know, someone who's like really obsessed with geopolitics and a jingoist, I like that. So for me, um, I have been very, I do second guess myself a lot. Sure. And that's because I know that I don't fucking know. I've had enough moments where I've been like, why did I make a video saying Marjorie Taylor Greene should stay in Congress? But like, I was critical enough of my perspectives to be able to say, okay, like, does that, like, okay, I said that in the video, what's done is done. Like, why did I believe that? Is that even true? Yeah. I think, um, I don't know if I'm in a perfect space where like i second guess enough um 
I don't know if I second guess enough of my beliefs, but I would like to think that I second guess my beliefs enough to where like, like for example, Fairy Queen gave me a little bit of information in that debate that changed my mind a little bit about how serious the divide was. Mm. My only issue was, um, we know there's a cultural divide. There may not be a voting divide or a legis legislative, but we know there's a cultural divide. Do we just wash our hands clean of it because there's no voting effect? Um, which was really hard to get to that because, like, by the time I realized, like, that's what we need to drive home, World War Three happened. So it was kind of like, okay. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the introspective, self-reflection kind of thing, that, the theme of it, I genuinely like that. I think it's a really, really good place to make content from. And I think that, um, I don't know how boisterous the philosophical debate space is the political space is fucking filled with characters as mm. you know um but i would encourage you to like find other creators that fuck with this kind of stuff and like build up a strong community um yeah. of other creators that like this kind of content because i enjoy talking to you mm. thank um, you me too yeah i wonder if, if chat has anything I, I know i'm thoroughly pissed I off think they chat. Liked you. i think they liked you overall i was think i think it was like 90 percent positive guys 95 yeah. If they have any questions for me, I'd be more than happy to answer. Yeah, if, if you guys not, have questions. I, I know they were interested in, like, what kind of girls do you like? Like, what would be your vibe in terms of a relationship? Values, expectations? Do you want a girl who's, like, a certain weight or height or ethnicity? This is, this is, this is compromising. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um man, uh, preferably liberal. But if she's conservative, I it depends on how crazy conservative she is. Like if she's like ride or die, Trump till I die, like shorty, like we can't, you know, like it's <laughs> it's nice knowing you, but this this won't last. Um I don't care too much about political beliefs. Really? I do like talk. What does yeah, that mean? Not really. you don't care. How are you gonna go into politics? You don't care about her politics. Like what? It's what? that it's that social climber. It's that clout demon shit. Damn, <laughs> son. Okay. Yeah, for real. It's like I love politics, but I just can't, like, you know, like, Shikamaru loves being a ninja, but he, for some reason, just can't bring himself to do what the fuck he's Man, supposed to do. Relatable. I love politics, but, like, I just can't bring myself to, like, give a fuck in my personal life. Unless the, unless it's, like, unless the other person is, like, crazy. Like, like, for women, if a guy's, like, oh, I'm anti-abortion, I could completely understand why a woman would be, like, sure. yo, we, like, it's, it's nice knowing you, bye. Bye. Mm -hmm. But, you know... I don't really have those like those pins in the sand. Like I like, oh no, she thinks Trump uh helping Putin is a good thing. I can I can get over that. Like okay. I can I can get over that. So politics for me is not a big thing. Um man <laughs> height wise, I like tall women, but oh. um yeah. Okay. But I don't yeah, like five, nine, six foot's the limit. But like I'll take a chick that's six foot, but it's hard because they want dudes that are like six foot six, six yeah, foot yeah, seven. Yeah. So like you're playing a difficult game there. Um I can't go beyond that because that's too compromising. I don't know. I'd say nerdy women are the best though, for sure. Oh. Like if you're not with a nerdy chick, you're 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 just wasting your time. I don't that's know. That's true. Like, now if uh what's the best way for so, see, I read a article I read an article that said women never ask men out. So then I of course I sent it to my husband in the DMs. As one does. Okay. You know, I'm I'm that kind of woman. Would you want a woman to slide into your DMs? It would be reassuring knowing that she likes me that much. Yeah. Um that would be the ideal scenario, right? Like knowing, like, okay, this person likes me so much that they're willing to risk rejection mm. in order to make it known that they like me. Mm -hmm. So that would be um I wouldn't be turned off by a woman that was like really, really straightforward about like, hey, I like you. Cause it's like I mean, like, that's as easy as it's going to get for a guy. I mean, I've had plenty of situations where I was like, damn, I should have approached that one or damn, but I didn't do it. So for a chick to, like, approach, that's a W. I don't see how any man, some dudes will find a way to complain about it because some people are just never happy. But um, nah, if a chick, if a chick that I li really like slid in my DMs, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. So Okay, this is the final question I want to ask you then. And okay. I really appreciate you being here for so long. It's been a wonderful conversation. You're chilling. You're cruising. Okay, ready? Yeah. What is your favorite part about existing? 
the chance that I could become something greater in life. So right now I'm not particularly like high on my own supply. I'm mm. like chilling, I'm not really like, yo, this is so great right now. Um, But about, that's a good question to ask me because I've, I'm not an in the moment kind of person. Mm. So like one of my biggest things that I've honestly, I need to work on was like since 13, I was always thinking about when I'm 20 something, I'm going to be doing da, 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 da. And like, looking back, that was so stupid. Like I should have not been so like obsessed with like tomorrow. I should have been, <laughs> I should have been a kid because what the fuck I was and sat my ass down and actually been a child. But I was like, so hyper, like obsessed with becoming like some kind of like thing in the future that like, honestly, um, I was never like, yo, like existing at this moment, this is what I like. I was yeah. always like, yo, like I want what's next, whatever's next, which um, I guess is like a, it can be a good thing. And I know it can be a bad thing for sure, because a lot of like being younger is a blur to me. I'll have friends mention shit that happened that was either funny or really dramatic. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck y'all are talking about. Mm -hmm. And they'll mention shit that was like, bro, how do you not remember? And I genuinely believe, I don't want to believe I have like, alzheimer's already i want to believe that like i was so fucking obsessed with the future that a lot of the shit that sh i should have retained and like enjoyed and really absorbed i just just got rid of it because i'm like well i don't have clout yet i don't have this yet i have that yet so fuck it so um i want to return the question to you mm -hmm. because i gave the most like <laughs> you know like uh service level answer possible i wonder if like what what's your um, my husband and I joke about this all the time. I, I'm personally a person who doesn't think like I would have cared if my parents didn't have me or not. I'm kind of indifferent to that part. But since I'm here, I'm going to be the best at it is kind of how my feeling on it and the best for me. So I really love my life now for, for, I feel like the last four years have been my big transition moment into my joy. And I would say like the best part about existing is like knowing how to live and knowing how to be grateful for that and the journey that I've been on and all the suffering that I've been through and how I built up like off of that and came to this point now. And of course, like being with my husband, like how cool is it to meet like a person you think is a soulmate in a lifetime? That's pretty dope. Like having like my cat, being able to move countries, having my dream job. Like I literally, I look back at that like eight or 10 year old little girl, that little girl that was hoping at 25, she'd be like a successful radio host or like eventually a YouTuber or eventually this that person who's working three jobs her whole fucking life, like that person. And I look at her and I wish I could tell her like, oh my God, girl, you're going to be fine. Uh, Cause like it was dramatic yeah. at the time. It felt so dramatic. And so I think it's so hard not to be grateful for where I am, but also I have to practice gratitude because it is so hard in this job, especially not to run yourself like in the loop of like, I'm not doing enough. I'm not posting enough. I'm not active enough. I'm not this enough. And I'm like, whoa. <clears throat> be grateful because like this is pretty cool like everything that's happening is perfect everything is great you know tell me what you said was something that i just recently discovered like i had that moment because like i said i'm always looking toward the future the future mm. the future and i had to sit down and think to myself you're 20 fucking two you wanted to do this shit since you were like 13 be grateful <laughs> like you in you in great like you even if you're not there yet you started mm -hmm. you like you you're kind of there like you're not the guy or a guy but yeah. you're there and it was one of those things where i was like i'm so fucking bent out of shape about what i'm not that i'm not taking into account the fact that like it happened i'm here I was always trying to do this shit and I just stumbled into it. Like, what if I didn't break my arm, my ankle? I'd, the time I would have spent YouTubing would have been spent in the army. Mm. Like, um, you kind of like get that realization moment where you're like, I'm like, I should be grateful because although I'm not where I want to be, just being here in and of itself is still a fucking cool position to be in. Oh my so, gosh. Mm -hmm. Oh that yeah. That was a good reminder. For sure. Just like, um, I don't know, like four or five months ago, we were in the middle of immigration stuff for me and paperwork. And 
it was really stressful, like government paperwork and foreign languages and lots of government meetings. And I knew and I told my husband, I was like, OK, we're like in a loop of stress right now, but we know what's happening. Right. So like we're going to ride the wave like you're stuck in a riptide and we're going to like wait until we get spit back out into the ocean and everything's calm water again. So we were like sitting there in this mode and I said out, I said out loud to him. This is so stupid. I'm a full time YouTuber. I've been a full time YouTuber for a few years. I looked to my husband and I was like, I'm so stressed. If I could just be a full time YouTuber full time, it would be great. And he's like. And I was like. The fuck? I was like, I was so lost in the loop of not having enough hours in the day that even me, I was like, you are a full time YouTuber. That's all you have to do. You have one yeah. job. And he does yeah. everything else. I don't do it. He's the stay at home husband. He does everything, everything. I don't have to do nothing. I just have to work seven days a week. And yeah. I was like losing myself in that pressure of like, I'm running out of time. I'm running mm -hmm. out of time. And I'm like, what time? And I think like, that's why I have to practice gratitude. You remember like you're doing it. You are the YouTuber. This is it. Mm -hmm. And this dream of being the 1% YouTuber or 0.5% YouTuber is fine. It's a different game and a different hustle. And if I'm ready to play the game, I can. But until now, being a middle-class YouTuber is still being a full-time YouTuber. And I'm making more than the average person making a full-time living anyway. So what am I complaining about? And it's because you get into your head when you're 15 or 16 or 17 that a YouTuber is somebody with a mansion or a YouTuber is somebody who doesn't worry about money yeah. or a YouTuber is somebody with – and I'm not – nope, I'm worrying about money like everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But it's still it's amazing. Yeah. It is still amazing. Yeah, that's that's definitely a, a good reminder because I, I had that moment like like last week. I was like, yo, I, I – I haven't arrived, but I technically have arrived. Like I assumed it would happen and it did. It did. And it's funny that you said um people used to say that you would be like a radio like talk show host or some yeah. shit. People used to say that shit to me in middle school and I was so triggered. I was like, I thought I was gonna be like a musician. Oh, I wanted wow. to be everything but into politics and shit. Yeah, yeah. And People used to say, because I used to always argue and debate stuff, and I didn't know what the fuck I was talking about, but I just wanted to argue. And people were like, you know, you're probably going to talk about stuff later on. And I was just like, that is not a sexy, cool job. No thanks. Get away from me. Don't ever say that again. And then, like, I'm kind of, like, eating my words. Thankfully, I don't talk to those people anymore, so there's no, like, remember what I told you? And, like, oh, yeah, there's none of that. Oh, don't say it once you blow up, blow up. They'll be like, I know that guy. Yeah. I'm waiting. Honestly, like, it is weird when people from our past past are like googling mm -hmm. videos and my video comes up and they're like i know that girl and i'm like yeah because sometimes i don't want to be seen like sometimes i'm worried my parents will come across my videos we have a rule that they don't google me yeah that's like a rule yeah they actually were the people who wanted me to be on youtube not in the, not in the way you are not in the way that i am yeah i, I don't i used to worry about I used to worry about my mom that like seeing my videos, but then I was like, I'm not really saying anything too crazy. Um, plus, I'm drifting more democratic, so like I feel like now, oh, like she's too. probably, yeah, now she's probably content with with what I'm doing. But mm, yeah, it's like, I guess we could probably have this conversation off like off stream about mm. just like the whole like meta of like yeah content creation, where you want to go and what you want to talk about and what drives it, what drives us and stuff like that, but. Yeah. Um, first I want to say, I really appreciate you having me yeah. because not a lot of people share their platform. Um, not a lot of people welcome other people into spaces. Um, and that's just like, that's something I would love to do when I have enough followers to bless somebody up. So you doing that with me is definitely, uh, greatly, greatly appreciated. And I pride myself on repaying favors. So if I find some kind of way. Nah, you can brush it off, but when some, <laughs> if if possible, it will be returned. Um, but yeah, I also want to thank Chat for having me too. Like you know, like all of you guys, like fucking all y'all are great, one hundred percent. I think you've changed my mind about some stuff. I don't know if I change. I don't know if I got to you. You pop bubbles, bro. <laughs> you literally pop bubbles. I was like, oh, shit, another bubble pop. I love that shit. That's what I live for on the internet. It's just somebody blowing my bubble and I can go, okay, new research, new group to like study, new group to understand. I, I enjoyed it so much. Like I said, you stood out to me on the panel and that's why I did it. I know it must've seemed weird because I was like, I never, I usually don't do that mid panel. I'm not like usually like, but I just wanted yeah, to that... catch you before we went off because I was like, I don't know what's going on, but I was like, this, we gotta talk, we gotta talk. Yeah, I mean, 
I've watched like all of you guys for like a year. So yeah, I mean like watching like <laughs> watching um all of you guys for like a year has kind yeah. of like allowed me to like get a sense of the space. Mm. But like being able to like talk to any of you guys is always like I always tell Wick like bro thanks for ha every time like thanks for having me because I was making content and I was like I don't know like 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 I, I knew that I need to get into this space but I wasn't yeah. sure how. Wick and is great. Yeah, yeah extending Wick is your really audience. Lovely. He's really he's really good. Okay, wait, Chad is really confused yes. about what. Right. You, you say you, what is this word? Hold on. Now that they've typed it out, I feel like I'm not gonna say it right. Okay. Jigos, jig, jigos. You keep saying, see, they spelled it weird. Now my dyslexia will let me read it. Jingoist. D yeah. What does that mean? They want. So explanation. someone who's like, someone who's like really, really like ruthless in terms of like what they're willing to do for their country. Like someone who believes their nation's the best and is like willing to go like the the extra mile to maintain like the the global hegemony. Like someone who's like yeah, like a hyper, maybe even a hyper nationalist. Mm. Um, I'm someone who like. If I were, <laughs> I don't want to be cringe, but if I were in a position of office, like my main thing would be like, how do we maintain American dominance globally? That'd be my only, <laughs> that would be my only concern. Um, so yeah, when I say I'm a jingoist, I'm someone who's very, very like, like every decision we make should be from how does America benefit? Not, um, you know, Putin's, you know, Russia's white Christian and conservative like us, so they should take Ukraine. Like, okay, let's look at the numbers. Let's look at the facts. Let's look at the resources. Let's let's look at the situation. What do we gain from it? Nothing. Mm. We're gonna help Ukraine. That's kind of how I calculate how I look at foreign policy. But yeah, happy to answer that question. And like I said, like your chat, um, I fuck with like you guys' entire space, like Thank you. just the the subculture itself. And I think you can be like a really big epicenter for like philosophical and like social commentary. Are you telling that because is this your networking thing? Are you politicianing us? Is yeah. this like are you feeding Look, our social egos? Social climbing is my social climbing is my thing. Don't get me wrong, but if I don't think you're cool, I'm not gonna tell you. Okay. Like I'm not just gonna. Yeah, like if I, like I said, I've been if I if I didn't like you guys, I wouldn't watch your content for as long as like all of you guys in this space. I've been studying the game, so yeah, like yeah, yeah. If, if I thought you guys were lame or whatever like i knew about the levels like i've yeah, taken that's time true. To, like, that's true. i appreciate it i appreciate it i do yeah i've taken time to try to look into you guys' spaces and some spaces i'm like meh and in other spaces i'm like mm, mm. let me look at let me look a little bit more into that yeah. one so are you, you know. uh, interested in any other spaces too because like our space is tiny and then it kind of and i've even been i've been reaching out to very specific other content creators that are going to also bring in a new space but like I'm curious if you're because I'm trying to reach out to more people too in different spheres. Is there any other sphere that's like really interesting to you? I'm not gonna lie. I still have a little bit of like religious debate in me from like oh. being 13. So like I would definitely like debate someone who thinks like there has to be a god because there's water and oxygen <laughs> and people. Um, so like sure. Uh, yeah, debating one of those people that are like two plus two is four, therefore Allah is one of the people. Like, I would definitely oh. like Quran. Like, my friend, yeah, I would my like friend Steve debate. runs the non sequitur debate channel. Uh, I've been on there. Destiny's been on there. Sargon's been on there. Maybe on you, there. maybe you yeah. should be on one of his. Uh, he hosts debates. Yeah. He's a good channel for that. Maybe that would be something. Yeah, I think the the social like the social commentary debate. I think is that space is really really good, and then the religious space. Political, like um, you already know, like I, I like politics, but um, yeah, no, I mean, I see like potent, like I want to think I'm a student of the game, so I see a lot of potential in what kind of content you're making. Like I'm always studying, like what's this person doing? How far can it go? You know, how attractive is it to people? And I really do think like your space is unique in that aspect, and that you can take it really, really far. Thank you. And I always like give kudos to anyone who brings me on because it's like it doesn't have to be that way like i've mm -hmm. seen not in this space because i feel like people are kind of nice but i've seen gatekeeping in other industries and stuff like that and i don't really see that here nah. so it's yeah. really really yeah. cool so i mean ultimately i've had a great conversation i do want to talk to you though about like the whole like meta of like being a content creator and just like all that like stuff privately like, or like on stream yeah like like i don't want to like bore your chat to death with yeah, shit yeah, that yeah. They i love through. talking youtube stuff so if you want to talk in private anytime just like dm me we can schedule a time to talk um i'm usually yeah. free before streams or on weekends 
Um, but yeah. yeah, that I'm always down. I love talking about YouTube. I just talked to another YouTuber today, and we were like talking in private. It was great, and it was just like, oh my gosh, like I love talking about YouTube with other YouTubers because like nobody else like is doing YouTube. So I just yeah. love that shit. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, look again. Thank you for having me on. My pleasure. Um, Thank you. Great conversation, and I hope we can have another one. Same. And so we can chat as well. Shout out to you guys. All right. Please take care of yourself, and literally DM me anytime. You too. Stay safe. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye. See ya. All right, guys. Let me get my camera back on here. It's going to be really zoomed in. Oh, yeah, baby. Look at that tired ass face, baby. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. It's Friday, baby. It's Friday, baby. It's Friday. Oh my gosh, great combo. You guys see his link in chat, right? I had my uh I had my bot. My bot was sharing his link. Did you guys go subscribe and leave a comment, bros? Um so I'm going to stay a few minutes, but I'm actually going to end stream here and I'm not going to clip this. The whole live stream was basically Rashad, so I'm just going to um keep it up and I'm going to link his channel and give him a little shout out. I'm glad uh, Wick brought us together and we were able to have this conversation. So fun. I can't wait to go back and reread all of your chat. Do you guys know that I do that? I literally go back after live streams if I miss like chat like this and then I watch my stream on times two and mute it and then I just read the chat. <laughs> I just love the chat, bro. I love the chat. Do you see the link in the chat, guys? Stephanie just posted it because Stephanie is amazing. If you guys want to go subscribe to him, you know, let's give him a chance. But also... Uh, let's encourage more discourse in the future. Uh, Wick's panel show is what I mentioned. I also mentioned the non sequitur show, which is run by Steve, one of my oldest YouTube friends. And uh, he used to run debate panels uh, that I've even been on. Destiny's been on. Sargon Avocado has been on. So we all kind of know each other, but he's back in the game. He's doing more debates. I'll be on one of his panels. He just hosted Andrew Wilson. Not my favorite, but also... I get it. Andrew Wilson is entertaining. So I will be probably on one of his panels uh, pretty soon, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited. Um, I'm excited to uh, see where that goes. What are you saying, Kay? Kay says the new angle camera angle feels more like a one-on-one -on -one convo with your friend or older sister versus the one that was more like a webcam angle, less personal in some way. Oh, well, I keep changing it for different reasons. I literally, this, I don't even know if this is the news. I keep changing it. I have to keep changing it because the way things are situated. So who knows what it will look like next time. But here we are. We're not at the final stage yet, guys. I'm just like, I am experimenting. I'm always changing it, you know? I'm like, what shows my curls the best is really the question. What shows the curls the best? Do you feel me? Also, thank you guys for the love on my recent podcast. My friend did reach out to me and said that they were incredibly moved by your reaction to the recent podcast and the podcast is back. Um, I'm going to have one up for you guys. I really miss doing the podcast. I really did need that break. I'm a little overwhelmed with all the things that I got to get out. So the podcast might worst case not be weekly, but bi-weekly instead. And so I just wanted to give you guys a heads up on that. Live streaming is my priority right now. I really want to make it a huge focus as it is working out really well. And it seems to maintain the content the best. So I just want to give all my love to the thing that's working the most. And so I'm giving it to streaming. But I will get podcast episodes out that I feel like for topics that need more of a one-on-one -on -one time, like me, just me, or a guest, I will run a podcast. I'm already talking to a YouTuber. You guys are going to be so excited to see us collab because, like, I'm so excited that we got to talk finally. I just spoke in private with them. I'll ask them if I can tell you that I've t spoken to them. But I – um, they and I are working on a collaboration, so – you guys will see that eventually, maybe February or March. We're not sure, but we're really excited about that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Miss Fishy says it's February already. It's literally February. Feb oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. Okay. It's Sorry, it's 1 a.m. I just realized it's someone someone I know. It's their birthday. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I have to call them. But I realized it's it's not their birthday in America yet. Okay. It's their birthday tomorrow in America. It's uh, It's the third for me. Okay. So I was like, oh, no, I always, I'm sorry. I get it. The amount of adrenaline just hit my body over birthdays. Kay says, facts, his openness was really refreshing to listen to. Yeah, it was really great. Um, I really liked, 
I just liked how natural it felt, I think. Uh, some of the conversations that I have don't always feel natural. But yeah, uh, Rashid's very natural, very good energy, very sweet energy. And so that's really nice. Um, I'm really, really glad that he could come on. And so such short notice. I DM'd him right after panel yesterday. So that was so nice. What a good way to spend our day together. Um, now, just a heads up. On the Discord, there is a Discord event for Saturday. It's Welcome to the Discord, hosted in honor of all the newbies. You guys specifically asked if I could host an event to welcome you guys into the Discord. Like, how do you run the Discord? So we're going to do this event. I already see 10 of you are RSVP'd. Please come and join us on the Discord. Today is the best day to sign up because Saturday at, uh, let's see, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, 9 p.m. CET, me doing the math here, we're going to go uh, live on Discord for the silent lurkers, for the anxious Andes, for anyone who's been on the Discord but nervous to to interact, I will guide you through it. You, do, you still don't have to interact that much, but if you want to sit in stream or sit in VC and uh, be there, I will be there. And then if nobody ends up talking, we'll probably watch videos together. <gasps> Maybe we'll watch the Autism Jubilee one because Jubilee usually takes down my streams when I use their videos. So maybe we'll watch that one if no one ends up needing any, any, anything. I'm just there to help. I'm just there to help. So if you guys are new and you want to join, join now. If you join through Patreon, join desktop. When you sign in to Patreon with your Discord account, it will take you to our Discord. If your name is in white, which has been happening lately, you're not assigned a role. Your letters have to be green, which assigns you a role to see the threads. Okay? So if, you, it, if, it, it, if it brings you into the Discord, but you're not assigned a role, redo the process. Okay? I've been noticing some people have been having problems with that. And then when you join, there's a ton of threads. If you don't see certain threads or you need help seeing certain threads, just tag us. Everyone's really helpful. Tag me. I'm happy to help. Okay. With all of that, why don't we listen to some Elvin on our way out? Some Elvin on our way out. Actually, wait. Sorry, Elvin. Wait. No. Let's listen to some Devin Doe, bro. I told Devin I would try to play their song um, because the full song is so good. Guys, let's fucking play the full song, bros. What was I thinking? Stuck in my head, Devin, my friend Devin, who's the musician. Gosh, all my friends are popping, bro. Devin decided to post a little YouTube video for us because, well, we love their song. So if you guys are interested in their music, I linked it in chat. I'm going to play the whole song on my way out tonight. I hope you guys enjoy. I will talk to you tomorrow. No, I will talk. Yes, I will talk to you tomorrow on the Discord. Okay, love you. Bye. Stuff in my head In real life I'm in bed My belly's being fed And I'm okay I'm just fine Yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind Cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me cause I'm Sick of thinking yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Trapped in this mind Trying hard to find The pieces to my life to make things clear What just say I was too busy Calculating what adds up to me But yeah, I know it's not solvable An impossible puzzle Yet here I am trying to work it Who's to say if it's worth it Or just a waste A never-ending chase me Chase me till I am blue I'm so blue Color me see through Till I fade away Finally rest this brain Mysterious universe 
or just a floating rock we'll never know we're just our brains perception's not the same it depends on who you ask and what's their name what's my name Stuck in my head And real life I'm in bed My belly's being fed And I'm okay I'm just fine Yet all I do is whine I threw you in my mind Cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me why I Take things serious It's insane A bit delirious All in vain After all Life's just a game